Today is VOT. We've had a long, long run. And of course, that title everybody wants to try and get overseas. And then gets played into the LCQ, and teams from there get to go into champions. So that's ultimately what the goal is for we everybody. Put in work. Three. When it comes to rain, you're going to see them become the two champs of us. Walking to two players as well. Reveals himself over towards Noz. It's going to bring Signed and Dragon. Oh. Wow, that's a good free fire through the wall. Bobo. We're coming for the number one spot for OC champions. In possession, but they are starting to fall. Signed with the bloody free go. No way. He finds three. Bonkers. And he's looking. He's clearing. He might be able to stop it. Oh. Honey Badgers. Honestly, I think we're better than everyone else at the moment. Dodging on these boxes, bring around the Rosie. They're also looking at one way. Milky, 1v3. Fun Crew. And it's easy in a one on one against Honda. Oh, oh my god. god. Classic. He's done it. Order. We're expecting to come out on top of this qualifier, head back over to Asia, and make the adjustments we need to make to hopefully head over to Europe. Ronski is doing a good job of clearing out short. Knives come out after finding that hot shot, and all of a sudden, it starts to fall back on its head. And that's going to be that. Maybe able to bring this back to a two on one. He will. Connection from Panic and another to finish. It's not a bad choice, is it? He's cleared out long now, knows where the offensive is going to come from. Two line up. RDW. Uh, you get the sense that this is going to be a real back and forth game. So stop. The Pundit's gone deep. Snow getting on the defuse. The Panic on the protection squad. Oh. And he gets both of them through the smoke as well. It's do or die. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Ballerin Oceana Tour. Of course, day two here. I'm joined by Pilski. And, well, Pilski, this is going to be an interesting one. We had some crazy upsets yesterday. I imagine it's just going to get that little bit more hectic. Yeah, honestly, like, usually these are the kind of matchups that sometimes I can, you know, I could go with or without if I'm not cussing it. Maybe I'll give it a skip. But we got some pretty entertaining matches because, like you said, we had those upsets yesterday. So uh, we got a couple of teams down here in the lower bracket that we may not have been expecting to be there. Yeah, and of course, before we get into the action, though, we got to throw to a quick tournament explainer to work out how it all works. Welcome to the 2022 Valorant Oceania Tour, a year-long tournament circuit where the best players from Oceania battle it out for cash prizes, a place at the APAC playoffs with a chance to qualify for Valorant Masters, and a shot at the global title. Teams can compete in up to two stages, consisting of open qualifiers, a regional group stage, and playoffs, each with their own AUD $25,000 prize pool. By placing high enough, they'll accumulate championship points to be one of the top teams fighting for a shot at the OCE Championship and a $30,000 prize pool. Those top teams go on to the APAC Last Chance Qualifier with the winning team invited to the Valorant Champions, where the world's greatest compete to be named 2022's Global Champions, winning an as yet undisclosed prize pool and true gaming glory. For more information, head to letsplay.live forward slash 2022 VOT. The top teams from stage one and stage two, of course, headed towards the APAC playoffs to qualify themselves for Masters. Of course, we saw Bobo stage one. We saw Order stage two. Two different teams we sent overseas, both just shy of that Masters qualification. Of course, now we're to the top six for our Oceanic Championship, of course, with the top seed going over to the APAC LCQ for their shot at the Champions event. The winner, of course, of the LCQ getting themselves that coveted slot. But Pilski, they're not only playing for that coveted spot, they're also playing for a heavy sum of cash here. Yeah, it's a little bit more uh, heavier in terms of the top six teams nowadays, just due to the fact that we don't have eight teams participating anymore. You get a little bit of a bump in the price pool for some of these teams. Obviously, the first place team does get to go over and, and play in that APAC LCQ. They get a little bit of prize money over there, but also they get uh, just the experience of being part of the more global Valorant community. It feels like in Oceania, we're a little bit separated from the rest of the world, unless maybe you're in Perth and you're over there in the SEA rank queues or, or something like that. But uh, I think obviously the experience of going over there playing in SEA it really makes you feel like you're a part of the whole rather than just being a, a big fish in a small pond down number 
Yeah, it's all about being a big fish here, and we've seen some big fish get absolutely fried here. Of course, as we now go over to look at our bracket, it's how it shaped up after yesterday. This is not what we were expecting at all. I don't think anybody would have predicted that Fun Crew took it over order two to one. And then of course we saw Bobo and Rain. That game could have went either way as well. Of course, Bobo able to inch that one out at the end. So Fun Crew, Bobo for your upper bracket. And for our games in the lower brackets, Order versus Bonkers and Rain versus Honey Badgers. Pilski, this could go anyway at this point. Yeah, I think those upper bracket games, very, very tight games. Both of them really could have gone either way. Uh, I think Fun Crew getting that upset is absolutely massive. That's a team that, you know, maybe they didn't even necessarily do so well last season, but I think maybe a slight little bit of a roster change, getting a little bit more chemistry. Obviously, they had the uh, parts to be able to be competitive there. I think Rain definitely could have upset Bobo yesterday as well. So we'll see how they go up against Honey Badgers that we haven't got to seek yet. And obviously, Order have to fight their way through the lower bracket now, starting off with... I think what most people would consider to be an easier team as this Bonkers mixed team just came together not so long ago. Yeah, of course, we had uh, we heard from Texas yesterday a lot to say about their time over in the APAC region. And, you know, it was gimmicks, 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 creativity. Uh, and, of course, Order shaking up their roles. We've seen a few players kind of play different agents here or there. We've seen, you know, Texa kind of flex off uh, that kind of Sentinel controller role that he's been known to play for and then they're kind of putting it to rd we saw astra out of him yesterday and i expect you know bonkers they're gonna have to come with a lot of fire against you know the argued reigning champs here of O's. yeah 100 percent. we'll see if they can they can come up to the task look if they if they make it close if they uh you know are able to actually you know take a map here or there i'll be impressed uh, but that's what people said about fun crew yesterday so anything can happen really and of course we want to take a look at who will be in this first match we'll have a look at our starting lineups here for the side of order you know them you'll love them it's your reigning region champions and of course the newcomers here the mix-up roster that is bonkers of course thrown together just very recently as we see order in front of your very eyes the first team here texter disco maple ronski pilski we've seen order really shake things up apac really kind of woke themselves up in terms of they can play everything if they want to yeah i think look you know the, the players need to get a little bit more comfortable in their roles i think they had a tough group over there in apac like the indonesian teams are no joke i think it's one of the more competitive countries in terms of uh, southeast asia and in terms of apac so i honestly wasn't surprised to see them actually drop to boom they had one map where they looked absolutely fantastic against them but Look, they've got a little bit more experience under their belt. It seems like they're trying to experiment with their roles a little bit, get themselves a little bit more comfortable and find the winning combination to where they can actually, uh, you know, maximize that potential. Because I feel like there's still a little bit more in the tank for them. But um, look, we'll, I, I think obviously the role swap has put them in a bit of a precarious position now because they did drop to Fun Crew in a very, very tight series. And I dare say that probably wouldn't have happened if they hadn't have just, uh, you know, changed up all their roles heading into this uh into this qualifier but I, I say they'll be pretty comfortable in the lower bracket regardless and we should see them take this serious yeah it's always a, a, a question to ask the what ifs of a uh, a very tight series like that but of course we go over to the roster that will be facing them on the other side it's bonkers mirza what Seiko, mike and it's well this is a different look bonkers i wouldn't even call them bonkers at this stage they should have renamed themselves because this is a former shell of any of the old previous editions of bonkers we've ever seen yeah i mean it's not really bonkers is it it's uh no founding members of the original team i'd, I'd rather call rain bonkers at this point because uh, at least mm. they got minimized uh throwing things around maybe a bobo but look end of the day this is the name that they've got uh it is just a mixed team of some pretty decent players some players with a fair bit of experience you know what has obviously been in top three teams in oceania for quite a while sicko qualified for an overseas event swell has been kicking around some of the top teams and even on his stint on wildcard was on the top team uh when they won uh those two comps back to back in my opinion over order so they've got quite a decent looking roster the question is whether they're going to have the depth that they need in such a short period of time to be able to take it to the best team in the region. Yeah, it's going to be up to depth here. Of course, we look to our head-to-head -to, -head to see who we want to look out for this evening in terms of the player matchups. Of course, we're going for RDW and Watt here. Pilski, explain to me the kind of the thought process here. Why a player like Watt as opposed to maybe a Swirl or a, uh, a Mike here? 
I mean, we, we're just going roll for roll here. So these are the two players that I'm pretty sure are playing Smokes today. Unless, you know, it was just a couple of maps out of RDW. It seems like he's trying to adopt that controller role. He's still putting in pretty reasonable numbers on that role. Um, but it's a bit of an adjustment period for the rest of Order. As for what, uh, he's a player who's been playing that controller role for quite a while. He can offer a little bit of calling prowess. And he's also got some great cr clutch potential. But... Uh, it's worth mentioning that you're definitely going to see a bit of a firepower edge towards RDW and, and probably towards Order in, in most of the roles, although you definitely can't take for granted some of these players on Bonkers. They kind of have some good games here or there, um, but it's about that map-to-map -map consistency. It's about the chemistry and the depth. That's the kind of things that I expect uh, Order to have over them in spades. And of course, we've seen what Order are capable of, and, you know, we had to sit down and have a chat with uh, this new look bonkers roster as we take a listen in with what had what what had to say <laughs> for this game. Yeah, it's been pretty good. We've just been pretty much just vibing really because we only threw the team together maybe like two weeks before. We've been taking it pretty easy, just getting some some basic crack in, a few scrims every week. Been pretty chill. We've just been trying to just build chemistry more than build up the strap book, you know, like just get the get the vibes good, just play off each other. It's been it's been really good though. We're all getting along real well. It's actually been pretty good. Most of the roles have pretty much stayed the same. It's we've all slotted in quite nicely. We've got Mike on like the main chamber role, which is like taking over the main duelist role pretty much and then Seiko's obviously a sober main I'm smokes Mers is a flex so it's like it's all just built in nicely pretty much I wanted to play LCQ and I hit up the bunkers guys because I, I knew that their roster was like kind of splitting as well so we mixed it up got the core three so it's like I just said yeah I'll, I'll just IGL it's like a bit more freestyle-y like we don't have much practice so it's a lot on the fly but I'm the main IGL but everyone everyone throws their ideas in it's like not like a strict IGLing sort of thing I feel like Order is gonna definitely 2-0 it. If Fun Crew wants to even win a map, I feel like they have to just pop off individually and Order has to have a bad day. Order at the moment is just leaps ahead of everyone, really. I don't see Fun Crew really taking a map off them. If we go up against Fun Crew, I, th I think it's a pretty even matchup. Either of us could win that. They've got some pretty sharp players and they've been playing together for a bit longer than us, so they've got that advantage. I feel like everyone can really beat everyone except for maybe Order. I think Order is the only one that's like is the clear favorite in every matchup. Well, that one didn't really age well, did it? What had a lot of faith in order, but, well, Fun Crew, they had a little bit more. We saw them absolutely dismantle order in that final map. Of course, went very, very deep to it. And order, they kind of have to mentally reset after that one. They take, go back to the drawing board and kind of reassess what went wrong there. And, of course, come into this game, new blood, lower bracket, do or die for both these teams. The lower bracket, only one best of three, no more. It's kind of one best of three buffer here as we go to have a look at our vetoes to see where these teams will be taking. It's very interesting kind of agent picks uh, to come out. But of course, the maps here, uh, even being taken out, very interesting read there from the side of Auto. Of course, Bonkers maybe been playing that a little bit in scrims. Bonkers then taking away Breeze. They've seen that Auto have been playing that map so often recently i have to say pilski uh very high win rate of course they played it overseas uh a lot of these teams especially the apac teams really punished order uh with that breeze ban and of course we'll be going to icebox first we haven't seen order on icebox in quite a while yeah, it's an interesting pick. I mean, I'm looking back towards the last stage where they did get upset by Fun Crew on that map, and it was the only map that I think they dropped, or one of the only maps that they dropped. They had a very, very tight game with Bobo, which in the grand final was kind of the thing that I think unhinged Bobo at the end of the day, having a very, very tight loss on that. They really needed to win that in the grand final. So to see them go towards an icebox fix will be an interesting one. Ascent is one that Order's been playing a, a fair bit, like four in the last three months. You can't really talk too much about Bonkers in terms of like map stats or anything like that because obviously they're just a team that's been thrown together but we'll see what they can bring together and then obviously split to round things out you know obviously that's going out of the map pool so it's going to be interesting to see what happens on that map and obviously those are the kind of things that you're not going to be able to work on going forward as we look into the agent uh, select you're going to start to get some questions answered about what kind of roles that the bonkers team are going to be putting together so swell's going on the main duelist straight on the jet here and uh order obviously sticking towards rdw on that controller role 
And uh, you, you expect to see uh, Ronsky lock that chamber. We've seen him kind of move away from just the one trick jet, but of course, we've seen from him previously. He's shown that he's more flexible. We saw a raise out of him yesterday. The chamber, of course, always a prominent pick for some of these duelists. And of course, uh, we got to thank our lovely sponsor, the Samsung Odyssey Neo G9 offers world-class performance with a 240 hertz refresh rate, one millisecond response time, G-Sync capable, and AMD Free Sync Premium Pro. Unleash your inner champion with the Samsung Odyssey gaming monitors. This is gonna be a crazy one, Pilski. We're into it live into day two, best of three. It's bonkers order in the lower bracket. Icebox to kick it off. And Pilski, talk to me about what bonkers are kind of going for with this kind of comp that they're running. Yeah, so it's a double initiator comp. You know, you've got the KO and the Sova. What they're gonna have spades of is flexibility, info gathering. You're gonna have to see them play a very fluid defensive style. Once they move on to offense, it's gonna be a little bit harder for them to get the post plants reliably as you're gonna see for order. They've got the Sage pick. They've got the Killjoy as well. That's gonna give them a little bit more of that stability, give them the consistency as well. So we'll see how order go on this attacking side. We'll see if they can set themselves up some nice post plants. You're going to see early on here, Bonkers going to take some B long control and order going to look for some control of this A lobby and take some early duels here. There you can see Viper Wolves sent from order, but over the top, thinking about going for the rope is Texter. Up the top, shots from the Frenzy. Snake Spike there to force what out of position we've seen. What on this Viper time and time again? Very little sneaky play swell. Nice little dink, but only Ronsky able to hit a shot. And will be traded back immediately. Bonkers lose their main duelist early on. And of course, this is the power that ought to have with this Sage. They can get Ronsky back to almost full HP. And well, straight over to the B site. That wall was set up early, but it seems to be where they want to go. Texter taking a little bit of tagging as he tries to walk up with the wall to get that spike plant secured. Order, 5 p 4 in this post plant. Yeah, I mean, that's the great thing about the Sage. Order with a fair bit of map control still. They've still in a 3-1-1. They've got that mid lurk that can come through a little bit later on from RDW, but what's all over that is this retake starts to come in here, Tony. Recon dart to the back wall. Maybe we'll have to pop that one. Bonkers are coming in quickly. Power and numbers though. Order holding their high lot angles here towards the top of B Green. And you can see the shots coming out. What able to find it? Ronsky missing a few headhunter shots. And what has found Texter will be looking to stick this spike fully as he's got a teammate to back him up. It's Mike with the headhunter hit. Ronsky taken it out. And bonkers on the retake in the 4v5. Get it done. Unfortunate start there for Order. Of course, Maple stuck at the back of Yellow having to pop that dart gave away so much info that Bonkers were just able to walk up and go for those fights. Yeah, felt like they should have been all over that. They had so much map control, but losing that player in mid gave them a little bit more difficulty. They lost their contingency plan, being able to lurk through and, and get those picks as the retake starts to come in. 4k from what is absolutely massive on the Viper, already 5 out of 7 on his pit, and he's getting that Spectre ready to go early on, so he can have a really nice early pit timing if he gets a 2k here, he can just pop that pit straight up in the bonus, and that can allow his team to stack towards the rest of the map. Of course, interestingly enough, we saw Order in their, their first game against Fun Crew, they went for that bonus, the, that force by on the second round, it appears that against it this time, shot! Over the top, pixel precision from Mike. Give it the chamber, the headhunter's great. Falls back, takes another shot. And again, uh -oh. order. <laughs> oh, no. oh, the wall's too big, the wall's too thick this time. Maple will be able to find Mike, but they're able to stop this plan with the fragment coming out. Texter able to get away. Four HP's found his position to plant that spike down. And bonkers though, they've got such a doable read seek now. They break the wall. And they just have to take the fights as they come. Mercer looking to walk it up. Texas just holding with this wall peak. Bronski able to find two, but Mercer trades it back with the transfer. Up to Sicko. Now in the one V2 recon. Back of yellow. We've seen it so many times. Get so much info. Taps the spike once to beat it. Tries to get a swing out of order, but they're not moving right now. They know they don't have to. Beautiful shot. RD and Ronski playing the win cons, playing the trade. Order trade it back one to one a piece to start yeah it's a nightmare for bonkers they're off to a great start they got the pistol and now they just get ecoed in honestly around it's not really looking even too great for order until ronsky comes in on that flank timing gets a nice 2k on the headhunter um sometimes can be a bit of a blessing in disguise to actually you know not do too much work on the pistol because you've got so many headhunter bullets left over that you probably didn't make use of 
Now you got Bonkers, they're going to have to take a single save and look towards that next round where what will 100% have is Pit at least so they can start to formulate a bit of a game plan for that. You can see, trying to get aggressive early on. We saw Fun Crew do it against Order yesterday and it kind of shook them up a little bit and Aztecs had to say anybody can show up on the day. Fun Crew definitely showed up to play yesterday. Order. No. Just able to trade out that first round of Bonkers. Forced to play very, very passively with all this Viper Util set up. It gives them so much space to hold a little bit further back. Texter will be placing that wall for the back side. Play it perfectly set up for a post here if they want it. A beautiful shot from one to trade out onto Maple. Round starting to get a bit messy. Ronski got a bit of a task on the flank. You're going to start to get the retake coming in for Bonkers with the numbers as the wall goes up. This is going to make Order's life a little bit difficult, but RDW... Peeking straight through the side of it. And yeah, nice little pick from Watt, but it looks like Order should have this one under control. Watt's Ooh. just sticking it. They need oh. to make sure they hard check him. They get it off. And oh, seems oh. like Bonkers just enough there to be able to complete that retake successfully. And another eco. I mean, this is just the O's classic, isn't it? An absolutely messy game of Valorant. Neither one of these teams can put their economy off on the right foot. And uh, now Bonkers in the driver's seat, picking up a couple of guns, starting to steady their economy, and we'll see if they make good use of that pit. They need to try to get these two rounds back to back. It can't just keep going one apiece for both of these teams. Let's see how Order look to approach this round though, Tony, whether they're gonna force up, because that's what Bonkers didn't do last round. They took a half buy, they took things a little bit passively early on, but Order, they're gonna try to risk it for the biscuit. Yeah, sometimes you have to, in a state like this, and especially with Two Bonkers players winning that round out of Thrifty with such low HP, I believe five single digits per player, and they're able to get it done. Ronski looking to get aggressive, but this time it's going to be paid dividend. Sinko able to find that shot as well. Taking an aggressive position of his own and is looking to fall back. Now knows that Texter is looking to walk to this site. Great little tox score here from the side of water allows the site control for the moment. That fragment forces Bonkers back, but they're able to take the fights as they come from this screen's position. And the spikes down at A. RDW has picked up the operator, but might be looking to toss it out of the map. Doesn't want to give it over to Bonkers. That's an expensive gun to be giving over and well, Bonkers, as you said, Pilski, they want to be fighting these rounds successfully and two in a row might be what they're after. I mean, they might just win it with all five guns up. RDW at least takes one with him. But Sober Drone to spot out RDW. Mirza up on the close angle. I dare say they should clean him up at some point. Bonkers really playing around this Viper util very well though, obviously with the change to Viper a while ago. You can't keep the wall and the orb up at the same time. So Bonkers just sitting back on these screens positions. RDW just inflicting further damage to the economy. He doesn't even really have the time to get this round done, obviously, with the bomb down on Jenny. Teleport's ready. Not going to be able to retake that. And Bonkers, they go up 3-1 with a fantastic economy to boot. They are in a great position here, actually, on defense. It's going to take a, a fair bit of effort over time here from order to start to crack back into this game. They're going to have to win a couple gun rounds back-to-back, -back, I would say. And impressively enough, it's the IGL, or loosely IGL, of course, everyone has a say here of what had to say in that lovely interview. But the IGL at the top of the board, the Viper's Pit, and now, of course, the Hunter's Fury and the Null Command online for Moses Seko. RGW does have that Viper's Pit too, but order, they need to get to the site to set up for a post plane with that one. Might play in an aggressive position up top, because he's allowed to rendezvous out, of course, can easily get the safety beautiful little teleport to the back of the kitchen hall there and well info's gathered in order now feeling a little bit more towards the mid side of the map just having a little bit of a poke around seeing if they can find a pick here they've done a good job pushing the chamber off that b long line just denying bonkers info allowing them to control the middle of the map so that they can rotate freely between the sites if they want to drone to be able to retake b long here and the viper wall already committed to b Makes it look like Order definitely going to be committing this stage wall and trying to go for the B plant. That's a nice little tour de force coming out for Ronsky. Dart doesn't scan anyone, so Order going to start to kick off this B side hit. Yeah, look to do it, Rendezvous place. Ronsky looking to make some presence be felt with that tour de force. Maple no check to the back of Yellow Box. You never know where bonkers are. That's one player 
on top of the site. The Viper's Pit popped by RDW. Four of his plants to go down, but they of course haven't stopped the spike just yet. They've got 20 seconds to get that one down. Bonkers are on the road, take through Loma mid here. You can see coming down through the tube, Mike able to find RDW, denies the plant. Mirza finding a quick little two for Mike to follow up with a second, and it's all order falling. Almost flawless here. Bonkers just shut down that take. An early Viper's Pit, but order not able to do anything with it. Yeah, he had, it was only a half buy, so he had no wall investment there from Techstar. And look, the the key kill, obviously, on Ardy dropping the pit, but even Sicko investing that Hunter's Fury. Bonkers just very, very patient, sitting back on those long angles of sight, understanding they've got a pretty big economic advantage, don't want to be taking any extra risks or overpeaking or anything like that. So now a reinvestment for Order here. They've got the lockdown if they want it. They've got a res and a Hunter's Fury. Fair bit of uh, ult and util here for Bonkers as well, though. And that KO knife going to reveal the position of a lot of order players. So they've got a great read on what's happening here. Very nice knife to start it off for Bonkers. And for order, they're forced back for the moment. Showstopper off the recon. Great to flush these players out of position. Mike a bit over aggressive to try and shut down that lockdown. As Bonkers are forced to leave this site for orders taking. The lockdown goes off and goes through. Now drone and the fragment to the back of the site. And actually lands on top. And Swan's going to go for the peak. Blind shot through the smoke fighting Texter. And unfortunate there trying to cross towards Jen at the wrong time. RDW has taken an aggressive position up towards top. And this is a question to bonkers. Do they check this position? Great recon on it towards Belt RD. Going to be peeking for it. Instead, he's not going to sit and wait. He's going to take the action. What now needs to find some crazy things not gonna happen this time ronski and rdw to shut it down order finally finding themselves a second and finding themselves some room to breathe to start yeah i think that round was the first kind of sign out of the bonkers team of their disorganization and the kind of mixed team mentality is like it's one of those complicated rounds where you have uh, a combination of alts out of order you have a bit of a weird scenario you've got the viper investing the pit over towards b long and you're three one one Mike feels like he wants to go forward and, and try to take a peek with him or try to deny the ult, and the other two players are running out of the site. So sometimes those protocols that you build off over time, over playing more and more sprints together, you come into these kind of unique situations, things kind of fall apart and you start to make a few more mistakes than you usually would. Yeah, it's definitely starting to show through that as well. It's time to be the aggressor. I'm trying to get some info, but order. They're nowhere near that A site for the moment. Disco. It's going to be lurking around holding that Ooh. spawn at slash mid position. Great little timing, though, from the side Planted. of Bonkers. Finally, Texas gets that wall right. Able to plant, not too thick this time. Our drone comes through in order. This time, have perfect post plan here. They've got the recon, they've got the shocks, and they've got Disco with all the swarms available. You can see, though, that Mike is looking to push it up with that shock dart. So playing the aggressor once again, but it's going to be Mercer. It's well, beautiful swing. And finding two out of air, the aerial bombardment. Let's order a shot it down. Ronski looking for a few oh. shots to make it doable. Ronski pulls a hat trick out of nowhere and Sicko has to calm down for a second. And we do too, Pilski. That was almost magic from Order, but Bonkers are able to shut it down. Sicko, the king of clutch, normally in more fancier style, but this time the 1v1 will do it. Bonkers finding five. Yeah, very, very tight. Ronski almost uh, pulls off another one of those rounds that he's known for. Bonkers at the end of the day, though, having built up a pretty nice economy uh, off the start they got to this half. They don't really care as much about coming down to one gun and surviving. It's starting to take a bit of a toll on their economy, but you can see it's just a half buy for order. These are the kind of game states where this is where you need to see order take three or four picks with them, make this round nice and competitive, because over time they can start to bankrupt Bonkers. There's that mid dart. Uh, is it going to catch anybody? It seems like Auto got deep into mid before they were ready for it, but Bonkers now starting to drone through Kitchen and trying to get a bit of a read on what's happening on this mid to B split from Auto. Yeah, you can see Sicko saw the, the slow coming out. What? Able to pick apart Ronski at top of the tube. Texter has walked to the site, but this is a great position to be holding from Mercer and Auto. Unfortunately, a bit late to the party to check that one out. Maple. Now he's not going to expect it. Mike is up top. Mercer's looking for the hunt, though. We'll give it over to Mike. Cheeky little warbang through the floor there of the box. And Bonkers, uh, a beautiful shutdown. Order, not a chance for that mid split. It was a valiant effort, I have to say. They got up and into the site. But Mercer, these 2Ks from Yellow Box are just too much for Order to deal with right now. 
Yeah, it's a good start. That's exactly what you wanted uh, from Ponkers. They, their economy was starting to get a little bit shaky and they just have a round where they shut down the half buys super, super cleanly. All that investment, though, is definitely taking a toll on order. You can see a couple of missing pieces of util. You've got someone coming down to a Guardian. They've got to go for the orb here from Ronsky, so we'll see where they're going to go for that or whether he's just going to... It looks like he's just going to headhunter and see if he can get the tour just from finding a pick here. As Drone goes through long, once again, Viper Wall being committed to the B side of the map and order. Gonna test out a little bit of a different part of the map. Gonna start walking towards Kitchen. A bit of a deeper chamber Standing trip ahead. means that uh, that won't have been cleared out by any shock darts or anything like that. Great little recon. Ronsky able to walk it up. The headhunter will do it this time. Two quick picks. One able to trade it back though. Funny Ronsky. A little bit out of the open, Mike. A quick little shot with the op, but that's a great swing from Disco. Great position to be lurking up here for order. Of course, able to take that sight with the cover that Disco's given two players left, Sicko and what? Former Mind Freak comrades, of course, before joining at this bonkers core. Maple RDW. They can just play as far back as possible. Disco's got them covered. Yeah, Auto need to close this three on two really, really badly here. Disco taking things patiently, checked by what, but still has better timing. Sicko now a very difficult 1v3. He's making it look competitive, though. Nice little cross here. Tapping enemy. away at the head. Ooh. That's a very nice flick. Almost finds Maple behind yellow as well. He's going to tap it. Going to do some more damage with the shock dart. Maple very low now. Thinking around the other side of yellow, but Sicko running out of time. Great shoulder peaks. Great movement from Maple. Locking that one down for order, but damn, it was expensive. Yeah, Sicko making it. Uh, almost play for the highlight reel. They're taking away orders, guns, and... As you said, Pilsky, making it expensive. This is order yet again. I feel their economy's just been shut down time and time again. Bonkers mm. just finding kills after kills when even if they're losing the round, they've done so much damage already. This is a round where it's going to matter yeah. less, though, because you've got the tour, you've got the lockdown into pit. These are the kind of scenarios where you can kind of control the round a little bit more and get some more value out of things like a judge's... You know, Spectres, these closer range weapons. So let's see if they're going to be able to do that. Again, committing the pit, the wall towards B, rather. And Order, again, looking like they want to continue this mid pressure and try another mid to B here. Take like kitchen control, Ronski jump shot. Lands on ground and solid shot on a Mirza. Not expecting him through kitchen. It's now Bonkers have left their mid. Oh, they're going to do vulnerable. the pit in kitchen. I love this. A great little Viper's Pit play here. Order going to just plant it for this kitchen open position. RDW just looking to walk it up onto the bridge. You can see this Viper's Pit just covering the entirety of the top of the site. And it's hard to push against if you're bonkers right now. Mike can't see anything that's going on. He's so low as well. Like he's decayed almost entirely. And that's where the judge is going to be such an issue. RDW just so patient, taking his time, knows that he can get spanned out of position. Still a lot of map control here for Bonkers, and they're utilizing it. Ronsky goes down in middle, so this round's starting to get a little bit spicy. Oh, great little tap there. That was actually from what? That wasn't Sicko that did it. Almost wallbang found. And now all of a sudden, order they had such great control of this beast site. The resurrection comes through, but the lockdown's out. Have looking at 20 to seconds. stabilize it. 20 seconds on the clock. Auto trying to stabilize this plant right now, but what? He's just shutting it down. He's done so much from this lower mid spot as well. Sees the lockdown, dissipate, and Watts just found now. another on the maple. This man is going huge. The IGL roll and a colossal giant. What looking for the swing on a disco? Quick little trade back, but disco can't get this plant. Time is run thin, and Bonkers will be finding seven order. They had control of the site, they just needed to get that spike point, but Superhero Watt saves the day, and Bonkers are on a tear to start this icebox off. Yeah, you can see how tentative RDW was at sticking that plant, never really got a good opportunity. Bonkers doing an excellent job just spamming him down, and showing so much patience for a mixed team on this defense. You see the experience of all these individual players really showing here. Not a whole lot of mistakes being made outside of the very complicated scenarios. Watts having an excellent game for himself, 14 and five. This has been a little inconsistent in the Standing past and, and sometimes has some quieter games, but he's definitely capable of these pop-up performances, capable of having these big rounds. And when the pressure's off, I mean, he's really showing up for bonkers. Man, there's, uh, I have to feel there's not much pressure in terms of 
Uh, I guess four bonkers, as you said, recently coming together. It's kind of a, a mix of a few of the old players from that core of bonkers that stayed together. And then, of course, you brought a few of the Mind Freak players over and what he's been doing marvelous things here. Sicko 2, the combo nation of these two Mind Freak players for bonkers is just absolutely stunning and holding some of these sights as well. A quick frag that he is, a quick road state as well. No disco. Up on the rope, we'll be able to trade it back. It's three for three. Water still need to look to take this A site. And they also need to be cautious. What in such a great position here towards Jen. Able to pepper down the Sova. Disco goes diving through the wall and cleans that up. Mirza still alive in the back of the site though. And Maple, as well as RDW, both very, very low. 20 and 50 HP. And Mirza knows he can just sit back in Swan side. Hold those long angles and give time for Mike to come in on this flank here. Seconds left. Giving time. Mirza. Just laying out some shots. Looking to throw the flash over. Going to drive it through. And retake the side very quickly. Pops it to the wards. The back of site towards the right side. Where Mike is looking to come from. Through this position in just a second. You can see... Mirza slowly starting to walk up. Great knife too. This is what has been very key right for off. the side of Bonkers, but great thrifty back from order. Maple with a great position, Last great swing. A valiant retake attempt. This time it's thwarted. Order find four, but still a lot to do more in this game. Of course, the last round of this half and order. Their attackers look struggling, and of course the pause to come in just before the pistol in the next half. Yeah, I mean, it hasn't it hasn't particularly been a close half. Like, Bonkers have looked like uh, the far better team, but Order scraping together these rounds, and sometimes that's all you need to do. Like, it could play, be a completely different story in the next half. If Order just gets out fifth, it's a very, very tight game. Pistol could make a massive difference, and Valorant is a momentum swingy kind of game. Could be a completely different half, X half. And uh, you, you always have to ask of a mixed team like Bonkers, how well can they put the pieces together on attack? It's... Sometimes a little easier, especially if you have that individual autonomy, as they mentioned before, not having to change around the roles too much. They can be very comfortable on, on defense in, in some of these positions, but sometimes when you have to put the pieces together in attack, the, the chemistry and the overall structure is what can let you down as a mixed team unless you're keeping things a little bit more on the simpler side. Yeah, I feel these teams really start to crumble, of course. Bonkers, sometimes it's a puzzle, if you would. Of course, finding a few missing pieces in the box and... You hate to see it sometimes, you just have to send the puzzle back. The bonkers. We're going to send order back to the drawing board in this first map. Of course, we're getting ahead of ourselves still. One last round to play out in this first half. But I have to say, Superhero Watt here for Bonkers has just been doing so much with his Viper Util. But he's also just hitting so many impressive shots. He's reading order like a book. Slow progression into A here. Drone going to allow Order to take a little bit more space, maybe look for attack so Maple can follow up with that Hunter's Fury. Mirza ready with this null command for the retake. He's just going to pop it before the spike even goes down and try to disrupt this side push from coming in here, Tony. Yeah, null command comes out. Two shots from what? Order. Finally able to stop it. But of course, this null command's in play, and so is the Hunter's Fury looking to stop that spike from going down and then will delay the plant for the moment. Texter will be tagged up on that one. They do finish off Mirza in the end, so no res to be available for Bonkers, but they've got three players available for this retake. High flying swirl. Dashes back to screens, to safety, the shots. The wall is great here from order. And then Snake Spike to follow suit. They're really forcing Bonkers off for this screens position and not really able to get in. There's some shots coming out from Sicko. Nobody peeking a muscle from order. Interesting entry route from Swirl. Gonna updraft off on towards the top of screens, hurled, but heard by most of the order Last team, and it's looking like standing. they're shutting down this retake nicely. Down to a one v one, Mike, just preempting, uh, preempting that push on backside from Texter, and able to clean that one up, making it a bit more of a convincing half for Bonkers. An eight four scoreline overall, so they've got a little bit less room that they have to cover in terms of closing out this game on this attacking side, but. Definitely going to have Pistol for me to start to feel super confident about their position. Order, I feel like, still not quite awake here on this game of Icebox. And in general, it's felt like some of their map picks haven't quite felt um, dominant from them. Initial series yeah, uh, being being a good example of that. But even in, in previous stages, you've seen them, some maps they go towards um, or you expect them to be quite strong on and they're, they're having some issues not sure if that's down to a couple of role swaps or not. I mean, it's only really one or two players changing up their roles uh, greatly here. 
Yeah, it's a heavy burden, I feel, for a player like Tex, who, you know, yeah. we've seen him battle stage and everything else under the sun. But yeah, I have to say, Order, some of their vetoes have been very, very interesting. Of course, they first picked the scent against Funky Wolf. Not too bad on set. I have to say 77% win rate and probably upped it since beating Order in that upper bracket and sending them down here to face bonkers. But we're getting a little bit carried away. We focus back on into this pistol round, the second half of his first map. Bonkers to the attack and well, we're going to take some stable B control for the moment, even getting the shots off there on to the player lying in wait. RD, of course. Front of the box, able to take one under what and fall off completely. This gives order so much pressure and so much presence over towards his B site and bonkers, they have to respect it. Yeah, it's a nice pick from RDW. Just does what he set out to do. Nice that enemy Piper. Mike catching Texter, aggressing through middle though. Seems like not much is going his way here. And the reroute from bonkers back over towards that A side of the map. They got a faster rotation than the defenders, but. You've got Disco there with his Tara and the Nano to try to deny that early spike plan as the hit comes in on the A side. Recon to the right side of the site, Disco to drop off screens. Shocked up preemptively, the knife as well to come in. Disco, some quick little taps. So Mike actually able to tap back with his headhunter. Taps into his inner demon. Wants to find a few more RDW looking at the screens here. Mike will find the flick on a disco. Nasty, nasty shot. Puts down the rendezvous and Mercer puts down a RDW. Whoa. That's how you want to pick up a pistol if you're bonkers. Mike is fired up. Look at him move right now. He is hyped. Everybody else can't believe it. Swell. Yeah. Smiling away. Bonkers are feeling confident. Uh, it's interesting seeing Mike on this chamber like. Honestly, I haven't really been that that convinced because for me, Mike, I felt like he's been really good on some of the other Sentinel roles, like a bit more of a traditional Sentinel, whereas you see a lot more chamber players, sometimes, you know, they're duelist flex or something like that. But that's a really, really nice round of him. Uh, a 4K and a pistol where they had an 8-4 half. Uh, they just need to try to stabilize this economy. Don't lose the rounds you're not meant to. Make sure you're not dropping extra guns and, and keep things nice and composed because this game is very, very winnable. Order, a fair bit of an investment here, though, trying to cut a corner and starting to make some inroads through B-Long here. Heard by Mike and he's not aiming at head height. It's a bit of an awkward angle. Loses that first pick for Bonkers and they feel like they've got to pick up the pace of day now. Yeah, they kind of have to with the loss of Mike. Swell really start to fire it up. Bronski able to trade it, but Swell drops down Dink onto his teammate in front of his very eyes, but what? Finds Texter, Bonkers, find themselves an A site that Cloudburst denies the info. Sightline for the moment, Maple. Well, it's also a recon, Dart to Sights against nobody here. The Stinger out from RDW. We've seen a few of these players by the Stinger recently. Great shot from Maple through this peak wall, just using the Sage wall against Bonkers. Right now, even able to use that wall against the side of Seiko. Another shot finds Maple. Taking out Swirl, Sicko though, able to use that Toxic Orb cover. Now just falls back to safety. Here's RD on the rope and RD with a stinger. 20 bullets in the chamber and one of them sure to hit. And a few of them definitely did. Order will be able to find the deep fuse and they'll be able to find the round back. It's a pistol once again. Yeah, this game's really stupid. Like, <laughs> how can you clutch like that? You're just flying on a rope. Like, it just catches me off guard every time. Hate it. To change the inaccuracy <laughs> on those zip lines, but nice round from RDW. Bonkers almost putting the pieces together, and that's a four spike going in the favor of order. Massive, massive round for Maple, especially going back uh, under Rafter and picking up that judge was kind of the icing on the cake. And now Bonkers choosing to take things a little slower, to invest in some of these marshals, some of these uh, sheriffs as well. Every single gun they take out of the hands of order starts to make a little bit of a difference. Dart gonna force RDW in towards garage side here. What's ready for him, but unfortunately, judge a little bit better in a position like that. Oh, that's a little bit better at range too, it would seem. Double tapping Sicko One down to extremely low HP. Texter spawning a few players on the other side of the map, and all of a sudden it's now just Mike wondering what happened to the rest of his teammates. They're all gone before a minute even ticks over, and of course, Water looking to hunt down at Mike. Eight shots in this chamber. Looking to find a few. Ronski able to headhunter back. Order. Find themselves a stable second round. Yeah. Of 
course, bonkers. That, as you said, Pilsky, that was kind of just a bonus for them. Trying to steal away guns. Now they're forced to save. Now they're forced to bring the rifles out and contend with order. Getting back into this game slowly. Yeah, they didn't take any guns though, which is kind of worrying. Um, because that's really going to stabilize order's money. It's going to allow them to have a proper bonus round here, even with Maple with a rifle. So this is where bonkers like. It's really great when you're front running as an underdog. This is where they're going to have to show a little bit more uh, tenacity, a little bit more resilience as well. Combination of the snake bite and the slow orb, trying to contest that push up on towards that belt area. Doesn't bother Bonkers too much. They're going to still kick off this drone and just kick off the one four. Trying to prod into A, look for early picks, look spike. for some map control while Mike works mid. Yeah, Mike. Working that mid control. Because Disco just holding underneath the tube. Waiting for an aggressive swing. Mike, probably a player of discipline, I imagine, wouldn't be going for a crazy peak like that. Bonkers slowly able to cr approach this A site. Texter, gonna peek that high angle towards heaven. And it's just game of pixels, a game of who swings first could meet fatal demise. So now see recon towards the back of the site. Swirl forced off the top screen's position. The spike will go down. Bonkers looking to set themselves up for the post as Snake Spike takes down more. Ooh, the pit. That's going to complicate things a lot. Spike only just went down and now there's a pit for RDW to play in with his judge. Bonkers getting a couple of picks though, a man advantage. And you haven't had that spike tap just yet, Tony. Yeah, definitely haven't heard the spike tap yet. And there it is, RD looking for it. Ronski looking on the boiler and RD uses the Viper's Pit and that's the power of it. You can play these close positions. Just want to walk up front. Jen has spotted up RDW, but of course, Judge yet again, closer range engagement. Swirl loses it in order. They're going to be picking it up. Seven on the board and bonkers. Well, now their economy's in shambles and their hopes may have been dashed of running this one deep. Order starting to fire up a bit in the second half. Yeah, this is exactly like I said. Much more difficult position for Bonkers now. They didn't get any damage done on their eco. They lose against the bonus with just a handful of judges and one rifle. And now they've got to take like a, a half buy here up against uh, Order, who now have a great opportunity to start to build up their economy. Bonkers are a fair bit invested in this round, though. You do have a rifle here. You do have a two up as well as the jet knives, so not yeah, something you can take for granted if you order. Play. Still around, it's very losable. And of course, you never know what bonkers able to flick the switch on. Wall comes out from what? Crosses that A site, covers heaven end screen. Great info being gathered up here by Sicker with the Allen drone, sending it into the site, sees the wall early out from Texter. Trying to stop bonkers from going A and Definitely has watered them. Dash away from Swell because it's running out of time. Up go the mid to B split here. Bonkers changing it up completely. Yes, straight under two. Get spotted out by that turret. And they're going to throw down that Viper Speed in towards Orange. It's going to be a bit of an awkward situation for Order to approach in terms of the retake. They've still got Ronsky over towards the yellow side. And this is where all the kills are going the way of Bonkers here, as well as that spike going down. They're starting to set themselves up a much better position. Ronsky's walking into this Viper's pit, looking to take the fight against what in his domain, and that's not what you want to do against the Viper right now. Snake Spite's being tossed. And Dart One comes out maybe. spotted. Dash baited perfectly. Swell. The fight Maple. Disco tries to do the same thing his teammate did. Bonkers will take it and pick it apart. Great mid split and immediate pop of that Viper's pit. Put order in such a dicey position to go for that retake. I mean, that's exactly what Bonkers needed, though. I mean, it was starting to get a little bit scary if Order has a cleaner round there, but that's the power of these comps with Jet Chamber. You get these half-by rounds where you can kind of gimmick yourself a win with uh, the free guns just off those alts. Getting yourself a tour, getting yourself Jet Knives, and running away with the round a little bit. They pick themselves up a handful of guns, and you can see just how big of an economy swing that is. Order now pretty broke, putting the pieces together. They have to go down to tour. They have to go down to a Bulldog as well, and... Bonkers, a handful of their players having about 3 or 4k. Yeah, water on the back foot, to say the least. And great null command, that takes away Ronsky's tour to force, but he's just going to let one player walk up. Mosa hasn't checked the corner, neither is my great discipline. Ronsky able to find at least one before maybe Bonkers call to action, but Disco takes Mosa and what? Perfect situation now to be in for order, and it was all off the discipline. <laughs> 
from young Ronski Disco to find Sicko and it's up to Swell. Can't even res Mercy. He's out in the open. The res comes for good measure order. Grabbing those guns, keeping them all on line in a great fadeaway shot. Disco with four, locked down on line order, finding the round they need. It's just been back and forth. Like both teams really getting the rounds that they need at the right times before the game starts to get away from them. Order, as soon as their economy starts to get a little bit on the shaky side, they just win a super clean round. All five players alive. Disco multi-frags up a storm. That dot cross there doing him a lot of favors. Those taps at long range look so clean. Now he's got the lockdown for retake as well, but Sicko has that Hunter's Fury to counter as well. And here's this round where now Bonkers, they're up 10-8, but they're at a pretty big economic disadvantage. Need to win multiple gun rounds back to back to start to crack into this half. And again, it's going to be both of these Vipers just trading gas on B-Long. Yeah, both walls go up. Kind of hard to cross one in front of the other. As Bonkers making a slow approach. So every single different position. They're going to check the corners this time. No, that nobody's close. They've learnt now, and I imagine they'll learn for the rest of the series that you never know where an order player is hiding. Great discipline from Ronsky. Those bonkers look to walk it up. What goes through the wall just to go for the aggressive peak? The Hunter's Fury just to burn down the lockdown. Order have taken two picks though, and they have control of this B site. Still bonkers. They're on the quick road state out. Mike looking to maybe entry over towards this A site now. Yeah, I like this rotation from bonkers. But they only have a very small window to actually make it in towards this A site. Texta throws up a wall across the left side of the site, really controlling where Bonkers can and can't be. Slow orbs thrown in there just to make them uncomfortable. And they still haven't got this spike established. So much time being bought by Texter. He's just going to win the round by himself. The rest of order all ready to go as well, swinging our rafter side. And it's just Sicko all alone. See if he could take any more guns off order at this point, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, they have just got so much economy at this point. They broke his bunkers money yet again, and this is all of a sudden looking like a dub from order after a pretty shocking first half. Yeah, it was eight to four. And now bonkers are in bankrupt territory here, and order could look to close it here and now. Ten to nine order. Just seeming to string these rounds together that they really shouldn't be. Bonkers really should be finding and closing these rounds out convincingly. But of course, now you see it. Bonkers. Four sheriffs, light shields across the margin. Mike, of course, will have the headhunter, so he's not without a pistol. So, of course, a little bit different. Does have a scope, unfortunately. The rest of these bomber players will not have scopes. Ronsky definitely does. Scopes in. Mirza already found a rendezvous. Ow! Beautiful tap back, though, Mike. Finding Texter, a duel of wits, a clash of fates. Ronsky pulls out the headhunter for a few more. Puts away the sniper and puts the pistol to work. Mike. Able to find it back the stabilized shock dart front screens here to force Maple back off the angle, but they can hold this range. Yeah, wall comes in from order as well. It's gonna make Bonkers life a little bit harder. Nice tap from Mike as well. Out of bullets for Sicko. Just needs one more to clean up uh, Disco there, but Maple with the wrap in on site. Order. A little bit scary for a second. Managed to get it back under control. And now at a 10-10 scoreline with the economy that they've got, they're probably feeling pretty comfortable about uh, how this half is going. This uh, next couple of rounds, though, things are going to start to change up. I would imagine that, yeah, a fair few players quite close to their ults. Mike one off. You know, over these next couple of rounds, there could really be some defining moments where if these ults get ripped at the right times, if you get a player who's able to come out with a multi-frag towards the tail end of the game, could definitely make a bit of a difference in some of these key Boys gun rounds. Yeah, my eyes to Mirza. Great info with these knives so far, this entire game of Icebox. And of course, normally we hold Swell on quite the pedestal, the young prodigy that he is. Quite a sharp Boys aimer and explosive in terms of entry prowess, but he's taken a little bit of a, a more supportive jet roll, I have to say, for this game. And you can't really blame it with Bonkers in order going to tick to tack. What are able to hold this flank? For the first one, Ronski. Will be traded out though by Texter. Bonkers have the A sight, but they have to be cautious. There's two on the flank and two coming from directly in front of them. Watching here. Very awkward situation. Kind of caught in between a rock and a hard place. Not sure about whether to fight flank or try to contest the screen side here as Order taking their time in on the retake. Nice pick from Sicko. Double swing on screen side and Mirza oh. unfortunately can't hold his ground. Sicko now probably spotted out by that alarm bot. They know he's over towards May's side. 
starting to close in on him as well. It's probably got to be Swell to go absolutely nuclear here for Bonkers to save the round. He's had a bit of a quiet one. Annoying movement for him to deal with, and unfortunately, the aim not quite flicky enough. RDW from over the top. Going to close that one out with a nice 4K. He's had a ton of multi-frags this game on the Viper. Yeah, I have to say both Vipers been doing a lot of the heavy lifting for both respective rosters. RD, we saw him on the Astra yesterday. We're now seeing it on the Viper. Always love to see uh, a player like RD, of course, on that kind of agent. We've seen him time and time again on this Icebox map, especially before his days in order. Kept up the great work, you can see. But order, they're two away now from taking home Icebox off of Bonkers, who started this game off 8-4 to four in the first half. Bonkers, they've let it slip almost a little bit too much. Order have taken four rounds consecutively you want without to play, an answer. Let's play. Tua comes out for Mike. Going to allow them to cheat the economy a little bit more. As we get this Viper's bit across the A side, drone on in and Swirl just dancing around the outskirts of that ult. Seeing yeah. if he could find RDW and make this round a little easier for Bonkers, but... Unfortunately, not to be the case. Shot missed on middle by Mike, but Nerza with the under two position cover gives the man advantage over towards Bonkers. Yeah, Bonkers. Finally, Ronski, who, I have to say, has found a few too many picks with that headhunter that Bonkers would like. Make him now drone towards mid. Recon shock. Just holding that control for the moment, not letting Bonkers through that side of the map. But Texter will be falling and. Slowly starting to crumble here. This auto hold is looking a little bit rough though. Or RD will peek in front of his Viper's pit. Goes for an aggressive pick. He knows that Swell likes to play up top. We'll be able to trade it back out. RD, the key linchpin to look at to hold down this side against Bonkers. He is going to reposition on top of the box, but what will take him out? Pop the Viper's pit of his own. The cover's now blown. Bonkers left. now look to take this site off of water, but they have to contend with Maple, who's coming swinging from screens. They have spotted up what spike top planted. the site. It's Disco. 1v3 wants the spike, goes down, looking to go through this blossom cloud, and well, he has to check every single angle. He's got no idea where these Bonkers players are. Quick little peek towards the top of the belt. Disco finds Sikyo, puts down the turret, and rendezvous, but he heard it! He's got the sound cue, Mike! Teleports in the open, and now it's Disco versus Watt for the 1v1. Disco down to 1 in HP, and Watt just looking to wrap around the site. He doesn't need to sit on top of this Viper's bit anymore. The presence oh, alone gives beautiful. him a second member, and he dunks the Snake's fight on. Beautiful play. A little bit of a closer affair than Bonkers would like, but you can see that they're not too disheartened about that one. Uh, Mike's it's, smiling. It's going to be very hard, though. I mean, one player surviving means that they have to kind of scrape a buy together here and might make them a little bit lighter on the U2. You see Sicko has to go down to half armor. Merz has to go down to half armor. At least Swirl can pull knives this round, which allows them to right stabilize here. the economy a little bit more. They've got Hunter's Fury to play with to deal with that lockdown. Bronski, rifle up. Might not rip... Uh, he actually is going to rip two of this oh, round, no so way. not worrying too much about the economy at the end of this game. Early duel over towards B long here could be absolutely everything. Early lockdown already invested there by Disco and RDW already on top of that pick. The pressure's on early swirl. Suicide mission to try and get up to Kitchen Hall and... Well, Disco shuts it down. Lockdown doesn't find anybody bonkers. Still looking to take this B side after such a commanding defense being put up by order. The Viper down, Maple just goes for a pick for free. Recon comes through Mercer, finds one on the work over towards mid. Sicko trying to get out of the ping, the shock dart out. Sicko does fade away. Needs to play with Mercer. 2v3 ensues. Order, great hold to B and Bonkers. For some strange reason, still tried to go for it. Wall gets invested by Texter here. Again, just doing a fantastic job buying time for the rotates to come in here. Playing over towards backside. Bonkers now with sight control. Going to get that KO ult in, making Order's life a little bit more difficult. Great movement from Texter, just dodging all the util dodges, all the snake bites, all the fragments. And like I said, just doing an excellent job on that A site, allowing time for the rotations to come in, allowing time for his team to flood in through rafter, in through screens, and getting all the work done. And you have to feel for Bonkers right now. They've kind of really been thrown a spanner in the works right now. You saw order at the start of this one. They were feeling a little bit rough about it. Texter looked a little bit sad, to say the least. And, well, now they're back into it. Focus up. Drinks are on. Tactical pause here for order. They're one away 
from taking this Icebox game. And Bonkers, it felt like it was in their grasp from the first half, and then piece by piece it all fell apart. What now? What does he call to the team here? They've all got an input, of course, as he said. It's a, a joint kind of IGL for this Bonkers roster, but at State Order, really starting to hit their margins here. And I have to say, RD definitely showing up big on this Viper and stopping so many hits from coming in. I think that was another round where uh, Bonkers just did not know what to do uh, in that situation of the lockdown. They didn't know whether to fight the lockdown or play outside of it. There was a bit of miscommunication and that's cost them multiple times. Don't have to play against Killjoys too often anymore, especially in this region. I feel like it's a pick that's fallen out of favor and obviously a lot of people picking up the chamber, not playing double senti as much. Um, issue obviously being the money here for Bonkers. Like I said, coming down to one player surviving some of those previous rounds means that you're down to a Sheriff, you're down to uh, a Spectre here for Mirza. So they're going to have to get a lot done with a little. Ronski. We're going to get aggressive with that Ron debut. Power of the Chamber brings. Play it as a Duelist if you want, or play it as a Senti. See, going for the swing and not going to stop until he finds the first Mirza take it out of the mix that's info gathering it taken away here by the side of bonkers and order three players over towards this a site early on you can see ronski just playing up the top of the rafter backed up by maple texas playing the low angle Ooh, a great shot swirl able to find the head ronski taken traded back bonkers still yeah. look to this a site with all the pressure they've got they've thrown the wall down they now just need to find these other two players. Texter and Maple, though, playing so, so passive. They have to try and overswing and maybe overaggress into them. This will be a great round for Swirl to come alive. Waiting for gas here is Bonkers just trying to poke a prod over from 410. Mike still got mid under control as RDW starting to make some inroads over towards B Long. Spike getting tapped. So much pressure in this left. round here. Bonkers do not want to make a mistake if they can avoid it here, Tony. Clebus on to avoid getting tagged on that dart. Mike reads the flank from RDW and order. It's not what they want right now. They really need that flank in play to put the pressure on, but Bonkers, they're playing carefree. Swirl at the top of the box, and what will be finding Texter. Disco, the last remaining player up on the raft. Pink on the dart. The Hunter's Fury tags him up. Disco trying to dodge it, trying to hit the movement. And of course, Disco just trying to get a pick. Bonkers, they find it 12 12. We go to OT for map number one. It's a repeat story. It's order in overtime against Bonkers in this lower bracket. And of course, Icebox has been tip for tap. We saw a straight start from Bonkers, but they've strayed away from that path. Order able to take it all the way to match point. But well, half charge ultimates, five credits per player. What do we see? No glass cannon ops, just straight vandals across the entire board. Yeah, Order really going to be kicking themselves. They they got the opening pick. They got the man advantage. They had a pretty reasonable read, even the reactive sage wall being used over towards the A side of the map. But still couldn't put the pieces together there. Bonkers hanging on for dear life. Felt like a game they were definitely going to win in the first half. And this was their stronger of the two sides over here on the defense. Shock dart. Should chip a little bit of damage onto order there as the majority of them come out the lower side and already they've got a pretty good read. Mike, with that info line over towards B-Long, has not seen a single thing. You haven't had a dart. You haven't had that uh, drone being invested over there. So you can see Bonkers very heavily lent towards this A side of the map and over towards middle as well. Yeah, Mazza holding on the boiler. Three players around that screen's position swell. Great drone. Great drone here, sicko. Oh, it doesn't actually see spot anyone. anyone. What? Order. They escape it by the skin of their teeth, though, as well. Able to find the quick little opener. Mike and the rest of Bonk is holding it down. What? Able to hold two up at top of the screen's position. Nobody's contested. That was such an interesting owl drone. Dodged out by order, but they still have been found in this aid take and Mike is in such an aggressive forward position if Mike falls here Order can look to take B oh, and no. rightly so Disco finds the shot to Mike but it's a double fake they're going straight back to A they might catch Mercer out too this would be the round you're kicking yourself for back. if you're bonkers seconds left. Disco recalling his turret here bonkers very split up here if one of these players goes down it could be a bit of a nightmare Mercer over towards jail side housed across their placement from RDW Seems like Mirza just listening for footsteps, but 
already snake bited out of position. Really, really nice util to clear there and in comes uh, Watt on the back of site. He's got that wall up. He's gonna snake bite to try to deny that plant. Oh, nice shot from Watt as well, and the snake bite's enough to get it done. Massive, massive round from Watt. Another 4k on the Viper. It feels like both of these Vipers just multi-fragging up a storm. And a bit of a shaky 4 on 2, but look, Bonkers, they get it done. And now they're on map point here on Icebox. Oh, a little bit of BM there. You normally don't see that out of Watt. He's normally a very respectable player, but he knows what this game means right now. Mosey can see firing up on the camera. Bonkers are now on match point. Of course, they had such a strong lead in the first half. It was 9-4. to four. You felt like it was really the Cinderella run starting to come alive, but then Order, they're able to bounce back. They slowly identify what's going wrong, and piece by piece, they picked it apart. They found themselves match point before Bonkers. But look at this kill feed. Look at this scoreboard. 29 kills for what? 27 for RDW. These Vipers have been doing a massive work here already in this first map. Take flight. Early drone over towards the A side of the map. They've really tried to find out where Ronsky's at and try to punish him, but that's the second time Merza's lost as the first pick for Bonkers. <laughs> Ronsky just walking up on that deep line as soon as the drone comes in, and Bonkers, they don't want to let that pick go by the wayside. Starting to progress over towards 410 again. Both Sicko and Swell looking for a pick while Mike's works be long. Watt still holding over towards that middle side of the map. Trademark dealt with by Swell. And he's going to make a lot of mo noise falling back. Trying to bait out a peek for Sicko so that he could try and punish it. But looks like with both of those order players on the deep line, I could have sworn he was going to get punished there. But seems like Bonkers want to keep probing into this, this A site. Really nice shot from Swell there, Tony. Yeah, it just, all of a sudden, it looks like Bonkers are back in, so it just, one wild oh shot God. hits from Swell, something you're not expecting if you're auto, and on site now, team, the spike will go down, Bonkers, they're playing very forward positions, they have to say, trying to take these fights against auto before they can even walk in, and maybe that's a mistake, you kind of want to fall back a little bit, play it a little bit safer, play the range like Sicko is, Oda was the front of Maze with his teammate, what goes out, and it's two players swinging, one from the rafter and one from the hell, Mike, now looking to rotate from the screen side. Sicko's just baiting for the time, calling to his teammate now that they have standing. Spike once, Maple up stop, and down low goes RDW. Recon comes out, Mike's able to dodge it for the moment, but now he needs to isolate these doors. It's a rough situation, especially being tagged on that recon. Perfect 2v1 there, order play it well, and they take us to another overtime. Mm, swap sides yet again. Feels like Bonkers just allowed to do whatever they want on this A side of the map. Order trying to play things by the numbers after they get that pick from Ronsky. They've fallen back into that retake A setup on towards those rafters and, and back uh, of hell sort of lines, but hasn't really been working out for them. It feels like Bonkers have been able to start to recover man disadvantages in those kind of positions pretty consistently. Either way, though, Bonkers back on the defense. Seems like Order. Looking to size up this A side of the map. Mike again is just getting on this deep B info line. Not really being contested, not really being shut down. So he's getting a lot of great information there. And the spike, spike being dropped early A. by Swell is great info indeed. IDW able to sneak through middle though. Mm. Sound cute. Swell getting fight. antsy for it. Heard the rendezvous. Of course, the rest of order. Uh, Swell. Tends to play that angle very further forward. RDW finding Mike up in kitchen gives control of the beast site for order to just walk on over. They have to deal with what underneath this tube line. He's expecting maybe a player to peek from this position in just a second order. I think a slow way around. Of course, what is low HP, so doesn't want to go for an overswing. Meet the tail end of a player. Snakes fight towards the front of the site. Trying to get a player vulnerable, but Viper's pit from RDW. Gives great cover to the site, and there's so much pressure for the Bonkers players to retake into it. Yeah, it's a nightmare retake, really. You have to get a little bit fortunate or play it very well, and even with the chemistry between Watt and Sicko, probably going to be a bridge too far with the Nano on the spike already. Watt walking around the yellow side, checked by Disco early on. Sicko decaying inside the ult, can't get on the spike because there's a Nano there, and... RDW's done a masterclass that round, sneaking through middle, evening up that man disadvantage, walks all the way through kitchen, and that multi-frag as well as a spike plan allows him to get the pit which secures the round. It's just yet another massive play from one of the Vipers. Yeah, it's RD 
and what both tit for tat. You can't separate them. They just one round it's RD yeah. fighting a three K or four K, then the other round it's what fighting a three K or four K. RD though, one kill ahead of what? Of course, he's died less too. RD a little bit more slipperier than what it would seem. And order. I'm on away from closing out Icebox here. It's been a nightmare start for them so far. Another OT banger in the first map. Order seem to struggle against a few of these kind of mixed up teams that have shaken things recently. And because Order, as you said, Pilsky shaking ahead. up their roles recently, just still trying to find their footing. Yeah, Ronsky's on this info line towards B. Hasn't heard any so for you till this is just being bonkers go to stick up all the way up 410. Turret's in that position, and Texter on top of screens this time might be able to find a freebie once that Viper Wall goes down and try to get out of dodge. Nice scan oh. and a really nice shot from Swell yet again. That flicky aim eh? just being his best friend up on top of Jenny there. Even oh. gets Gisco on the backside of Raft out and deals with the dart. He's having a lot of impact as the swipe goes down for Bonkers with Amanda's advantage. Yeah, that was just such a pivotal play there from Swell. Snakes by walked in Ronski. Too low to get across it and. Now you can see that there's two players here for Order trying to mount this read sync with Bonkers. They've got all position to work with two players towards the maze. One up on the belt, one on the top of sight. RD drops down. Swell able to find Maple though, and flying through the air with the knives, but it's what to find it. A little bit of a micro adjustment. Swell able to find that player tucked amongst the Viper wall. And then he knew exactly where Disco was. He spotted a pixel. Swell not inching a muscle. Discipline 14 14. We go to another overtime here. Bonkers aren't done with Icebox just yet, and neither are Order. That's just a massive round from Swell. And I'm just wondering when Order on this defense are going to stop letting Bonkers just walk straight up maze, straight up 410 into the A site and get freebies all over the place. Like even Ronsky's been able to walk up maze side and get opening picks, and then they still just find that the round falls apart from there. Mike again on this B info line. Uncontested early on, but this time Order going to push him off and actually try to rob uh, Bonkers of a little bit of the info that they've been able to get for free from the majority of these rounds. Ronsky shut down over towards on the A side of the map, but an opening pick on the sofa, no less. Means that there's no dart, no drone, and a man advantage here for Bonkers. Even in the post plant, they're going to be feeling a little bit safer about closing this round. Yeah, you have to feel for Maple. That's a hard angle to check, especially when you're the one that's showing presence first. Plane goes down with the wall from Texter. The order. Have themselves in a suitable post plane position. They've got Disco on the swarm lineup, so I imagine they've got RD lurking lower mid. Looking to wrap up through this lower shoe line as the tap comes in. Sicko to find a run. Ski and the peaks are one standing. by one. And one by one they will fall. That snake spike is tossed onto the spike, but Mike's able to stick it fully because it's just short of the range that it's necessary. RD finds Mercer, but what immediately to trade it back? Bonkers! A beautiful retake. Switching Order side. just a little bit late to that flank up maybe for RDW and peeking one by one into these Bonkers players coming for the retake. Very unfortunate mistakes being shown by Order right now. Yeah, Bonkers B-side retakes have been fantastic this game. Having a whole lot of success. Now Bonkers back on that attacking side. This is where Order are like, okay, yeah, we've had enough at this point. Four-way stack on the A site. How many rounds can you just let this keep happening over and over and over again? But this time, it seems like Bonkers changing things up a little bit. They want to try to contest Ronsky on B-Long. I'm going to send Mirza and uh, Sicko over towards this A side of the map. There you go. Nice pick oh. from Mike. Opening frag onto Ronsky. That's all of that B side of the map loss for Order. You can see they stack heavily towards A. At least they're able to clean up Mirza over on that A side of the map. But this is going to very, very quickly be a four on four post plant. And Order doesn't have a whole lot of map control except for RD and Kitchen. Yeah, that is unfortunate. Ronsky getting caught on that pick. That trademark goes down. And yeah. so does everything else. The B side now is going to be retaken by Order, but not. If Bonkers are holding this flank so perfectly, maybe we're going to come up, but it's what? Just hitting shot after shot and stunning perfection. RD, 1v4 to do it and keep Bonkers out of this game for the moment. He hits the first, but can't quite hit the second. A strong swing from Swirl, and Bonkers will be taking ice spots 16 to 14 against Order. You can see what very calm collected a player, of course, that. We see very little pop-offs, but that game was a massive one from him.
Yeah, he's definitely had it in him for a while. It feels like uh, Viper's kind of been his uh, go-to agent for, for quite a while now. So he's well and truly within his comfort zone, having a lot of big rounds there for Bonkers. I think Swell was kind of the difference maker at the end of the game. He was pretty much uh, a non-contributor for most of regulation. And then as he had the, the end of regulation and towards OT, he had a couple of massive, massive rounds, which kind of put Bonkers over the top, particularly some of those rounds, walking up into A, getting some massive entries. Mike had a couple of pop-offs as well that last round getting the pick on Ronsky was a massive difference maker. So, I mean, order now, they're in a bit of a pickle. They've had so many bloody close games, almost 24 rounds, almost every single map, including some of the games against Fun Crew. This one goes to OT and they drop it. And the team that's the clear favorite for this whole tournament and to go over and represent our region is actually one map away from dropping out of the tournament. It's kind of unheard of. Yeah, he couldn't write a better story if you're you're rooting against order but if you're rooting for order right now you hate to see it so many unfortunate drop rounds so many unfortunate mistakes and bonkers the mixed team ragtag bunch of players that have been left out from other rosters come together and do it against the region's best you can't really write it better than that mm. it's gonna be order dropping first map that was their pick of ice spots we now go to ascent after this quick break though I, I don't know what to say Pilsky this is not what we we're expecting at all yeah not at all I mean we've had a couple of VOTs now where mixed teams have done very very well for themselves and we do have uh, some very very talented players in our region just not quite putting all of the teams together but uh, look let's see if order the team that's got the chemistry behind them that's got the tenure can recover uh, in this series because like I said one map that's all it's going to take to send them out of the tournament here yeah, one map is the difference maker and of course we'll go to a quick commercial break while we set up for our second don't go anywhere don't touch that browser we'll be back with more oceanic chance action before you know it
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're live back into the VOT, the Valorant Oceana Tour Oceanic Championship here. Of course, I'm Tutap Tony. Joined by me this evening is Pilski. And well, Pilski, we saw a map one upset yet again. It wasn't fun crew this time. It was a mixed look bonkers taking down order on Icebox. Yeah, so, I mean, looking at Order's history on Icebox now, I mean, they've had two OTs, a very, very close win that, that was honestly a losable game up against Bobo, and they've been upset by Fun Crew uh, in the last stage and now getting upset again by Bonkers. Um, you know, obviously, these are results that are few and far between. You don't get a whole lot of reps, especially for a team where half the teams last season just chose to forfeit against them instead of actually playing them. Um, so, look... Statistics aside, it's a rough state of affairs for order. Honestly, maybe three or four rounds of Valorant could be the difference between them having a clean run through the upper bracket and them being one map away from getting eliminated. So they need to get themselves fired up. We all know that they have the, the ceiling and the potential to be able to win the whole tournament. Um, it's just about being able to put the maps together at the right times because Bonkers... They really showed up to play on Icebox there. Um, we'll see if they can keep it going for a cent. As a mixed team, I mean, their map pick here, um, they need to be well organized on this attacking side of a cent here. They need to make sure that they get themselves off to a really, really nice start before they move over towards the defense. But as a mixed team, some of the easiest things to prepare for is your own map pick. At least you can get all your ducks in a row if you know what you're picking into the series. And um, that does give me a little bit of confidence. But how consistent can some of these players be? Because Swell, I think, notoriously inconsistent. He didn't have the best of games last game. There's definitely some more ceiling there. But players like Watt and, and Mike, for example, these are not players that if you go back through the last couple of seasons of VOT, Tony, they're not popping off every game. Like how many game is, games are a 30 bomb from Watt? Like not, not often. He's probably not playing Viper on this map either. So this is where Bonkers, they need to dive a little bit deeper into the firepower. I, I'm wondering where the the performances are going to come from, who's going to be putting the team on their back this game, um, because I, I would be skeptical to say it's going to be the same win conditions again. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of questions asked of Bonkers. What do they play? What do they pick? It's what to the smokes here. As well, staying to the jet. And for the side of order, they've put Texter back to the Omen. They've put Maple on the fade. Disco to the Kaya. They've... They've yeah. gone back to what works, it seems. Yeah. They've, they've thrown everything that they've been working on out the window. They're back to what they know best. Bronski fragging it up on Jet, and he's been quiet so far this series, I have to say. We saw some flashes in the pan, some glimpses of brilliance, but of course, it's going to be a, an interesting one to look at as we fly over our beautiful map of Ascent. Samsung, Valorant Oceana Tour. Valorant OCE, unleash your inner champion with Samsung Odyssey gaming monitors. Buy yourself a 49-inch Odyssey G9 monitor from Samsung New Zealand and receive a bonus 27-inch Odyssey G3 monitor or a bonus 1 terabyte 980 Pro NVMe M.2 SSD. Visit samsung.com forward slash NZLPL for more Odyssey gaming monitor details. Offer valid until August 16th. T's and C's apply. Pilski. This is a lot to take in right now. Order going back to their roots, know that they're on the back foot. And you can sense that the pressure is really starting to get to them. Yeah, we will see if they can uh, they can deal with it. I think a little bit easier on their uh, defensive side. They're playing double initiator style. Right so are bonkers. They're playing a little bit more right of a, a consistent comp with the Killjoy instead of the Chamber. So a little bit less firepower in that regard. But that could be worrying if you're going up against order. I mean, any jet chamber with RDW Ronsky on the other side of the map is a uh, comp that you do have to fear. Slow creep in towards this B main from both of these teams. Texter on this deep line, gonna get paranoid and instantly picked Ooh. up by Swell there, Tony. Perfect pick to start it off. Swell to start an entry. This site, Mercer able to find Ronsky to shutting down order before they can even have a chance to think these low HP bars are favorable for the shots. If Maple's able to hit them, but Swell able to trade it back. RD finding Swell in the tail end of things. But Order, you can see the HP is not favorable right now. Might just sit B main and cause so much pressure. RD, W has to look towards this angle. He's not really expecting to go up on the jump, but still able to hit the shot. An unexpected angle. RD able to find it though. Mike! Kill him with that friend. Oh, he, doesn't, he doesn't find him. Pilski. Madness continues in this series. RDW now in the 1v1 against Watt. Four HP, one headhunter bullet that spiked too far gone for it. And Watt 
catches him on the knife, pull, pulls the rug from over his eyes, and, well, bonkers, they find Pistol, but I don't think it was convincing at all. It's fine. It wasn't on stream. It's all good. No one saw it. Oh, order. That's Ugh. a bit of pill to swallow. Dropping that pistol. Nice patience. Nice timing from Bonkers. It felt like they had a great read on what was happening there. Just picking up Texter. He couldn't get out of dodge. He gets hit by the KO knife and the paranoia almost at the exact I same time. And Bonkers nightmare. seems like they want to go straight back towards the speed side of the map. Or they're going to take a single save. Look towards that next gun round. So Swirl going straight in here on the entry. Looking to just clear out the site. Smokes come on in. Bonkers walk their way straight into an open B site. This is where Order is going to try to set up to do some damage. Set up for some exits if possible. Yeah, set a few players market. Set a few players spawn. Maybe set a few outside of B main. As you can see, there is one player here. Sicko. On the Ares could be medium fatal demise in just a second. He needs to be cautious of his flight. Bronski missing the first bullet, but doesn't quite miss the second. Hits the shot. Ares drops and... Order will pick up that one gun, but how many more can they get? How more aggressive do Bonkers go for this one? Where do they exit from is the question. You've got so many players holding different angles in tight knit corners that are kind of hard to check. Yeah, I like the entry pathing going back towards CT. At least they deal with Texter, but that's another set of armor taken away. Bronski hits a couple of things as well. So a lot of armors being taken away from the Bonkers group. RDW going down. They're not actually going to hold on to a Spectre or an Ares or anything as they head into their first gun round here. Rifles across the board. RDW getting himself very, very close to his tour already. So in some of these earlier uh, bonus rounds or half buys, that could be pretty nice. Bonkers is going to even up their cash across the board. Two plus K straight into their early bonus. And it seems like, again, they want to put emphasis on this B side of the map. Probably need to take things slower. If they go in early, you're going to get hit by this KO knife and a bit of the fade util as well. That's it's interesting to know that as well. We saw from the series yesterday, Fun Crew just loved to take A against Order, and it kind of really broke them in a few of those rounds. Bonkers, though, a different plate that we're being served right now. A lot of heavy exec onto this B site, and this time, Order they placed their members a little bit further forward and a little bit more in positions to trade Ronski towards the laneway. Maple gonna be fragmented out, forced to fall, but Swell actually able to find it with the Spectre dashes into the cloud burst. Disco with the range on the Vandal is better than the Spectre at this stage, but Vandal now picks up. Swell caught flicking left and right. He's not gonna expect that. Ronski still towards the stairs. A quick little two from Ronski, making a third from Texter, and now it's just what tags up from the shots. He's looking for a little bit of a spray down, nothing going to be happening or to find the first but of course they lost so many guns in that engagement bonkers they're happy with that one. Oh, 100 percent especially with how the start of that round went like order to shut down that b side hit with all the protocols ko knife immediately followed up by the fragment uh omen smoke comes across the map there's no way they can exec that b site from that position so bonkers they just cut sound the patience pays off for them they're able to pick up a handful of guns they take almost all the sets of armor away from order which means that they're pretty bankrupt going into this first gun round here and bonkers has a great chance to do some damage here but this is where we need to see exactly this a bit more diversity out from bonkers it can't just go be every single round they're going to start working middle a little bit more, but a nice haunt out there from Maple does shot spot the position of a couple of these players. A main control comes out here for Order. So they've got RDW tucked nicely into Wine and Order. Very centralized around middle, ready to go off the back of Disco's flash here. They're able to catch Mike with his pants down right towards bottom mid, and they're just going to continue fighting for middle. Paranoia comes out from Techstar. RDW in Wine is in pole position to shut the rest of this push down. Prime position though is Texter able to find the first. Adi does decide to show his face at just the right time. Sicko stop from the plant. The spray comes through. What able to find Disco? Steal away another order gun, but order steal away another round. And it's an interesting thing to note that order have made that adaptation. They saw that they gave up mid a lot yesterday on their game and on the set against Fun Crew and. Showing a little bit of adaptability here, taking that mid control, stopping Bonkers from trying to go for that A split. Well played order. 100%. Especially heading into a first gun round, you're expecting a bit of a slower round. You're expecting a default out of uh, the Bonkers side after their bonus. And that mid crunch was absolutely beautiful. KO flash off the top and then Paranoia straight down through short. 
really, really nice set play to be able to contest me the fight. Now you've got to push towards this A side of the map. Omen Util on top of the Fragment Disco really start maneuvering his way around the map. They're changing around their setup round to round and getting great usage out of that KO Util. Monsky deep up cat here. Maple on the off angle in towards B. Seems like order so so good for them shutting down this half by but they're in very aggressive positions need to make sure they're not dropping too many guns to the sheriffs they can't be giving everything over to bonkers take an inch they'll take a mile shot toward a force rdw just goes for straight swings bang one make it two doesn't even need to move his mouse all too much maple picks up swell bonkers still they take a few kills they inch out a few of these guns off of order and you know, one, two more rounds like that, or, you know, it just gets closer and closer. Bonkers, of course, will be now to a bite. That was just an eco for them. It's nothing too major to look at, but order. A strong lead to start ascent off. They just need to keep this ball rolling. Hold on, I'll tip Bonkers. Definitely could be a set play on the cards. Got that lockdown, Hunter's Fury. Got the KO all out of Mirza as well. There's that blinding combination with the Knights getting oh. ripped from Ronsky, but with two players sitting all the way back, it's just great protocols out of Bonkers, anticipating that aggressive push-up A main now in the four on five. Order taking mid control. They've lost that whole A site, but they might have a bit of a misread here. They're trying to flank A, trying to retake that A side of the map. And in the meanwhile, the spike still in spawn actually gets dropped. So Order, well aware of what's happening, but this is a very weird round. What the hell is going on? What is going on indeed? What? Able to find Disco, but the teleport to the corner doesn't expect Texter. And, well, the spikes in the hands of Mike Swell. He's the sole attacker over at this A side himself. And Mike will be looking to plant that spike down, but he will hear the teleport out of Texter. And Texter's going to use that teleport fully. Mike has heard it. Now the rotation and the callback to A. They what? need to get there quickly. Swell's not looking the right way, but he turns around. Able to live with 30 HP to find the 3k and find Bonkers their third. Pilsky, oh. this game just continues to deliver so many crazy things. That round was just absolute mess. Like, fair go to order. They were trying to read it as best they could, trying to retake that A side of the map after losing the initial pick off the aggressive play, but Bonkers trying to go for a little bit of a, a fake off the A side take and walk into B. And once they get that opening pick so cleanly, the round kind of gets a little bit weird. And like I said, mixed team on the attacking side, you find yourself in unfamiliar situations, things can get a little bit messy. There's the KO knife and RDW. He, on this chamber, has been really great in opening pick percentages overseas. And again, opening pick goes his way. Locked down the follow up from Bonkers, but now with the man disadvantage. That's not where you want to be right now if you're Bonkers, especially losing Mirza. That knife could be great. Lockdown is better. Bonkers walk their way up. Swell across to the site. Mike able to find that quick pick on a maple. And you can see holding underneath the long position, but a quick check from Disco back. The null come in. It's great. And now they're pushing the texture. He's taking the fights against Bonkers. If they can even stabilize themselves. Sicko off of the site. Hunter's Fury. Here's the tap. He needs to go for the shot. Half tag up to Texter. Will look to do the final blow, but of course now Ronsky gonna hunt him down. Shot straight to the dome in front of the Hunter's Fury. Order, a beautiful read taken. It's been a while since we've seen a round like that out of order. Well, they've done a great job leaning towards B there. I mean, a lot of these rounds you do see when you've got the Killjoy all available, it's very, very easy to just go for that B-site play, set yourself up for a round, but you can see that the high-level team's definitely going to be contesting B-main, definitely going to be making your life miserable if you go and try to place that lockdown in. And Before Bonkers can even get themselves comfortable on that B-site, post-lockdown, they've already lost a player. They're already getting harassed on their way into the site, and order was all over that. Shutting them down early on as well. The rest of Bonkers forced to save in this one. We've seen some crazy things. We've seen some ecos yesterday that just shouldn't work, but somehow did. You can see Bonkers opting to take some mid control this time. Order have opted to give it up a little bit because they've got Ronsky in that corner. Does receive damage from the shock. Mirza, I'm not going to check the angle. Did he not hear the sound cue? I think they just thought they killed the chamber troop. Just trying to. Shock that out, Pizza. Get rid of the trademark. 
progression smoke out towards B main here. This is a very awkward position for Texter. He's going to walk straight past Swirl inside the smoke. Actually, he was over towards log side. Mike's still alive on towards B main. Tries to throw out a swarm. Texter creeping into B main there. Able to find that pick. The spike goes down in the back of the B site, but Sicko's on the other side of the map again. Sicko kind of needs to get to his teammates right now, Texter. Takes a little bit of shots, but so does Sicko. Marshall in for what? Needs to be a sheriff right now. And warden of this site. Texter falls. Maple. Going to be... Oh, sorry, it's Texter. Stick of the spike fully. Pros don't faint. Sicko. Full main shot. Doesn't really happen. Bonkers drop another order. Able to take it, of course. That was a very, very strange series of events, I have to say. Great retake order. Oh, uh, five to three now in this second map, and that's what they need. They need to find rounds like that where they just the retake somehow works. Bonkers, of course, they're back to guns now. They have the guardian that was saved in that last one from Sicko, so the money could start to develop here for Bonkers. They need some rounds. They need a bit more depth on this uh, attacking side as well. They've had a lot of success on this B side, but they cannot avoid RDW. He's everywhere they go. Paranoia in combination with that KO knife. Maple's found his way to wind though, and he's able to find the opening pick to boot. Now it's starting to get hunted down, but a little bit of help from Techstart doesn't really give him too much of an opportunity. Fortunately, goes down very quickly there. RDW straight through that heaven smoke, not giving any respect at all, and now we're back into another three on three. Another three on three ensues, another order One enemy take potentially, but not if Ronsky just finds them, rips them like that. Sicko Swirl don't even know what hit them. Door Spike is now stuck, and you can see that Mike needs to isolate individual fights right now. Order. I give him one. Ronsky falls. And the swing looks to come from heaven, and Mike is trained in on that angle. The flash comes out. Perfect shot from Mike. So disciplined. And Order. That's a little bit undisciplined from them. Not what you want to see. They need to take these fights together. Disco now. One v one of a lifetime. And well, he'll win a lifetime back. Mike falls. Order stay off another round. Bonkers, they come so close, though. Almost a 1v3 from Mike. He's had a couple of nice plays in there. Doesn't feel like he wants to dump in the lockdown, but that means he's got uh, access to it for the next round. Probably going to be a half buy out here for Bonkers, but definitely making that a more expensive round for Order who I imagine are getting a little bit on the poorer side of things. At least they've got Thank access you. to the Blaze Veronsky. But definitely going to need to see some kills get shipped in here for Bonkers if they're going to try to keep this half competitive. It's starting to slip away from them. Great little haunt in there from Maple. Able to find that opening oh. pick, but losing that player in B main as well as players on other sides of the map gives some vandals over to order, Spike down or to Bonkers rather, that they can try to pick up. But in the meanwhile, I mean order with that mid push. Been able to stay all over this on top of things and Disco creeping up from stairs side, even though it got a little dicey for a moment. Couple of kills coming through. Order, well and truly on top of that. Three players surviving. So that's going to stabilize their money a little bit more. Bonkers now at this 7 3 position probably can't pressure the money too much. They just need to try to get these last couple of gun rounds back to back. They've got the lockdown available. And they're going to take a time out and have a bit of a chat about things. It's felt a little stale on this attacking side of Ascent, has to be said. Yeah, I have to say, they came out of the gates with such an impressive explosive beat tank, and then that's kind of their one party trick. Gone. Order now just dismantling every hit that's come their way. Unfortunately, Bonkers, you can't be a one trick wonder right now. You need a little bit more diversity in some of these takes towards the site we haven't seen all too much mid aggression or all too much mid control being taken by bonkers we saw from fun crew yesterday that's really what worked with them they were able to dismantle order by taking that mid control taking the fights and just getting up in order's face so so early on and bonkers we're not seeing that from them right now got the lockdown again so We'll see if you get this lean towards B here from order, anticipating that that lockdown's going to come towards the B side of the map. Maple as well, 
It's going to be able to get a bit of info over towards A. If he haunts over that A site, throws in a Prowler, they're going to very quickly know that it's probably going to be able to push towards B. And again, you're seeing this B lane. Both RDW and Ronsky over here with Disco to support. They want to try to shut down this uh, lockdown plate before it even gets rolling. Deep little knife there. Trying to get the info. Ronsky has pop bleeds early. He is going to look to the updraft and has the lockdown goes down. Ronsky snipes two out of air, drops to lean, finally drops to swirl the answer back from Disco. So he drops into the site. Mercer able to find kill back and Nightfall beholds bonkers. They're blind and silent to the world right now. So spikes in hands of order it be mean yep. off of that jump shot from Ronsky. Nightmare scenario, both in terms of the ult and just in general here for Bonkers. No smokes to be able to retake that B main line. Text is still alive over here. Gonna throw that smoke deep at B main, make it difficult for them to contest. You've even got the fade as well. RDW's got this mid line locked down. He's even got his trademark over there. So with how long Bonkers are taking, they probably can't wrap through mid anyway, even if they wanted to. Gonna get rid of the trademark at least and make it a little bit of a worry in the back of Order's mind but with this left. smoke here. If tech start, it's gonna be very difficult. Paranoia is already ready to go and full util for Maple. Great well timed paranoia. Oh, they got it! Get no it. way! They got it! Oh my god, there's absolutely no way. Two Order players had eyes on Placing and Bonkers were able to get away with absolute robbery. Plant Five spike left. down. Shot almost hits the wall, bang opportunity. Mike tagged up and out in the open. Now it's up to Stupid Hero Merza. Make some magic, my friend, not against the magic makers themselves. Order. Merci. They give them the spike, they give them the plant, they give them some false sense of security. Pick the round up on a quick retake. Eight to three. This is more like the order we're expected to see. Go back to winning ways. It's what's worked, and it's what's working for them right now. Artie's got that tour as well, so you could probably even throw the op over to Ronsky. And it's a big boon of having, obviously, these chamber jet lineups. You can run that double op on defense. Makes it very difficult for your opponents, but well, we'll see if they're going to go for it. Seems like IDW is still holding on to his operator for the time being. Yeah, there you go. It's kind of what I expected. Ronsky going to pick that one up. So two different uh, ops here that Bonkers have to worry about here in the opening parts of this round. One of them already dealt with early on. Nice KO knife onto short. Oh. Even better shot from Ronsky though. And he goes oh. straight through the top mid smoke. This is what we want to see from Ronsky. This go to follow up from short. Order. Maybe giving away a couple more picks than they wanted to, but still with a man advantage. Ronsky, the, the blood's Five flowing down. right now. He's feeling himself dash towards Connects a link, and you can see that order. They've got control of spike once again, and a shot from Walski. Warbang head to finish, close the half convincingly Switching for side. order. It was rough for the first map. It went OT, it went deep, and it was not like the order we were expected to see. But they're back, baby. Order's on top in this second map, nine to three, and it just gets that a little bit scarier for Bonkers. Order playing aggressive on the defense. What do they bring? to their defense if you're bonkers right now because Ronsky's starting to fire up that's the order of old and it's Ronsky it's RD it's a world of hurt for whoever goes against him yeah much better game from texture as well has to be said here and with split being the last map I mean for a team like bonkers it's a mixed team a map that's on its way out of here. the pool I don't know what your confidence level would be especially after order looked pretty nice on it overseas uh, able to pick up that 13-1 over Boom. Order now with this A main control. Going to actually force their way into the site. It's just a retake scenario with that Sova from Tree side. And now this pushing towards middle from Bonkers. Oh. Does find RDW, but they haven't checked Texter here. And great little discipline there. Trade back from Texter. That's to say, RD unfortunately getting caught on the scope in. What do you want to see? Spike has gone down at that A site though, and Bonkers to read take here. The shots land. Disco almost able to live for free there. What flicked off for the moment? Flick back on. Knows that he didn't kill that player just yet. Ronsky going for this crouch frenzy spray against what right now? The paranoia even for good measure to help his teammate out, but it's just now to text to the short side. The spike is planted for him. He's looking for the shots, but just threading the needle right now. He will be able to find what? But Sicko. Running him down with the frenzy bonkers, three alive and claiming the pistol. That's around they desperately need it.
Yeah, nice pistol win for Bonkers. Been a bit of a quieter start to this game. After a big win on Icebox, it's felt like the momentum's very much in order's favour now. But, look, pistol round being picked up. Some anti-eco kills might give them the confidence to start to grind their way back into the game. Still a yeah, just... lot of work to do, though. Absolutely a lot of work to do, but yeah, one kill, two kill, the confidence could start to flow here as well. Feel confident, even getting the warbang shot and the Dexter on the fadeaway. Order, of course, just a throwaway round for them, Headhunter available for RDW, but of course, only pistols brought to the table. Bonkers, they want to make a flawless take of this round, they want to make quick work, don't want to drop any of these guns right now because of course you give order an inch they take a mile they've been doing it so far this entire game ultimate orb taken by maple almost halfway to that ultimate little jump peak tagged up for the trouble shock dart and bonkers have sizable control of this entire map to make sure not to over rotate that's what order's trying to go for here and Nicely plucked by RDW, takes out Swirl in middle, now Mercer in a bit of an awkward situation on Cat all on his lonesome, but he picks a great timing to peek out. What on this A site? Another smoke in one second, spotting these players out, knows he doesn't have to over peek, he's got the cover from tree side. Hex is still going to punish him, so look, a couple of guns being picked up there from Order, not a whole lot invested in that round, but they still get something out of it. Now Bonkers now, bonus is going to be a little bit more complicated for them after they drop those couple of guns. Yeah, it's gonna look a little bit dicey in the buy. You see a few of them, of course, still with around that 3k margin. Order invested into this one. This is a huge round on the table here for both these teams. Order, they take this, they find double digits, and well, then they face down a buy around. Two, or, two rounds really separate this game from going haywire, I have to say, Pilski. Order finds two, then it's more assuredly lights out. We go to third. Bonkers, they find two, then we've got a game on our hands. Okay, and Ives getting traded today, main with the paranoia. Not really being committed to off the back of that from Bonkers. Just trying to for force any potential over commitments there from Order. Dark covers getting traded out, especially with the Omen in your lineup, means that it's going to stall out the round for quite a bit. Particularly for the attackers, you've got to wait for that cycle of the second Omen smoke to really kick off a, a proper XE if you want to block off multiple chokes. And especially without that mid control, you still got to invest more and more smokes across the map to be able to get some more control. In the meanwhile, though, orders taking this B main off angle from Mike off the back of the turret in combination with the shock dart from Sicko. Gets a little bit of damage done. An awkward duel between two players, but neither one of them really committing to too much as order starting to take some mid control and kick off this mid to B split. That alarm bot's down, allowing them free passage here, Tony. Yeah, that alarm being down is great here for Order because now they can take market control for free and they can look to take a little bit more of the site. Of course, not quite open. There's three players here for Bongas to hold it down. Swirl can call the timing here, looking away in that smoke. Now the recon, great. Bonkers able to pick it up. Trade it back though is Ronski as well. Now walks the site, put under the pressure on the side of Bonkers, but Order, they've got the pressure on them. It's 19 seconds to get into this side and get that spike down, but there's two players from Bonkers still sitting still. Sicko with left. this Bulldog just needs to deny the plant. He can't quite hit the wallbang. He's given over his knowledge and his out. info. But Order know he's there. They finally flush him out, and well, now they've got oh, suitable oh, positions this. here for this retake. Yeah, KO comes out from Disco. Makes this retake even harder than it already is. Maple on low HP, happy to sit in the back of the main side and even providing a horn for his teammates over the top there. One or rather, remaining. it's a little bit of util to make lane even harder to progress up. Order all over this one. Last two players trying to be held inside of the site by Watt. Really wants to take all the guns away if he can. One enemy remaining. Great little tuck in the corner, just behind the door switch, and well, Artie knows exactly where Watt is. Watt will not get out alive, but he steals away the guns, mm. does all he really can. Auto though, they find 10 bonkers in a bit of a rough suit here. Now, of course, we said it's a game of those next two rounds. Order, they found the first, it's now all about this second. It's going to be bonkers to a bye, and it's going to be a tactical timeout being called. Order, they know that these next few rounds is going to make or break them. 
Yeah, I think that last round, I, I think a rare kind of positional misplay out of Sicko, usually pretty composed. I think him leaving Swill high and dry there on the lane side, um, the fact that he wasn't able to deny that spike anyway, if they just held that crossfire and he's able to draw enough aggro for Swill, could have been a completely different round. That really could have gone the way of bonkers, but hiding in the back of boat didn't really get him too much work done, unfortunately. Now, both of these teams pretty broke. You see both of them had no guns heading in towards uh, the end of that last round, which would usually be great news for Bonkers, but they lost two guns to the Classics and then reinvest in Vandals. So two of their players would be pretty broke here. Three of them would be all right to go Vandal armor and actually invest on in here. You can already see a couple of these order players down to half armor. So this is a massive, massive swing round. Both of these teams very broke. And if Order picks up this round, it could just be the game on a silver platter. But if Bonkers is able to recover here, they can start to call back into this half and try to swing for double digits. Um, you can see the buy light shields, Spectre, light shield vandals here. Maple, full shield, Spectre. Now I'm going to keep it a relatively even state. Bonkers, arguably shield advantage here. Well, that doesn't really mean much when one bullet to the head from one of these Vandals of Order and you could be meeting a fatal blow. Order, they pick up the pace this time. This is the night fall over and over towards the A site they go. Merce able to pick up RD for the fragment. Texter trying to get in. They need to flush this player out from back site. They finally will. Flash comes out on the swing. Merce gets aggressive for it. He gets a little bit too antsy, a little bit too early. And Swirl with the knives not able to hit anything. Ronsky finds it, picks it up. Order have found 11, their magic number they're after for so, so very long. And Bonkers, back to a save yet again. And what do they do for these next few rounds? Because Order, that was an impressive and an explosive hit to that A site. Yeah, really, really good pause into a, just a nice call. Just a good set play off the back of the fade ult, straight in towards that A site, just keeping things relatively simple, trying to control all the variables that they can and, and minimize the risk factors wherever possible. I think a couple of guns being kept over from order means their economy is still a little bit on the shaky side. And Bonker's gonna try to take advantage of that. They've actually invested in this round. Damage early on done by Swirl, nice dink on Toronsky. And again, order seems like they just wanna go ahead and hit one of these sites early on. Mike. It's caught looking maybe almost the wrong way. Flips back down. Swirl is covered for the moment. Now decides to peek on through, and it's way too early. And way too late. Order. I'm looking to flex their dominance over Bonkers in this second map. Of course, what? Spike planted. That's a few Spectres. Could look to bust that dodge. Spray it down. Smoke in front. And we'll be looking to walk through. Texter, though, meets him on the other side of it. It's Order 12, match point, second map. Go back to what works, Pilski, and it seems to be working so well. Looking like we're going to end up on split here, which I would say is probably quite worrying for Bonkers, unless they're going to put the pieces together super, super quick here. TP up to the top of the ticket booth there for Texter, in the case this is going to be a pretty passive default here for Order. They know that Bonkers going to have a whole lot to work with in this round, down to half shields on some of these players, maybe need to rely on a bit more of an aggressive play, so they're going to take things a little Get slower. Here comes the KO knife there. Dart into middle early on. An order just waiting for any aggression. Prowler's going into B main there for Maple, seeing if he can find a, a player over there, and there you go. Swell picking straight into tech start, losing a whole lot of HP. Ronsky up close as well, ready to capitalize, and he's all over it. Looking like the map on a silver platter now for order. You can see, of course, Bonkers only three. A low HP Mike, Sicko. It's rare to see positional misplays from him, and we've seen a few of them in these last few rounds. He's feeling out of sort. They just kind of maybe want to move on. Split if you're the side of Bonkers right now, but it's up to Mike. 20 HP suppressed up. Four players to deal with, full HP for almost everybody here for order, and it's Ronsky with the knives to deliver on a silver platter order. We'll be picking it back and taking second map off of Bonkers. 13 to 5. They go back to their roots, Pilski, and it seems to work. Yeah, no more roll swapping. It might just be a map dependent thing, you never know, but 
back to the roles that they are more comfortable on, that they've got a whole lot more reps on, and it works out a whole lot better for them. That's the kind of dominant victory that you expect from Order over a team like Bonkers. So I'm feeling a lot safer for Order now. We're heading towards Split. It's a map that they played very, very well on overseas. It's a map that uh, they've had a whole bunch of reps on in, in previous iterations of their lineup. A lot of the other teams in the region not really wanting to touch it too much. Order's played it a little bit here and there at least. Uh, and as for Bonkers, like I said, it's a map that's on the way out of the map pool. This is a mixed team. Like, how much are you really practicing and preparing a, a map like Split heading into this tournament? Yeah, as uh, as what said, this roster's only come together the last two weeks here before Oceanic Championship, and well, it's kind of hard to get everything ironed out in that short amount of time. Of course, you can get a good a few practice maps in, a few good weeks of scrims before this Oceanic Championship, but of course. It's going to be about the map pool, and of course, it obviously favors Order, who've been playing together for quite a while. They've got international representation and experience, and for the side of Bonkers, it's how they shake off defeat here. How well can a mixed team here shake off a rough game like that? Yeah, it's going to be difficult. Um, definitely, I wasn't super impressed by their pick either on Ascent there, like their attacking side. Like I said, they needed to have a much better start than that. Felt like they could only really get momentum on A and, and the pieces just weren't coming together. And sometimes you can have a bit of a misread on your map pool uh, as a mixed team. They did a whole lot better on Icebox. Maybe they can pull a rabbit out of the hat on Squid as well. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll see it. Of course, while we set up all for it, it's our third and final map. Don't go anywhere. Don't touch that browser. It's Icebox. Oh, uh, sorry. It's going to be split just after this.
nothing breaks a back like going back to the roots here of course we're back live into it third map of our first series it's order versus bonkers in the lower bracket and it looks like order are back for a moment who knows split of course to come up pilski order going back to their roots it just seems to work both teams trading maps here or there an impressive w from bonkers in that first one but order it looked textbook from them in that last yeah and i think uh side of uh starting on split is going to be absolutely massive whoever starts defense is going to be feeling a little bit more comfortable i think ascent like i said i mean it wasn't a particularly close map um i wasn't really a super big fan of uh, the pick out of bonkers didn't really feel like they were really comfortable or confident on it and heading into that attacking side they didn't get enough work done outside of those b hits so look at the end of the day like I said, sometimes it's a mixed team. You can have a bit of a misread on what maps you're good and bad on and what your strengths are as a team. Sometimes scrims aren't really good representation of uh, what you're actually going to get done in the server. But I wouldn't be expecting them to be well drilled on splits. So if they're going to get something done, I think they're going to need a defense start. They're probably going to need to uh, get a whole lot of work done there and, and try to scrape it by on attack. But like I said, order they performed very, very well on this map overseas. They got a 13-1 win over Boom in the series that they lost. Thought that was uh, kind of interesting. Kind of reminded me of the Bonkers game against Fancy where they haven't played a whole lot of split and then they just they pull a massive win out of nowhere. It's looking like they're going to keep the same agent composition like they did against Boom. So no changes at all, keeping the same roles. And um, I'd imagine that's probably in their best interest after what we saw in that last map. And, well, Pilski, you hate to see it if you're the side of bonkers you love to see if you order they get to start the defense here on our final map locking in that composition wasting no time texture to the astra rd to the sentinel love to see a cypher out of our i haven't seen him quite a while you know he's been hovering it here or there but he's kind of taking up that new role of course order they're going back to basics it's raise for ronski it's raise for swell it's mirza gonna be locking in the sky we've seen some impressive play out of mirza of course in the last stage when he was repping the bonkers banner of course the recent addition back in stage two but now looking like the veteran underneath the rest of these players as we can see some final hovers here might back to the chamber potentially what gonna be back on the smokes he's gonna be back on the astra this time as we take it to split of course a very interesting game in front of us of course but we've got to thank now, lovely friend Samsung, of course, Valorant OCE, Alicia in a champion with Samsung Odyssey Gaming Monitors. Buy a 49-inch Odyssey G9 monitor from Samsung New Zealand and receive a bonus 27-inch Odyssey G3 monitor or a bonus 1 terabyte 980 Pro NVMe M.2 SSD. Visit samsung.com forward slash NZ forward slash LPL for more Odyssey Gaming Monitor details. Offer ends. Oh, sorry, offer is valid until August 16th. Pilski, we're coming into split. Not many, too many mixed teams have played this map recently in order. They've got a lot of reps under their belt. Yeah, I mean, look, they didn't get to play a whole lot last season, so that's why their 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 map pool will have been a little bit dry in terms of the reps and officials. I'm hoping they've got a lot of scrims under their belt. They had a really nice defensive side against Boom overseas, and they get to start defense, so they're probably feeling pretty good about that. And let's see what Mike's doing over here towards the A side of the map. I guess he's going to go for a little bit of a lurk, see if he can find IDW, but that camera not going to allow him to get caught off guard for the time being. And uh, the rest of the boys seeing what they can get to done towards the middle here for bonkers. But as you often see here on split, as soon as you make your way towards those stairs, you're getting disrupted by the breach util, the raised aids, a bit of Astra stars as well. But bonkers have done a pretty decent job taking some ground here. Yeah, they're taking top mid control for the moment, maybe looking to go up through vent and over for a split to eight. All is being felt out for the moment for both Ross, as you can see that order they've got this great hold to heaven, so I wouldn't expect the bonkers want to go against it. Up through a heaven they will go and Arty, great camera spotting, not even just gonna bother pinging Mike. Camera will be taken out. Bonkers look to take this A site and order. They're already quick to rotate here. Onski 
He's going to get the timing here on a few players, potentially. They've spotted Disco walking out of that Astral Smoke and Swirl able to right-click him up. RD has the wire in place. That's to counter left. out anybody walking in front of him. RD going to take Side fights as he chooses. A. Double up One on the Frenzy. But made able to find last two from Heaven. Standing. And last player standing for both sides. It's Mike. The one to start off this A lurk now for the A Satan Frenzy Bullet. It's not quite hitting for RD and down to 70 points of HP. Mike just needs one bullet to the head and he will find it. He will find RD dead. File a missing persons report because bonkers have taken away Order's life in that one. Almost a two on five. Taken out of nowhere there by order. I mean, they had absolutely no business turning that around. Both RDW multi fragging up and Maple in on that retake after the first couple of picks go the way of bonkers. But Mike keeping things back under control. Another great round from him on the chain, but he had a pretty nice run of things over there on Icebox to kick off this series. So if he can really get himself warmed up and apply pressure over towards this A side of the map yet again, then oh. it's going to be great news here for bonkers. He's getting himself quite close to the two up. And it seems like Bonkers rolling into the anti eco, rolling with the momentum and the confidence. And Mike, I mean, that's two off the tour now. Maybe you can even get that A orb. I'm not sure if Order picked that up or not. Oh, to give it up, then it is what find Texter flawless. Second round there for Bonkers and. That's not what we were expected to see. Bonkers, of course, the, the pistol rounds, the second rounds have been a little bit scrappier. Order have definitely brought the fight to them, but Bonkers, pistol into the second. This is where Order's testament on split is tested. As you can see, the buyers to come out. A few phantoms this time. Order, I like themselves some phantoms on this map, opposed to the vandals here. Because Bonkers, Mike Fibo start one off the Tour de Force already, or only two runs in. I don't think what bought armor. I'm not sure if he bought it at the last second or not, but that's got me worried. Let's see if, uh, yeah, he didn't buy armor. That's a bit of a nightmare oh. heading into the first bonus. Uh, let's see if Mike can get himself the tour here. He's really trying to contest this beam anal. Texter well aware that that is a factor starting you to be contested to by what? You still there? Applying yeah. stars over towards that B site, but there you go. Tour comes out there for Mike. Texter really not respecting this beam main control, walking up close, getting aggressive playing inside his own nebula there. And he's able to Ooh. make good use of it. Finds the opening pick there. And Bonkers now with a man disadvantage and no real mid control to speak of. Uh, kind of really I'm out of anything done in this round. Yeah, Mercer and his teammate just kind of sitting back for the moment. And you can see that Order have free reign to hold this B site from the walkout. Two players. Now just one over towards the vent. Shot attempted by Mike on the tour de force. Mercer's just going to hold this lurk. Disco down the rope, but not going to swing. Great discipline being expended here by Order. And well, for Bonkers, it's unfortunate they don't really have much of a footing going into either of these side takes. 30 seconds left. Yeah, Mike's still not being given an angle by any of these players here. There's the jump spot. Artie sees him trying to walk up that B main side of the map. Even going to throw down a cage, make his life even more difficult, trying to walk out B here. They're walking into a three-man stack straight out of the cage. Mike oh. still connects multiple shots. How is he making this work? Trying to bust Ten out being main, but they've still got the rest of order to contest with. Sicko trying to put that spike that down and gets hit by the aftershock. Great util out of Disco there. Even with some magic from Mike, order still keep that one under control and survive with three guns up. Yeah, order. That could have been disastrous for a moment. Some quick thinking and some quick... Impressive shots, whips out the headhunter for a second mic. Always putting on a show with this chamber and for order. They stopped the show early this time around. First to their board and for Bonkers, you kind of don't really feel too bad about them losing that one. They came so close, but they're now to buy in this one. Vandals across the margin, Phantom for Sicko to the side of order. A few more phantoms this time. We've converted one more play. It's three phantoms as opposed to vandals. Order. They kind of want to go for the more spray centric style of play here on this defense. Good heaven controlling from Bonkers here. Great util to be able to secure that part. A lot of util being dumped in by order to try to contest. Spike still back in Rama and Mike still with some control over towards this A side of the map. Well, just seeing if he can satchel his way in towards health there, maybe try to deal with some trips or make someone uncomfortable. And Bonkers really making this look like a B-side exit. 
but order on the rotation over towards that a side of the map maybe they spotted out mike they're utilizing some of this util to be able to find some more info trailblazer back in through male side and order i don't have a great read on what's going on here ronski going to go looking for some info and mike have him, might have him checked at the right timing here almost oh, oh mike just out of nowhere he rips it too rd and ronski fall and that's not what you want to see right now for Order in the later stage of this round. Texter goes up the rope and goes down it once more. Cat and the Itsy Bitsy Spider go down the well, never to go back up again. Bonkers swirl with impressive shot. You always love to see the quick flicks from that man. You can see that his sensitivity a little bit more favorable to him. Spike down at B. And it's Disco on the 1v3. Yeah. Trying to make magic with his uh, dot cross here as always. Some, tap some of those heads. If he's given some angles here from Bonkers, could make this a little easier for him. But they're playing quite disciplined. Double back side setup. Swell just jump spotting, circle jumping wherever he can. Trying to find out where the breach is coming in from. Fault line makes it even more difficult. And the time are really starting to tick down now. Looking like Disco is going to go for that save. Bonkers. Again, it's surprising me. Less so on a set, but you saw a lot of it on Icebox. The amount of discipline that they're showing on this attacking side, similar to Icebox, just walking through the map, not rushing things. No one's really making any mistakes or really in a rush to get into any particular positions or exec onto the site. They're just slowly strangleholding the map. And that's just another massive play out of Mike on the chain bar. Two frags for him. He finds RDW trying to rotate back in towards that A site. He picks Ronski on a ramp. And from there in the five on three, Bonkers with so much map control are able to just give Order enough rope to hang themselves with, essentially. Just weeding out more and more mistakes as Order try to find picks, even up that man disadvantage in the three on five and, and try to make some plays. So now Order back onto the half by. Right Do have that one rifle saved over. Let's see if they can make something of it. Uh, hero... Vandal, Disco, Ronski getting very close and down at the wall mid. Maybe double tap that Spectre. Oh, that Classic, sorry. Could be quick little Vandal retrieved. Ronski's just so, so aggressive right now. Great flash from his teammate. The right click comes out, but nothing from Ronski. Sicko finds Maple 2. Both players mid drop, and that's a lot of map control now. Mike's still on this lurk over at oh, a ramp, and... He's an immovable object, Pilly. Just can't be found by anybody from Order. RD shows face to Sicko over at B main and Order. This is just an eco for them. They would have loved to steal away maybe a gun or two more, but Bonkers, a flawless take. They rotate over towards the A uh -oh. site where Texter holds <laughs> close with this Judge. And we've seen Judge very much favored Order. Gravity Well comes in. Smoke goes through. Texter can play around his own utility. And this is rough, Bonkers. They're going to have to go for the split up through heaven. Love it. Just not risking a single thing. Nice. Finally find out where that judge is at. Tex is able to get himself a, a pick with it and get himself a Vandal, but they know exactly where he's coming from. All these footsteps being heard by Watt, who's on the off angle. Still can't convert the shot, though. A little sloppy on the aim, giving away a couple of extra guns, a couple more than they maybe necessarily needed to here for Bonkers. Oh, Every planted. little bit of economy makes a difference. Tex start be very very difficult to complete this retake he's been given the 1v1s Ooh. but there's all over it at least able to get himself the seekers off the back of that plant which is going to help them heading forward into the gun rounds and here's where i kind of asked ask the question wasn't expecting this start from bonkers they've got themselves into a great position on this attacking side order in their only game in the last three months on split overseas against boom had a 11-1 defensive half we barely saw any of their attack so we don't know if their attack good is their attack bad Remains to be seen. But they're going to be put through their paces if Bonkers keep picking up these rounds on attack there of their own. Yeah, order the element of surprise to that attack round, but this entire veto, an element of surprise for the side of Bonkers, you feel, because hard to scout statistics for them because this is a completely different roster than the one we saw in Stage 2. Of course, a core of 3 still being remained, but, you know, adding in what? Adding in Sicko and adding in some very experienced players and you definitely see that there's a lot going right in this roster there's the makings of something a little bit more than just a mixed pug kind of roster mm. 
Well, I, I had my like questions about the bonkers roster that Midamars has kind of put it together in one of the previous stages. I was like, hmm, it's like a decent looking roster. I wasn't sold on some of the players. And Mike was one of the players where I was like, look, I saw him in Legacy and, and some of the Nebula rosters. Mm. And I was like, this guy's decent. And he plays a decent Sentinel role in like uh, Cypher, Viper, those kind of roles. But seeing him on the chamber and actually frag out and multi-frag against the best team in the country is, I feel, a, an even better level being hit than I've seen before. Yeah, might have been sleeping on Mike for too long. This is his time to shine. You can see Bonkers grabbing the ultimate orb, getting sick over the Rolling Thunder. Oh, this is beautiful. They're going to be able to combo Seekers into Rolling Thunder for this site hit if they want to. Mike's got that deep trademark in A main as well. And they haven't seen that uh, Swirls deep in B main still, so they've got a bit of a misread on what positions Bonkers are actually in here. This is perfect. You can see three players approaching up through mid. As you said, that combo is going to be absolutely deadly for order to go against both players drop off of heaven. Mike, just allowed to lurk. Just, he can sit here for as long as he wants, maybe find a quick pick. Time and time and... Order have tried to peek him and it just hasn't seemed to work. You can see now Mersey putting in position for the Seekers and the Rolling Thunder. Here's the combo, the deadly one at that. The Bonkers are going for the Seekers. Go one towards the vent and a few towards the B site. One way favors and actually takes out RDW. Hard to see what in the one way, but of course, feet being shown. Swell find Maple on the entry. Up go the rope disco. Been found absolutely obliterated. Bronski domesticates two, finds another, looking for oh. showstopper, fade away, <laughs> falls off, dies to the fall damage, but he gets the ace in the end, Pilski. And Dexter's there to clean up the mess. Order, an explosive hit came towards that B site. They're able to back down the ha hatches, and it's all thanks to Ronski with that ace. 100%. Just another Ronski round. And uh, look, that's what it takes for order to get around there. It felt like RDW was in a great position. Like he gets breach altered, but he has that one way in combination with the grab well, and he still can't find the opening pick. Just gets spammed through the bottom of that one by way by what probably feeling a little bit robbed with how that round started for order. Felt like it was falling apart, but a little bit messy on the spacing of the entries there from bonkers and order were able to take great advantage of that able to flood out heaven the problem is that took a lot away from their economy two of the force available here for mike and this is the first time we've really seen bonkers test this a site you do have both cosmics available from both sides you've got the breach hole for the retake here for order and they're just going to rip it straight away to deny entry into this a site bonkers are going nowhere fast yeah that was a very early ultimate we're not even into the makings of a site take bonkers just Kind of feeling it out at ramp for the moment, but order. I want to waste no time. Secure themselves some footing here. You can see that Disco now can hold this A ramp corner, and it's a very hard corner to clear for if you're bonkers right now. No flashes available for Merz. Has already used them. Tour de force out for Mike. Has to be cautious how they take these next few steps. Merza dinked up. Fault line comes out. The swing comes through. Merza doesn't hit the mark this time. Fault line in return. Here from the sewer position for Bonkers, but they've rotated out. Dexter, he's caught slacking there. Swell able to hit the quick flick on Mike. Still work at this ramp. Showstopper out, and Swell trades <laughs> blood for blood. He gets himself and Maple, but the site is open here at B for Bonkers. Yeah, Sicko on Rafters has got a whole lot of work to do. Three players retaking in through heaven. What can't cross gets blinded. Spike and down. that's the spike going down. Mike is so far away. Can't really offer any help to his teammates and order. Take full advantage of that. Straight onto that B site, dropping that spike. And Mike now has absolutely no time. Wanted to go huge with the tour in that round, but never really got a chance to get going. Order just great use of the free shot to stop that set play onto the A site, allowed them to stay in pole position in terms of the rotations that whole round. And now they're starting to set themselves up into a better position in this half. Felt like they were going paycheck to paycheck in terms of their economy these first couple of rounds, but now starting to have some consistency, three players surviving that round. And I'd imagine that's going to put a bit more pressure on Bonkers' economy now and allow Order to actually get going on this defensive half and try to pick themselves up some more rounds. You can see... A lot of words being traded back and forth by Texter and Disco. They're thinking long and hard about how they want to play these next few rounds out. For Bonkers, of course, they've got what 
with the cosmic divide, but I imagine they're not going to use it. We're going to save it for the rifle rounds here. Might Tell again work to ramp. And Pilski, it's starting to look a lot like a scent. Bonkers it's are getting gone, predictable yeah. in the way they're taking sight and Good map enemy. control. And Order, just happy to give it to them and play their win cons round after round. Great flash, but great return. Swirl fighting Ronsky and Maple. And of course, Texter's still there, Disco's still there, Mike. Headshot, paint shells found Texter, and all of a sudden, it's just down to Disco, the gravity well, the cosmic divide. Vandal picks up, tucked in the corner, swap <laughs> safe for the moment, but bouncing across. What's there from bottom mid? And Bonkers find the thrifty. Not around, they should be winning ever, but they take it against order, and they pick themselves up five. Dude, Swell's giving me a heart attack. Like, he's just, he's just continually fighting that. He's waiting for one of his teammates to swing in and give him a hand, and what finally goes in there. Just absolutely massive shots on the Sheriff from Swell. Those are the kind of rounds that this man is capable of, just the mechanical skill. The ability to multi-frag gives Bonkers a round that they had absolutely no business winning, and they've had a couple of those, mostly courtesy of Mike, but this time courtesy of Swell. He's going to start getting warmed up on this raise. That's going to give another kind of win condition over towards his Bonkers side, who have now sort of flipped the script in terms of the economy. Now they're in a much better position economically. Order on this half by looking to try to apply some pressure to middle, but they lose Texter early. Box jump there. So effortlessly Swell does it. You see a few players only struggle with that one, but able to take the position. Great though, Order. Able to trade a few back. They dump the util. They get themselves out. Scott Free, a Vandal might have been picked up in the mix. They now back it off from heaven. They okay. sense that Bonkers could get to send it up there in quick way. Bonkers, they slow it down. They take mid control and then they play with the time. They play with the potential. That order. I'm going to rotate to A and order. I've read this so, so well. Yeah, great trailblazer from Maple. Gives them all the info. They've still got trips here over here on the site here. RDW, if his trips go off, could be massive. Oh. A shotgun from Ronsky over towards elbow side. The nade even going to force the player into his crosshair. But Bonkers, sicko in the background there, putting a, together a multi-frag from heaven. Watts got it under control. And luckily, they don't suffer the same fate that they inflicted on order last round. Able to survive against the half bite. Put the pieces back together and grab themselves six. So really nice attacking side here for split. I mean, most people would agree, still pretty defense biased map, but Bonkers, a team that you don't expect to come in with structure, come in with a decent level of organization, are playing a really nice attacking side. Very slow, very measured, very controlled, and they're getting a lot of value out of it. Order now again, a little bit light in terms of the economy, getting close to a couple of pretty important alts. Mike now not over towards this A side of the map, but instead working B, trying to tickle the orb, see if he can bait out a push or maybe a little bit of spam. You can see. Mid control given Bonkers so, so oh. quickly. Mercer, reactive shot perfectly onto Disco and Order. They don't want to be showing face like that. They don't want to be taking fights unwinnable like that though. Text up. Quick trade back to Sicko and Mirza. It's back to him. It's back to Texter yet again. It's a return serve. It's game of Pong. And Dexter comes out. 15 love here. And for the side of Bonkers. They're down two players trying to go for this B side. Take Dexter just dropping Astral Stars on top of them. And so is what? And so is what able to find that pick back. Bonkers have the B side if they want to take it, but they have to be cautious. Ronsky's still in the mix, Maple's still to heaven. They will be able to find Ronsky, and they have sight control now. RDW is just ages away here. No util at all for Maple to help him to bust out from heaven here, but Mike's going to give him a freebie. Gives him the early one-on-one. -on -one. What deep in defense spawn here. Seeing if he can go for a late flank up towards heaven side, but on a default plant, that's not really going to do him too many favors. So he's going to stick towards CT side. Cam goes out for RDW, but Watt from CT, perfectly timed. Able to play that off angle. Flash going to allow Maple to at least try to cross the site. But he's so low that I don't think it's going to make a difference here. And it's looking like another round for Bonkers. Perfectly held there by Swell at the end. The gravity well as well for good measure for Watt. Seven rounds. Attacking side go Bonkers. And you can see still... Feeling so calm right now. Obviously, we saw a few smiles earlier. We saw them very giddy 
about their first map victory on Icebox. And, you know, it's been a while since we saw Icebox, of course, from this series. You know, we saw a very dominant Ascent go Order's way. We're now starting to see Bonkers start to fire back. It's tit for tat. It's round for round. Both teams traded map picks. And split could look to be the same if Bonkers are able to keep this up. Early set play straight out of A. Spell trying to get some value out of his ult there, but just getting caught by the trips. All of that pressure being put on by Bonkers. Really just a bit of a fake so that they can try and go B here, but the Seekers out of Maple mean that this play is kind of dead in the water here, Tony. I don't think so. Absolutely dead in the water. Mike finding Texter on the other side of that smoke. He's read it. Showstopper comes out and uses it for the movement to get up on top of the box to hold a different angle. And Sekio, what does he do? Spikes in the hands of Order. Mirza trying to lurk it up through middle hit. Bombot goes off. Mirza able to find Disco. They need to take these fights together. Sekio needs to go with Mirza. Mirza could be found in just a second. Maple with his judge, but Sekio's found RDW. Look at to walk it up though. Ronsky isn't faltering right now. Isn't scared of what the potential is. Sekio. He's able to get to default, great flash out, catches Ronsky trying to grab a gun, swaps his out, but of course needs to reload. The fault line comes, concussion, 45 seconds, oh, sorry, 45 HP, 27 seconds. Sicko still needs to get his bomb down, but he still needs to deal with Maple, who's wrapped perfectly around the site. Wraps that round, silver bow, four rounds order, seven to bonkers here. Look to be maybe a more even half than let on. Yeah, but that's still not great news for Order unless they've got some excellent attacking side that we haven't seen. Didn't have to play it against Boom like I was saying before, so that's where I'm kind of left curious, I suppose. Really want to see Mike throw that AK over to uh, Mirza here ASAP because he's got the tour. There's no reason Mirza should have to roll in with the Spectre into this round, but doesn't look like it's going to be happening. Raise Nate. Trying to unsettle Mike, working his way over towards the safe side of the map. Mercer getting that mid control. He's done a great job applying pressure with the Trailblazer, with the Flashes, getting straight up in towards ropes and finding these opening picks. And yet again, just great pressure being applied here from Bonkers, utilizing the Sky Util, the Boom Bot, to be able to get deep in ropes and unsettle order in terms of the rotations. Yeah, order looking very unsettled, I have to say, after they were so calm on that last map ascent. This looked very much in their favor. And of course, well, for Bonkers, this has looked very good for them so far. They just need to keep it up. There's just a few rounds that have been the difference makers from them having a dominant half and them having a closer one against Order. The aftershock comes through to Vent. Forces Murza back for the moment. Disco. Holding an aggressive angle? Was that a dink from Mike? It sounded like it was, but it doesn't actually hit its mark close to the wall. Maple's read this perfectly in terms of the rotations. Left. He's already over towards B-Heaven, ready to go. Nade off the back from Ronsky, followed up by the Burr, but great spam through from Mirza. Able to take a lot of HP away from Maple there. Pretty much nullify him as a threat. Ronsky leaving RDW high and try in the back of the site here, able to play off the back of the Ares. But 10 seconds, there's no time here for Bonkers. Two on two, and RDW still got his trip alive. Able to hold in the back of the site and lock that one down. Ooh. Has Sicko got enough time to plant? I can't tell. My digital vibrance is too high. He does. He's got the spike down. 1v1 against the other three. Sicko shot to heaven and a shot through the hearts. Disco. Falls and eight go bonkers sides. off the back of a split second decision. Sicko gets the spike down, takes the fight, feels confident in winning it. Bonkers find themselves eight on the attacking side of split. I mean, okay. Sicko again, just just showing his worth as a clutch player. Saw the same thing on that piece roster. You know, although a lot of people say it was all the Ronsky show the, for the success factor of that roster, definitely was some work being put in by some of the other members and. Sicko definitely being one of them, having some some great performances on some of the roles where you're not expected to frag as hard. He still had some really, really good numbers and some big impact clutches, and he's been able to chuck in a couple of those. 8-4 for Bonkers on their attacking side. Definitely cause for concern for Order. Like I said, haven't seen too much of their attacking side. That is a beautiful start. No smokes for Order. 
on their attacking side now. Texta goes down early. You, you don't like to see it, especially in pistol. No smokes attack side starting this half off in a deficit of massive proportions already. You can see still trying to make their way up through B main sicko and swirl. Taps come in, Suiko, great trade, discipline, and bonkers the team play paying off. Ronski might be the fatal player oh, there. No. RD walks it up with the frenzy, and it's all falling apart somehow for bonkers after such a strong start. It's yeah. 2v2. Great cage here for RD. You can just sit on top of it and wait to hear the sound. Your frenzy shots, gets what? Last Trades it, Mike. Standing. Headhunter, five bullets in the clip. Spike goes down, Ronski. He is going to back off. Played behind the pillar. And Mike does have the rendezvous, but needs to catch this pick on Aronski. Great swing, great shot, great everything. Ronski finding order there. Fifth. Yeah, you are absolutely kicking yourselves as bonkers. 4v2 situation. Sicko dry peek into beam and gets punished. Hardy gets a pick on that heaven player, and then you got to do a 2v2 retake in through heaven side. Goes down to a 1v1, which really bonkers had no business putting it into that situation. They could have just closed down that pistol, played things safer in the 4 on 2, played together a lot more, gathered the info, and they'd be up 9-4 right now in an anti-eco. But now they find themselves saving and giving order a lifeline that they really had no business with uh, heading into this attacking side. Looking like their anti-eco going to be heading straight out A. No. They're going to call the cancel on that. Not feeling great about rolling straight in towards a ramp on that nebula. And you can see that wouldn't have gone great right for them. There. But they've lost a fair bit of map control in the meanwhile. Oh. Yeah, they're giving up almost the entirety of B main. And a push through has swell. Looking for just one kill anything. He's done some damage at least. Ronski down to about 40 HP. Texter is looking to take this site in control here for the side of audio pistol shot and that's time for, for rd to swing there you can see that well, what a little bit further away see mike as well up to heaven spike will finally go down rd finds mike and well, what trades out the pistol for a pistol vandal in hands ronski holding the angle flawless order that's what you want to see on their attack to start it off. Bonkers, they got themselves a convincing one, but order able to fire back with another. It's a tactical timeout now for Bonkers. Yeah, these timeouts are a double-edged short though. Order momentum starting to roll back in their favor and this gives them time to sort of gather themselves, recompose, get themselves organized for their own attacking side. Seeming like it was maybe a bathroom break timeout as you see two people out of their chairs <laughs> getting water. So less of a tactical timeout for Bonkers, which uh, with your elimination on the line in the last uh, map of the lower bracket here is an interesting approach. But if you got to go, you got to go. Sometimes nature calls, Pilski. And of course, uh, I, I, I like the bed sheets from Mike. I saw a palm tree. I saw a cloud on there. Nice little, uh, nice little insight as to how these players are sleeping at night. But well, tactical timeout. Not really all too much. It's interesting to see. It's kind of a, a what specialty. Whenever Rossi is on the tacticals, uh, normally never are tacticals. I remember I uh, saw a clip on Twitter, I believe, was uh, their, uh, the tactical timeout that what uh, took. That's in... like um, that's that's like a very specific Norsen thing, though. Like, Norsen yeah. has the weakest bladder I've ever heard of <laughs> out of any player. But it uh, seems like what attracts people with weak bladders i guess is what we're <laughs> getting out of this it's very very niche specific thing you can chuck in your tinder bio here's the uh bonus though for order they're in a great position gonna be pretty happy with how the opening parts of this game have gone like i said bonkers if they'd just taken that pistol closed that four on two completely different situation they're gonna have to get it done the hard way now pink shells for swirl off the position right there. The high flying bird Flashes the player invent. They heard the sound cue. They know that Swell's backed off. Doesn't want to play that aggressive position, but actually does just drop back down the rope order. Stellar mid control being taken, but it's how they make this next move. There's two players over towards B1 holding the back line of Evan Mirza in a great position. One flash and second to come up in just a second. Breach flash and the counter bird comes in, winds up a few order players. He saves him off for the moment, trying to slow it down. Trailblazer comes through here as well. Mercer needs to rotate around as the Astral Stars come down to give 
order, the control they need to take this site and cover all the angles. So now it's going to be bonkers having to play for this 5v5b retail. Yeah, they've got a big gun advantage here, and that's the only Vandal in the hands of Order going down right off the bat. RDW, a great timing to come up through. Mail, though, multi-frag. That's two rifles hitting the deck. Mike trying to hold on for dear life over towards stair side. And the two other players from Bonkers trying to retake through spawn here, Tony. One enemy remaining. They're both trying to come from the alleyway. And Texter and RD with the spectres of all things get it done. And they go ghost for that one. Seven order eight bonkers tactical time out doesn't let them any magic this game gets that little bit closer I mean, almost at a tied score line on our final map tied up one apiece in terms of the map count and pilski this map's gone this series has gone all three and we've just got another game after this too the lower bracket seeming to deliver as well as the upper order looking to stay alive in the tournament bonkers we're going to pull off the magical upset and send oh, Order no. home in the lower bracket. The grab well. You hate to see it. Trotsky wanted to send it straight into A there. Sometimes the Astra says no. And look, in terms of the scoreline, maybe close, but this doesn't feel like a close game anymore, to be honest. Order's now got a great economy on this attacking side. If they close out this uh, anti-eco, deal with the half buy. They're going to be eight apiece with great money to boot if they don't lose too many rifles. A couple of trades going in towards down, middle at least means that... Look, Bonkers are pegging a couple of kills back. But Order going to call the audible straight back towards that A side of the map. Join up with Bronski and... They've only really got to worry about Swirl over here. Yeah, Swirl's one of the showstopper though. Could just rip this first kill then pop that showstopper straight away. Satchel out, tries to find RD. Knows that there was one player low, 55 HP for RDW. An order. And we'll secure the spike plant. More default position. So they can play a little bit more aggressive towards Zelbo. Swirl just looking for a headshot. One anything. Vandal picked up by Mike. But a 1v3 and order are playing their position so perfectly. High. That's a lower camera actually. This time from RDW. Sitting a little bit different in the post plant. As Mike looks to walk up the ramp. Nobody showing any sort of presence here. Might might just have to save this vandal. Yeah, whatever. Try and get some exits if you can, maybe. They were only on the half by here anyway. Tries a bit of a TP, but shut down by Maple. Three guns up here for order. Their economy is absolutely rock solid on this attacking side. They've got a cosmic ready to go. Bonkers have got some great retake tools or uh, potentially some tools they could use to shut down map control attempts here by order. We'll see how they want to utilize that breach hole and the showstopper. Like I said, you know, if you want to try to utilize it on middle to shut down the defaults and try to go for a bit of a mid crunch, that's definitely an option. If you want to try to rip it on the retake in Let's combination with the showstopper, mean. looks like it's going to be a set play over towards eight, maybe a fault line or a breach shot off the back, and then they're going to send in the showstopper perhaps. But swirl up close, ripping it. Trying to hunt down Ronsky on towards ramp side, and he's able to... Ooh. I thought he was going to find him, but... Just going a little bit deeper in towards heaven there, you and Ronsky's able to outplay him a little bit on that raise movement. Yeah, unfortunately, couldn't quite get his gun out in time, and that's a fatal blow for Bonkers right now. They really needed that first pick. They needed to get in the heads of order. As you can see, Cosmic Divide goes up across the split of the map. Been shot out from Mike. Headhunter one attempt to what's here to stop the hit from coming in, but they're able to cross and able to take Watt out on Heaven. Camera from RDW lurking up through mid. Ronski down towards lower. It's going to be Order tr trying to hold this down and Bonkers just can't get in right now. This concussion, this fault line, this everything from Order seems to be going right. Sicko, pink shelled up and needs to get out. And Order are looking to hunt him down because of course, as you said, Pilski, they've got so much money to burn. Yeah. Order in pole position now well and truly. Ronsky getting warmed up. Able to find that opening pick. Avoid it getting showstoppered by a swell. Watt having a critical duel over from rafters that he couldn't quite put the pieces together on. And now a timeout from Order. They've taken the lead. They know that this position is so favorable. Even though they're on attacking side of split, they have got so much cash. They can keep trading down rounds and keep just trying to break that defense economy over time. They've got so many opportunities to keep getting across the line and they can really feel out this half. This is where a team of their experience and their tenure and their chemistry can just grind this game out and, and get it done most times. And as for Bonkers, 
we're a very, very far, far shot from what we saw on that first half of Icebox. And again, what we saw in the first half of this map where they were really front running. But again, they're going to be tested a little bit more pressure than Icebox this time around of can they be resilient enough? Can they actually just put the pieces together on this defensive side? This is a lineup that hasn't had a whole lot of prac time together, hasn't been together for that long. It's just a little bit of a mixed team. They can be afforded pretty much zero mistakes over the next little bit. They have to win so many gun rounds back to back to swing the economy back in their favor. It's going to be so difficult. You have to give props though to Bonkers going toe to toe with the region's best order sent to the lower bracket. And we said, of course, that maybe this was Order's look to go for a vengeance run, and this series has gone all everything but what we expected. Of course, Order trying to shake things up with the recent ancient picks, but going back to what works for them best, Mike, going back to what works best for him, it's the Tour de Force going for an aggressive pick towards bottom middle here. He's gonna be flashed up, paint shell down. Still Beautiful. hits the shot and rendezvous out. Beautiful play from Mike. Finds the bonkers entry pick. Absolutely fearless, sticking around for so long. But in the meanwhile, order straight into this B site. Trading things back and forth. Gonna rip themselves the Seekers here, as well as the Cypher ult. So they've got a great read on what the position of all these last couple of bonkers players are. And they're gonna plant nice and open and set themselves up in a great post plant. Post plant's great. What can Swell do? Shot. Oh, sorry, paint shells. And the bomb bot, they actually get it. Spot Disco. Tagged half and then taken out. Swell, an explosive combo, but can't quite find RDW. Beautiful swing. And a second Sicko caught from the heaven from underneath Mike now looking to walk up to the site. Doesn't know where either of these players are. He spots a pixel on the pillar. Wraps around it and now can't see that this play is tucked just behind the box. Repositioned so well of order. They've played it so perfectly. Maple finds the shot. Mike drops. And order will be finding 10 bonkers thwarted yet again. Nice little multi frag in there from RDW. Just forcing their way out. Big main after losing that opening pick. Order still able to hold their composure. Now with a two round lead. Still great economy. Feels like they're really working this attacking side. Got that showstopper, one off the breach hold as well. Now back into another gun round here for Bonkers. Mike on the glass cannon. Great gravity well, early on. Swell forced to back off. No aggressive playmaking allowed this time. They kind of kept Swell in check for this last few rounds. Swell trying to take some early fights, trying to get an early pick for the side of Bonkers. Order now over towards the A site. They will go with the Seekers and the knowledge that there's a few more players than they would have led on early towards Ooh, the B Mike. site. And Mike in a prime position to shut Fire this hit down. Me. Operator posing a threat. The cage goes up in air. It goes Ronsky flying through, soaring through the sky. And Satchel, the paint shells come. Mike actually able to find it, but not before Ronsky finds Mirza. This side oh, takes. Well. Swirl, he's on the flank. Perfect position to be in right now. Maple's not going to expect it. Order. Now the pressure is on. Do they find the kill? They do the trade swirl out. They rotate through. But you can already see the bonkers have read this. There's two players already over at that B site. They've left Sicko to his devices at A, and this is going to be a rough site to take for Order. Yeah, Sicko was just poking through the left. edge of the cosmic, listening for footsteps on A main. Doesn't hear any, so you've got a two man setup over here. Mike's already on the off angle with the operator. Could try and find that opening pick. Barely misses it. Gets pushed off by that breach ult. But what hasn't been hit by it at all? He's in the perfect position. The multi-frag traded out by RDW. It's just Mike in the back of the site. Sicko trying to dive in through CT. The bolt line hits, but RDW, he still hits the shot. Even though he's stunned, almost no time. But he's going to be able to try to put that spike down. Oh, barely misses out. Can't quite find Sicko. What a close round. But Bonkers barely scrape it across, but I don't know if that's good enough, Tony. Only one gun kept alive means that their economy is, again, barely scraping it together, whereas Order, they have got so much cash to just keep buying and buying, and this is what I was talking about. They could just keep chipping in these attacking rounds, keep chipping away at the economy of Bonkers over time, and eventually they're going to grind them down and reset them. Oh, this is a nice spot. Yeah, throw enough Here. at the wall, and eventually it will stick. Order, 
battle by Bonkers. And a little bit of shambles, but some great play there to hold it down. The 1v1 almost being won out by RDW, but you can see Order changing up the pace this time around. Look towards ramp, look towards B main. But they're looking towards mid this time. Camera deeper, the smoke cage goes to cross. A few players up through heaven potentially, but you can see that this time bonkers are expecting it. They've got one towards the back of heaven and they've got swirl up on the rafter. No water just probing middle a little bit. They've got the sky deep in towards vents once again. Similar to what uh, Bonkers was trying to work with on their attacking side. And after taking the middle of the map, yeah. see Order starting to try to work a mid to B plate. The Breach and the Ray is trying to combo off when the Mail is tested. But Mirza is definitely the weak point in towards this B side defense. Going to try to play close up towards B main here. Ooh, swell spotted on the drop down. Ronsky cross, blast packs to Satchel, Maple finding swell. Now dropping into the site, the spray transfer in the lineup was there. Seko watches the kingdom fall in front of his very eyes. Bonkers still three to retake. And it's a quick pick. What? Able to find Maple on the rope, but they still need to deal with Ardi, who's been lurking in this position time and time again. They still do not check it. And that's what's been Bonkers' downfall is RDW putting up such an impressive lurk over in middle order. Are able to find another round and break it again for Bonkers. Yeah, I think that might be the nail in the coffin. Bonkers, no cash to speak of off the back of that. Mirza, I mean, what can you really do? He's playing close B main with a Guardian. They're trying to play off the back of that mail setup and Order just does an excellent job kind of rejigging the mid to B, going a bit heavier through B main, putting a lot of pressure on those players over there. And now a force out from Bonkers. Going to try to risk it for the biscuit. See if they can try to make a round like this work. Pick themselves up a bunch of rifles and avoid giving up that point. But Order getting a lot of space out towards this A side of the map. Mike going to try and go for that opening frag, but instantly denied by Texter. The gun's given over to Swirl because it's dropped in a great position. What goes out for the swing on a vulnerable Ronski? Finds another on the Texter. Just tearing this Order attack apart before it's even hit the site. But Sicko, the Vandal in hand. Not going to be able to do anything. And Maple, the one with the plan, the shot hit. Sicko falls. Match point. A valiant effort by Bonkers, but it all might come in vain here at the end. Order, they've got match and series point here on split. Well, literally in the pole position. Not sure what Bonkers are going to be able to put together here. It's a really scuffed looking play. Glass cannon, rifle for what? Rest of the boys down to it. Not really the weapons that you want to be seeing them utilizing it around like this. And Order, well aware of it. You can see just how passive they're playing it. They're waiting for aggressive plays towards the extremities here. Seeing if there's a B main push coming out. Going to try to make it look like it's a B step play here for Order. Committing that cosmic, committing the Seekers. But in the meanwhile, they're going to start walking into A. And that is the weak side of the map here for Bonkers. Yeah, they're completely almost given it up. They've just left what? Whose devices over at that site. Fault line lands perfectly. No matter where what moves, he was going to get hit by that one. Walks to the site, but what is able to check it? Flick, uh, both flank this time. No lurks, sir. What shuts it down? Texter, though, on the lurk back towards the B site, but he's on his lonesome. Ronsky up in heaven on his lonesome. Maple a little bit further behind. The spray doesn't land, and what has come alive? in the final hour that Bonkers need. It's Texter, one V2. Spots up Mirza, knows that what's low HP. Knows what? what Mirza is, oh my God, he gets it. Just a Hail Mary shot through the smoke. Mirza holds underneath the heaven, perfect reposition. Bonkers, magic happens. Texter finds almost the game then and there, but Bonkers stay alive for one more, 10, 12. And this is where it starts to get sweaty, Pulski. This is where one early pick could make or break this game. Just a massive hero play from what? The only player on that A side of the map. Glass Cannon Vandal hits nothing but heads. And that gives Bonkers somewhat of a lifeline. Still, their money's not great, though. And you can see Order's got well and truly two flies back to back. Ronsky oh. got to go straight in off the back of that grab well, oh. finds the opening frag. But Mike's still able to trade one back at least. Order 
just in a one-two-one one right now. They were clearly going for that mid control and they're going to continue doing so. Trailblazer going straight up there. Techstar trying to see if he can work a pick here in middle. Smoke onto rope side. Mercer gathering that info. Backed Watching up by Sicko. Fight. They're very heavy over towards B. Again, leaving Watt all on his lonesome on the A side of the map. And it's seeming like Auto going to start exploring ropes over towards Vent side. At least as a trademark for safety. Yeah, trademark put in place. Texas, the one with the spike, will be able to take it out, but that gives info over. Sicko starting to rotate. Gravity well there towards heaven. Mers, a great flash. The pop flash back. RDW's turned away from the bird, and he will be falling. Mers, a great double. Mike out in the open play. The off fangle trying to catch the pick on the disco, and the fault line comes through. Text of force to the rafter. And bonkers, they play it back. They know that they can't afford to give up an early pick. They don't want to overpeak anything. They want to let Auto walk to their Mike. Feeling remains. cautious. The fault line is great. And Mike is playing this round perfectly. Jiggling around Disco to find the trade. And up in the lights, bonkers find 11. And we are potentially staring down overtime here. Auto still have a buy, but bonkers have picked apart these last two rounds. Right when Mercer's needed to come alive a little bit. Comes in with a massive 2k over towards male side there. Had a bit of a quieter series, but big, big impact right when it's needed. Sicko as well, great breach util. Both the ult and the fault line making that a little bit more difficult. There's a pretty big ult advantage here for Bonkers in this last round. They've got Seekers, they've got the Tua and the Cosmic for the retake. They need to try to use these ults to be able to leverage this round and push it into OT. Mike with some deep A main control on a very nice info line over towards A main, allowing Bonkers to potentially lean a little bit heavier towards B, but he's going to TP off. You can see Auto wants to go for this uh, male control straight up in towards heaven side. Mirza on the off angle, and he's going to get pushed off as well. He sends the Seekers out and put what on the anchor, but he's backed up by a few teammates this time around. Mike, trap destroyed. He hears Ronsky fly, and he's going to let him land mike takes time and discipline for that one swirl Spike quick peek to trade it back and bonk is getting explosive with it at the end here swirl now he needs to be cautious but they're holding the flank this is so well held by bonkers playing off of each other's weak spots disco the last left alive no wow. 1v1s we're going to overtime what to pick it up bonkers play those last three to perfection and order they're asking the same question, Pilski. How are we in overtime right now? That's that's such a favorable spot order put themselves in. They were so far ahead economically. They were putting so much pressure on Bonkers' economy. That force buy to risk it all ends up paying off in absolute spades for Bonkers. They win that round. It felt like every single bloody round, they're just scraping as much as they can together, putting their last couple of cents together to see what they can come up with. And they barely got enough to be able to push it into OT. And now it's a different story. Now we're not talking about any kind of economic advantage for either team. Order's going to swap back over on towards that defensive side. And Bonkers going to go back onto attack where they did such great work. Let's see if Order's come up with any kind of answers. It seems like they're very, very heavily leaning towards mid. They want to shut down this mid control and this sky lurk up into ropes right before it gets going. We can see that Bonkers. I'm going to give it up for the moment. Smoke's off. Beautiful. After shot, beautiful. Forces just... swirl back. They're just dumping this util and forcing Bonkers off of this position and taking such aggressive positioning of their own. Using Disco deep of that vent room, and it's gonna be a, such a great position that maybe Bonkers aren't gonna expect. It's just a great, great patience being shown by Bonkers right now. They know that that's a potential adaptation that Order can go for. They were really working mid a lot in regulation, so. The patience for Bonkers is absolutely excellent there to just avoid all of those Astra traps. Still though, the off angle works beautifully for Disco. Him and Maple just playing off of each other, dumping in the flashes, the fault lines, making Bonkers life very uncomfortable as they try to move up middle. But after the initial contact in middle doesn't go well for them, they're going to try to work back towards Mike. Over on the lurk in this A site, he is their contingency plan. RDW playing very, very passive, just jump spotting. Allowing time for those rotations to come in from the rest of the boys. And bonkers, they need to pull the trigger. 20 seconds left on the clock, Mike. 
a failed frag up through ramp and now the hit goes towards the a site texter and his teammates can just hold so well the pistol comes out swell not quite able to hit the shots yeah order they're the ones to hit them 13 match and series point yet again for order but bonkers they've been in this situation before they're standing down the barrel of a shotgun in the face of adversity they bring a shotgun of their own to the table still anybody's game here even though it's order with one away from closing it out it's a tactical timeout as you see rd leave for just a second this is a heavy game in front of us and what a way to kick off the night with our lower bracket here than an absolute three map burner from both these teams love the adaptation in that last round from order Bonkers just got so much value on their attacking side, working middle, allowing that sky to get up in towards vent side, applying pressure to the middle of the map. And Auto was having a tough time kind of rotating and, and trying to stay one step ahead. They were having no luck getting control of any of those extremities because you had Mike working that A side of the map so well on the chamber, just denying them any info or any ability to get control over there. Swell was often in B main or they were utilizing some Astro utility to be able to wrestle control of that extremity. What was over there probing as well. So really, really good use of the one three one but order great adaptation in overtime, just recognizing that if they don't give Bonkers any mid control at all, they deny entry. That feels like Bonkers had a little bit of a breakdown, really running down the clock, didn't have any set play to work towards, trying to go late in towards that A or the B side of the map. Not left order at least the first round now they're back on their attacking side and we'll see what they've come up with Let's see what they've gone back to the drawing board Let's see early paint shells they're looking to send ronsky deep and take out swell assassinate him in the face of the rest of his teammates who are triple stacked towards this b tower towards this b heaven texter finds mercer that bomb goes up has info of what but order, they've got info towards the B site and they're just hitting shots. Texta takes one out and Sicko and Mike to do the unthinkable. It's now just Mike who's not even close to this B site right now. Operator 1v5 order might be looking to make their presence be known in this lower bracket and it's Texta triple to close. 14-12, order get it done in three maps. Two to one, they take the series off of Bonkers. Bloody hell. As close as it could possibly be. Just absolutely crazy. Order barely able to put the pieces back together in OT there. I feel like Bonkers, if they had closed that 4v2 on that second pistol, could have been a completely different game for them. You saw just how much they were able to deal with adversity, be able to come back time and time again on defense. Those last couple of rounds, just putting the half buys together and allowing them to actually bring it all the way back into OT. But at the end of the day, despite some shakiness from order that we've seen in multiple series now, they're going to stay alive in the lower bracket here. And that means uh, a lot scarier of an opponent, I would say, for whoever the, the next team is in that lower bracket that has to deal with them. But uh, you'd have to say, you definitely don't want to be playing this bonkers side either because you just never know what you're going to get. Such great performances out of a whole lot of the boys across the board. I think in particular, I would say core three of the standouts for me was Sicko and Watt, and then obviously Mike as well on that chamber. Swell had his moments here and there, a couple of big, big rounds from him, a couple of pop-offs where he's able to show the, the flashy aim that we all know him from and have some impact there. But yeah, I mean, this Bonkers team, just showing how much talent we have in this O's region, despite, you know, not being a team with much chemistry, not having any depth, they're able to really, really put order through their paces and just utilize the experience and the individual skill to be able to make a hell of a series out of one that you probably wouldn't expect it to be close. Yeah, and as Texas said, anybody can show up on the day in Bonkers. They showed up on the day ready to take it to three against Order. I have to tip my hat as well. As you said, Pilski, there's core kind of three members there from Bonkers showing up well. We saw a 30 bomb on the Viper on that first map of Icebox. What having a very, very solid game. And I, of course, have to look at this Bonkers roster. It's only up from here, of course. Oast champs, they've now out of the bracket. They're out of contention to go to APAC LCQ. But Bonkers, if they stay together with this roster, they can look to do some deadly damage going into next year. Yeah, 
I don't know if I hold my hopes for that. I mean, it's going to be so many months. I'd be surprised if we have one team that keeps the same five core members. Like, maybe Order would be if they, you know, can keep going along and, and keep going overseas and stuff. But it feels like uh, OCE rosters is a game of musical chairs, which honestly is a little bit of a shame because, uh, like I said, just showcased by that uh, by that series. You know, we just have so many strong, strong players. And if we're able to put the, the right combination of those players together, we could have a, a bunch of strong teams, not just, uh, you know, one or two. And of course, Order, they had the right pieces. They had what the makings of a, a strong team. And of course, we saw it there two to one over Bonkers this evening. We'll go to a quick commercial break because Pilski, we've got another game in just a few minutes. It's Rain versus Honey Badgers just after this quick commercial break. So don't go anywhere. Our blue 
blackmailer is headed east. Leon, this is Sova. Confirm you have target visual. Ground team, collapse and converge on sector 4. darkest fears. Tell a person's character by their first action. Check me then, eh? It's a blue jack. Only time I like that I ever hide from. There's a red and blue light that'll sing their song. I know. Where you at? Yeah, where you come from? Lost you know, enough. Who you wanna be called? You're dead. Move your body. Move a leg. Everybody here. Welcome Move to Gravity. One to the right, down one to the left. Never stay still. Move again. We saw the beginning and the continuation. Now, the end. We are above them. Anything I want, baby, gonna take them. Once I want, so I'll never leave them. Whole team Better luck can next never life. Break them. Protect it all costs, yeah, like a wave cap. Relax, my friend. Time and space, sir. <laughs> they know what you think. Miss the bullseye. The bullseye. jeito hoje, viu, Binho? Ô, oh, Tô. Já passou da hora, né, pai? Hum, vamos lá. Só amanhã. É hora do reggae. Por que eu tô com a fé?
Reports of a disaster in Italy. 안녕하십니까. 이탈리아에서 들어온 지각이 폭발해 공중으로 떠오른 사건이 발생했습니다. Sta galleggiando a 300 metri da terra. Radionite may have been involved. Kingdom, whose radionite power program accounts for more than three quarters of the world's energy production, have denied any connection to this disaster. Anyone with information on the two unidentified radiants spotted at the scene is being asked to come forward. Just see your face. to work really so uh maybe give us a heads up next time sign secure we're coming home that the big man tell him i need answers this time what is your problem we crushed it phoenix gonna look in the mirror how come they look like us and what do they want our radiant out for i'll talk to brimstone it's time we filled you in Up. You serious? You had an easy jet. You know they're bringing whole teams now, right? And so will we. Kao, are you shading the king? You're not the king. You have the same score as the rest of us. <sighs> How about a game where the bot shoots back? I'll bring the fire in any game you want. <clears throat> Please, be my guest. Okay, any other game? <laughs> Let's dance, yeah. Say hello to Maxbot. Perfect blend of tactics and firepower. Now you can train against, uh, well, you. My money's on the machine. You got this pretty much. i 
lucky for you, I buy the We're bringing it in today is VOT. We've had a long, long run. Hey. And of course, that title, everybody wants to try and get overseas. We then get to play into the LCQ, and teams from there get to go into champions. So that's ultimately what the goal is for everybody. Put in work. Great. When it comes to rain, you're going to see them become the true champs of us. Walking to two players as well, reveals himself over towards Noz. It's going to bring Signed and Dragon. Oh, wow. That's a good free fire through the wall. Bobo. We're coming for the number one spot for OC champions. In possession, but they are starting to fall. Signed with the bloody free go. He finds three. Bonkers. And he's looking, he's clearing. He might be able to stop it. Honey Badgers. Honestly, I think we're better than everyone else at the moment. Touching around these boxes, ring around the rosy. They're also looking at one way. Milky 1v3. Fun Crew. And it's easy in a one on one against Honda. Oh my god. He's done it. Order. We're expecting to come out on top of this qualifier, head back over to Asia and make the adjustments we need to make to hopefully head over to Europe. Bronski is doing a good job of clearing out short. Knives come out after finding that off shot and all of a sudden it starts to fall back on its head. And that's going to be that. Two on one, he will. Connection for Panic and another to finish. Not a bad choice, is it? He's cleared out long, now knows where the offensive is going to come from. Two line up, RDW. Uh, you get the sense that this is going to be a real back. Oh, oh, game show stop, the Thunder's gone deep. Snow getting on the defuse, Panic on the protection squad. Oh, oh, he gets both of them through the smoke as well. Who will prevail? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Oceanic Valorant Tour. Of course, Oce Champs, I'm joined by my lovely co-caster, Pilski. We saw an explosive last series. We saw a very much a bloodbath between Order and Bonkers. We now say farewell to Bonkers through the Oceanic Championship. But now we've got another game in front of us. It is going to be a crazy one. I feel like we've already seen some crazy action. We've got the entree to the main cause here maybe rain and honey badges to deliver to tonight yeah 100 percent. i think uh in terms of the overall standings as well honey badges barely like scraping their way into this champ stage like i think overall they might have been like seventh or something in points but uh roster instability as well as like i think one of the rosters might have been like doubled up in terms of the overall standings they're able to scrape their way into those champs and they've always been a pretty decent team but to talk about rain first they are the team that at least we have seen so far because they started off in the upper bracket a bit of a different mix of players or at least uh, i mean one big peak addition of minimize into the core of players that did quite well for themselves in that last stage makes them a pretty exciting team to watch and they definitely could have almost taken that win over Bobo yesterday. They were rounds away from doing it. I was watching that game of Fracture, and I think they made some great reads and then just didn't quite put the pieces together, didn't quite hit their shots. And unfortunately, they fall in towards the lower bracket. But a strong showing against Bobo is a promising sign up against the Honey Badgers in this lower bracket. And of course, we take a look at the roster across this rain roster. It's Honey Badgers, Milky, Jelly D. Cloxy, Suave in a new addition to this roster, just recently announced. Autumn, formerly of Order, now of the Honey Badges. And this is an interesting one for me, Pilski. I have to say, we've seen what Autumn's capable of on that Order roster, now bringing that kind of all-star firepower to a roster like Honey Badges, who, you know, we already had a, a glimpse, a flash in the pan from Jelly D and Cloxy, but Autumn, two honey badges is going to be an explosive one to look at i have to say yeah we'll see how it goes i think autumn has been a, a player that when chamber came out i was pretty excited to look at the the skill set of that agent because autumn it was a player that was a, a jet main and someone who used the ob quite frequently and then even previous to that was playing the cypher quite heavily so I feel like a sentinel that's got the ability to utilize the firepower of a player that has an operator is kind of built for him. And he's going to slot straight into that role here on this team. It's something that he's been doing for quite a while. He has a little bit more diversity to his play though, because he can flex into the other sentinel roles. 
And uh, at least looking at this Honey Badger's roster, if you go back to them playing with Fulvus, uh, I think that you saw him playing a lot more of the Killjoys and, and things like that, maybe even flexing into a Viper and, and playing a Senti role like that. So they're definitely going to have to change up the way that they want to play overall because I don't think I've ever really seen Autumn flex into a Viper, but we'll see how it works out for him. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, I have to say. As you said, Full was normally known to play the Sentinel in that controller kind of role. It'll be interesting to see how that kind of shapes up what Honey Badger's pick. Maybe we see Jelly D go back to a Sentinel. Maybe we see Milky on the Sentinel. Who knows what Honey Badgers are bringing to the table. But of course, we've got to look at our head-to-head. -head. Who are the players to look at for both of these rosters? We had Punda pitted against Jelly D. Some of the sharper fraggers, of course, Punda, normally we saw him on the Sober in, in a few of his old rosters, Legacy, and of course the like, but now to the Duelist, and he's been repping it well. We saw the Yoru yesterday out of him. We saw some satchel movement. We see a lot of promising things out of Punda, a very all-star standard player, but he's going against a standard player in Jelly D, as handsome as he is cracked. Jelly D, look at those stats. Not far behind Punda, I have to say. Yeah, so these two players, Going back to previous seasons of VOT, often find themselves pretty high up in terms of the overall stats. Punda, I think, might be one of the more underrated players in the whole region. I think last uh, last season, outside of a couple of outlier players that didn't really have very many rounds or very many reps overall, I would put him fifth overall in the stats, and he had like 600 rounds played, which was like way more than some of the other people. Like people like Ronsky who were top statting, or some of the players on Bobo, like Dragon, for example, were only playing maybe like three, 400 rounds, whereas that Rain team played so many close games that the fact that he's been able to put up consistent ACS, being able to play multiple different roles and still be one of the top players in the region in stats overall, show just how consistent and how valuable he is. He's able to be very, very flexible with his agent pool. Jelly D is someone who I haven't seen for a while, but I remember him in the original Honey Badgers team having some really big pop-off games on the uh, secondary, like flashing agents or even flexing into like a second duelist. So both of these players for me, when I look at this head-to-head, -head, it's about two players who could be aggressive and who could really take over the game for their team. It's all about the playmakers here. Of course, we sat down with Honey Badgers. Of course, we spoke to Milky about how he feels going into this Oceanic Championship. Really confident, actually. Like, I honestly think we're better than everyone else at the moment. So I only really have to perform and see what happens. Let's slow things down. Two oh! versus three. Slav, okay, buddy. Put in, obviously, a little bit of practice in the offseason. And then we changed our members around so instead of having followers we've now got autumn instead which obviously is in our opinion probably a really good pickup just because he's a very strong player individually and he's been providing a lot to the team autumn has moved on to like the chamber role so he's playing chamber basically on every map and we're running viper probably a bit less the competition is obviously very good especially coming into it being only the top six teams like the people that are in this spot of all putting like hard work across the whole year rather than just qualifying through like one open season so first off we probably focused on just making sure that we're all comfortable playing together like with a new member just making sure that we kind of understand each other's tendencies and timings and what like our individual strengths are and adjusting to what autumn strengths are and then in terms of like theory crafting and stuff like that i'm just taking a lot from you know the better players in better regions, better teams, improvising, kind of making it our own, trying to show people a different side of honey badges. We try not to focus too much on like the minute details just because we don't want to get too in our heads of what our opponent's doing. We'd like to primarily stick to our game plan and stick to our strategies and our, our ideas rather than always trying to counter strat. Think in terms of preparation though just understanding what agents they're going to play and what utility they're going to use rather than focusing on what their set players are just because we feel like obviously everyone's just constantly trying to adapt especially in a game like Valorant where there's so many like new agents and new abilities new timings um, and then also there's obviously a big difference between like scrims and then officials people play differently they play more reserved rather than just throwing their life away so just trying to focus on us rather than them staying focused on themselves milky a, a great chat there and you know a lot to say how he feels about how this region is shaking up and i guess a lot of these teams feel very similarly that the competition's just gotten that little bit closer the gap really isn't there anymore teams are taking it to order the best team in the region of course arguably now at the moment and 
order in that lower bracket and anything's possible. Fun Crew Bobo up in the top. And, well, of course, we look now to our vetoes to see how this one unfolds in front of our very eyes, Pelsky. Yeah, I mean, so Rain's gone for the split picks, which is a, a little bit of trickery, um, trying to go straight towards the edge of the map pool, maybe a little bit of a punish pick, uh, minimizes someone who, who definitely loves to read the veto and likes to try to stay a step ahead and try to pick a, a bit of a tricky map that's going to make the opponent uncomfortable if they can. Haven's a no-brainer for Honey Badgers. It's a map that they played a little bit themselves, and uh, obviously Rain got 13 one on it yesterday. And then uh, we finished things off on, on a set, which is not a map that we've seen Rain play with this iteration of this lineup but they played a little bit before not too unfamiliar for honey badgers so kicking off split here this is where rain they're going to start things off on the attacking side this is always the double edged sword of picking split right you have to start attack and you have to see what you can get done interesting lineup for honey badgers they get a mix in the neon obviously uh, an agent that we've been seeing a lot of popularity lately especially in asia and even na a lot um, just being able to uh, stun a lot of those close quarters. You see it in uh, being really, really useful on maps like Fracture, but even here on Split, there's a lot of great positions that the Neon can uh, really, really abuse. And of course, uh, you, we, we highlight the Neon pick. This is Cloxy's first career game on this agent. This is the first time we've seen this one brought to the table by the roster of, uh, of course, the Honey Badges. But we're going to thank Samsung, lovely gentlemen lovely ladies over at samsung for giving us this vot and uh of course the samsung odyssey neo g9 offers world-class performance with 240 hertz refresh rate one millisecond response time g-sync capable amd free sync premium pro at least you're in a champion with samsung odyssey gaming monitors pilski we're playing in champs, looking to unleash the inner champs. First map split, bit of a crazy one, a bit of a curveball being thrown by Rain. Uh, of course, getting us out that attacking side. We see Minimize on the Viper, my shoe on the Astra. This is an interesting adaptation. Yeah, so Rain have been a team where notoriously, even heading back to their last lineup, uh, I feel like their roles are an absolute mess. And why should that change? I mean, they got top three with it. And uh, even so far in this lineup, we've seen their roles continue to be an absolute mess. So, look, let's see how it goes for them. My shoe going a bit more into that controller role. You're going to have uh, El Snow on the Sage and Minimize. Hasn't started things off well, has he? He's got his head snapped off in middle. And now you get this massive fight in B main between multiple of these players. The Neon just stunning up the entire team. And that's easy thinking for Honey Badgers. Jelly D just getting in the fray, shutting Rain down from taking any space here and now because Pundu was just on the lurk over towards ramp now has to rotate help out Xus. what can they do here honey badges three over at this b site leaving the breach to send oh sorry solo hold this a heaven because rain they're gonna be walking straight into the honey badges stack blinded up from the bird of jelly the star goes down milky does put a star in play, the smoke to cover across the walk-in, but both these players are going to wrap around the left side of sight, but not a chance with Honey Badgers shutting it down convincingly. Oh. Autumn with two on the chamber, Honey Badgers first win. Yeah, starting off well on defense, exactly what you want to see from them. Haven't played Split in a little while here, Honey Badgers, and they've got a 1-2 record on it. One of their wins was a 16-0, I remember, in the, I think like the Division 2 league over Bobo, mm. which was a bit of a surprise. I think Bobo were playing with a sub back then. But uh, yeah, not too many reps on split compared to a lot of the rest of the map pool here for Honey Badgers. And as for Rain, I mean, this is a team where last season we saw them play a fair bit of bind. They were great on Haven, a little bit of a, a set mixed in, but obviously with Minimize coming into this lineup, they're going to have a whole bunch of uh, different dimensions and a whole bunch of different approaches here heading into those champs. As you can see, Relay, Bolt tossed early. Jelly D looking to float up that rope in a second, but of course, Rain gonna be backing off of Heaven for the moment. Clock seat gonna be taking a little bit of a detour here because, well, the Honey Badgers aren't gonna expect now. Maybe the vent pop come up. A few players looking to peek up through this rope. Expect to reload the sound cube given the flash is great. Clock seat. Has heard all the footsteps. It's now up to Jelly D once again to hold it. Spray down Mouse One with the Spectre at that kind of range. Deadly. Jelly D for 
and quickly charging that ultimate up honey badges with a second. This is not a player that you want to uh, farm up a storm anti eco, build up some confidence because Jelly D is the kind of player that on these flash agents, on these players, uh, on these agents that can get aggressive on defense, I've seen him just absolutely make mince meat of the other team. Now, the bonus here for Honey Badges are really clean anti eco. They are feeling fantastic about how this is going. Be keen to see some kind of a set play uh, with the Seekers or maybe like a retake play yeah. with the Seekers here in this first Whoa, round. Try to get some value, some bang for their go. buck. Seeming like they're going to send it straight down middle. Nice little set play between the bird and the neon wall. But with that KO knife coming in, that's making their lives a little bit more difficult. And it seems like Rain now going to start to methodically work their way back into middle and use the range of these rifles to be able to get some easier kills. That's great positioning being taken by Rain, playing as passive as possible, letting Honey Badgers walk to them and give their guns over. Yeah. Of course, only Spectres in this one. And of course, only two players left for the Honey Badgers. Five still alive for Rain, looking over towards the B site. And it's what you want a flawless round for Rain to put one on the board. On the side of Honey Badgers, they steal away a gun or two. This could be expensive. And of course, Honey Badgers then go into that fourth round with a buy of their own. and. Of course, Rain would be on light shields, a few of the players, if they were to lose a gun here or there, but taking it as safe as possible. Spike plant goes down, and Honey Badgers, not too antsy to go for this just yet. Looking for some damage, if they can get it. This is exactly how you want to see the anti bonus played, though. Very, very passive play with the rifles. Pretty no nonsense in the five on two, just utilizing the utility to minimize risk, working their way into the B site. It's good calling for minimize. I think once you've gone over and played in Asia, the amount of teams that have these gimmick plays on the bonuses that just catch you off guard and uh, punish you if you're trying to get a little bit faster in towards the map, if you don't take things slow in the opening couple of rounds, there's so many of these neon set plays. So I'm going to attempt oh. a bit of a ninja here, but the nade, I'm assuming it's going to clean him up. Ooh. Yeah, that was really yeah. well placed. So not too much to write home about there. Just one gun taken over by Autumn at the end of the round. Very, very clean opening round anti-bonus here for Rain. And we move straight into the first gun round. Yeah, I always thought he could have tanked it for a second, but of course, Paint Shell's doing lethal damage there. And well, for the side of Rain, they're able to pick up that first round, but now they stare down. Well, truly the one round that kind of sways this half. Honey Badges onto Rifles Autumn bringing out the Operator and the Light Shields. We saw him get aggressive with the Headhunters. He can now do it with a Sniper. Of course, close to that ultimate, but Operator in play early on means that uh -oh. he's not going to get aggressive with it. He spotted one else, though. Jump peak, shot bang. He's out of range of the Rendezvous. Autumn trades life for life with that one. And that's unfortunate to see he overstretched his margin just a little bit. Yeah. Usually see the TP as soon as you get KO knifed, especially when he's when they're playing a two one two like that. Like he is very much on his own. There's no one that can bail him out of that scenario. In the meanwhile, though, you're seeing honey badges. They've taken control of the extremities. They've got all of B main. They push close towards A main as well, and the seekers are giving them great reads on the positioning of all of these rain players here. So honey badges have got so much map control. Floxy's is all the way in their spawn. They've got deep in towards A main. And as long as they can buy enough time here, Honey Badgers, they could potentially sandwich over towards a ramp. And from that point, this round is going to be very difficult from uh, Rain's point of view. Great grab well. Cloxy in on the flank. This is absolutely beautiful. They're all vulnerable. Half of them are blind. What a beautiful sandwich from Honey Badgers. Yeah, that flash too. Well-timed. Suave now looking to get pulled in by the gravity well of Rain as they look to blast across this site. It's Punda in my shoe to try and take a 24 seconds over pause there. But Milky just going to press mouse one in the face of adversity. He's not scared. Now Jelly D uh -oh. with the wrap of his own has given away his position. Hawk out, not blinded. Punda now looks to stick the spike plant against Jelly D. Another flash comes through. The showstopper flies from Punda and it lands as Jelly D tries to move away from it. In rain, they pick up second round, and I have a feeling, Pilski, this is gonna be a crazy one. Two for two, tip for tack, it's rain to pick up the fourth. Rain are gonna be so happy that they had a clean anti bonus in that second round now. About 2k plus across the board, even though that came down to the 1v1. And Panda, just an invaluable player to have on your team, exactly why I highlighted him in the head to head. I feel like he's kind of underrated. There. Like, he's consistently played on teams that 
uh, you know, they're, they're not regarded as the top teams in the country, and they consistently do better with him putting in good work all the time than you'd expect them to. Little aggression into A main ends in a one for one. Rain still spread pretty wide across the map here. Just a bit of a catch all kind of anti eco default. Blocking Seeing vision. if they can get some picks. Giving Honey Badgers enough rope to hang themselves with essentially. And now Rain going to start to reposition yeah. over towards this A side of the map. They want to try to guard this rifle and make sure that it's not picked up by Honey Badgers later on if they haven't already juggled it out of the map. And they're just going to try to regroup and use this rifle advantage to close the round if they can. Well, they're going to be walking into Suave and Clock. See both eyes trained on this A ramp. El Snow willing to lead the charge. Clock gives away his position with the shot there. Punda able to take him out and walk down to the site with the rest of his teammates. El Snow going to be the one to lead the charge. Suave holding in an off angle. Slick and Suave looking to duck and dive. El Snow takes out Suave, and the wall actually gets Jelly D in the better position to take the fight. An unfortunate timing left. there for El Snow. Leaves it to the 2v2. The spike will go down with 25 seconds left. Rain. Now, how do they position? They've got position info of Punda. Needs to swap his placement up. Jelly D is firing shots off from heaven. Fires off the birds. Watch Punda on the cross. Nords is still trying to break this wall. He's just trying to get in <laughs> to that elbow position. An unfortunate situation to be in. These two players hold that elbow line and Autumn is expecting a wide swing. Knife gives the info. Autumn has snuck in, looking for the pistol shot, but Punda shuts it down. Rain finds three, but charges. I have to say, Pilski, a very valiant attempt there, once again, from Honey Badgers. Yeah, Rain is starting to get rolling on this attacking side. Like I said in the last game with Auto, like they're, they're starting to build up their economy, which is... Especially when you're playing the unfavorable side of the map, super important because obviously, you know, you're not favored to win a lot of these gun on gun rounds, but if you can keep doing consistent damage, staying competitive, you're going to do a, a whole lot better over the, the longer course. At least up. another buy in the back pocket here as the KO ult available for Exus. Minimize is going to play this kind of older school Viper approach that we're used to on this map. Saw a lot of this in NA back in the day where you just utilizing this viper wall to try to lurk up take some ramp control a little bit harder to do a little bit worse than it used to be because obviously you can't keep that wall in the orb up for as long at the same time but it seems like rain off the back of the gas cycle just going to rip the ko ult and go straight in towards this a site you know, the null command shutting down any abilities from anybody on the side of honey badgers for the moment so they're able to take this site scot free with that nebula towards Screens position wall here from Elso. We thought about, but of course, Spike gonna be planning out in the open. The default, if they're able to take heaven control, then they can look to hold this perfectly. Jelly D gonna be finding excess on the start. Flash comes out, my shoot. Not gonna be fully blinded up, but of course, Honey Badgers taking their time, slowing it down for this retake. Starting to work their way in now. The slow orbs just disrupting this retake from coming in, but the ramp start control is starting to go a little bit awry. Now Marshu with that pick can flank up through heaven, which is going to make this a lot harder for Honey Badgers to retake because they still got that open plant here for rain. Hunter going to chuck a nade on the bomb, but goes down in the meanwhile. And Marshu relying on the, that uh, grab well to stop the first tap. And that's just more than enough time that rain have bought themselves with that open plant to close that round. Beautiful stuff. Just playing off of that open plant, maintaining lamp control from just long enough and utilizing all that util to just stop that retake from coming in. The gas cycles from the Viper, the Sage slow orbs, the snake bites, okay. every little bit of util just making Honey Badger's life harder and harder. Util absolutely perfect and rain. Starting the attack side off how they want to, keeping Honey Badger's down early. Of course, Here. you alluded to that Honey Badger's may be a little bit better on split than we would have thought 13-0 i believe against bobo in yeah, a different they haven't league. played it in like two months though that's the issue and they don't have a whole lot of reps on this map so this is the kind of pick where like as rain you know that the other team hasn't got officials on it so you want to try to make them like uncomfortable in the veto uh, absolutely uncomfortable they are suave getting so aggressive and just being picked off I by minimize just the work over to a seaside with that viper wall up next to us and the rest of rain now to gather around take that b site control but of course they're gonna have to deal 
Two players a stack of heaven. Autumn going to go for the swing off the flash, but great trade from Exos. Res is available. Wow. It's almost like nothing happened. Rinse, repeat, and reset. Rain have all five alive, and they're taking pieces apart of Honey Badgers as they look to take B site. Exos is playing such a sick KO. And it's, it's crazy that his, like, rookie season was last season uh, of BOT. Nice flash timing for Jelly D, but unfortunately there's way too many numbers and a massive gun advantage for Rain. I mean, just, that they have five alive. They're continuing to maintain this economy control and putting themselves in pole position. Honey Badgers just can't get anything rolling. But I was saying, like, Exus in particular, you know, Autumn is the player that if you let him get comfortable on Chamber, just run around the map, do whatever he wants. He can start to take over the game. He can just start playing those aggressive lines of getting picks for free. It can be a big, big win condition for Honey Badger. That's exactly why they picked him up. But he hasn't really been able to get rolling because Exus's utility, in fact, the utility across the board has just been excellent. The, the KO knives and the flashes making his life more and more difficult. And again, the, the KO knife plays to disrupt that A main push has caught Autumn uh, for what I feel like is the fourth or fifth time this half. They're just Welcome kicking Autumn down the mountain and can't really play him with Autumn, a, a player of high stature, of course, oh, we saw him previously on Tony. water. And that Viper is that Viper like Oh that? my god, that is... That's, that's dude, filthy. That's, that curves all the way into a site. They can get that, a free plant. That's some Minimize tech right there. Like, yeah. Minimize is such a nerd. Honestly, he's the biggest <laughs> nerd in Oceanic Valorant. Like, it's absolutely uh, disgusting. Like, he's the kind of guy that just thinks about stuff like this. How can I do this weird Viper ult? to make the other team super uncomfortable. Like, look at Honey Badger, yeah. they don't know what to do right now. When have you yeah. ever seen that? Oh, they've, they've rotated an extra member. They're so scared of Minimize, they pop the Seekers too. Minimize is just sitting in his what Viper's pit. He's just being chilling, man. The rest of his team's over on the other side of the map, but they're looking to come with him now. Coming through Sewer, 35 seconds. The time is down. A chamber TP, Minimize is spotted. Seconds left. And this has to be a cautionary Ooh, tale here. Oh, look at that. Cosmic oh. across the backside. A little bit of util over towards elbow side. Punda straight up on in there. Suave does great job in from elbow though. And Jelly D as well. It was a cool Viper's Pit, Tony, but what did it do really? Not a lot at the end of the day. It's my force to keep this Phantom and Rain. You, you gotta respect the effort. I thought they were just gonna go B with that one. They got so many players over towards that A site with the Viper's Pit. They could have just went B, Pilski. Yeah, they could have, but um, I don't know. I just prefer, prefer to forget about that round, <laughs> honestly. Like, that was just a mess. What was that? Ugh. I can't wait to hear like the minimized VOD review about that round. That would be great. Uh, hopefully the we'll way they've, <laughs> they've reinvested in this round they still got the showstopper to roll with so oh, okay panda's gonna do one of these panda rounds with you. straight on yep. in double blast pack showstopper the stopping of the show hasn't been had the short fuse punda not gonna be able to find anyone unfortunately got so much map control though it's all about the zoning you're forcing the trailblazer in through heaven side so they're not gonna have that for retake and You've lost complete control of the middle of the map here for Honey Badgers. Oh, never mind. What a bloody shot from Foxy. Yeah, Foxy, beautiful one. Minimize to four. One to show us some crazy lineup. And show us a crazy fake potentially towards A. Foxy. And the rest of Honey Badgers looking to lock down this beast. Cyber Punda has snuck up through that smoke into heaven and up onto the raft. And nobody was expecting it. Honey Badgers. Now, they send everything and the kitchen sink out. <laughs> Jelly D not going to be able to find Punda with, off the back of the Rolling Thunder. Rain have the site to take. They will be looking to stick this plant from Elstow. Honey Badger's out there out, Rafter. Milky stuck through. Nobody looking this direction. Nobody out in the open, luckily. But Punda now going to be caught out. Nobody expecting where either player landing. can be. Last My shoe, standing. perfect spot for the trade. But Suave going to be losing life. My shoe, great swing. A brave one to go for, but gets rain number six. Another pretty messy round. The amount of people we've seen today just be full stunned in a breach shot or in a in a fault line and still secure the kill, just one B first bullet.
is pretty ridiculous. I'm kind of waiting to see when Cloxy's going to rip this ult as well. I think half by is probably the perfect time to do it. Wouldn't mind to see like another set play between the Sky and the uh, the Neon. That's something that I love. The Asian teams when they do it always seems to get a lot of value. Ko knife doesn't get shot, and four play four players scan by that. Like Exorcist knives are so good, man. And look at the reposition. Range just no nonsense straight into that B site. They want absolutely nothing to do in with mid, and they've gotten in for free. Just off the back of one knife, like that's value. That there's absolute value there. You can see now just able to play such a far back position just outside of main Punda playing the angles and playing the man. He's a soccer player, Punda. Lobs of paint, shells, lobs of shot, lobs and everything. Jelly D falls, clock seat. The only one left does have the high gear available. Could kick it up. Look to maybe steal a gun or two away, but Rain, they've got this B site unlock an impressive execute just off the back of an Exodus knife. And Pilski, as you said, Exodus, you know, this is his second season, if you can call it that, of course, since he's kind of still technically the new blood here for Rain. We, of course, saw Issa before him, and it was an interesting call to make because Issa kind of was doing the same role that Exodus is filling right now. And Exodus, from strength to strength, he's just been leveling up as. Rain have been playing more and more. For sure. Had a couple of players like that. Like, I think Ticks, it's pretty hard to top Ticks um, mm. going like second, I think first or second season going international. Pretty unheard of in pretty in most esports titles. You don't really see that too often. But X is, uh, I mean, a top three first season is pretty nice. Um, so, get attack pause out of Honey Badger's. Only two rounds left in the half. Clox has been holding this uh, Neon ult for so long that he probably could have had another one by now. Like, I feel like it's the kind of ult that on a half buy, on a gun round, just rip it in a set play or rip it in a retake. Like, holding onto it, you're just not getting good value. It's like Chet Knives or Chamber Op. Like, you can weave so many of these into a half if you, if you just utilize it, you know, pretty soon to the time that you get it. So I'm waiting for that one pop off round. If he if he rips it in the later parts of this half and, and finds no impact, it's gonna be a very sad moment. A bit difficult though. I mean, like I said, in terms of the economic game, Rain has been on top of things. They've still got a strong economy. If they win this round, they're forcing honey badgers onto yet another awkward buy, and Punt is just having his way on the raise. Yeah, we of course spoke about Punt as our head to head player to watch for, and you can definitely see why. Fluent movement. Great satchels, great paint shells, great entry picks being found by Punda in this game. It's so wow. far, suave, beautiful playback though. Fault line to catch up a concussed minimize and a swing on. I actually see a rain player fall early, but Honey Badgers need to be a little bit cautious. This A split still going to be thought about by the side of rain. Yeah, suave is pretty low here as well, but backed up nicely by Milky. Spike Never mind. Doesn't a. need any help. Last just multi-fragging up a storm by himself. Autumn for another, and my shoes left in spawn, wondering where it all went wrong. Autumn's not going to give him much time to think about it. And Honey Badger's just scaling on in. Great thing about running the double flash agents is you can just bully people out of this map control. These kind of positions. They're giving my shoe a lot of respect, to be fair. But uh, I think really the lynch part, uh, the linchpin in that round was just the beautiful, beautiful fault line out of Suave. As soon, like he waited for the perfect time, he waited Last for the gas to the expire, hand. and as soon as that gas went down, he fault lines and, and pretty much shuts down that A lurk by himself. Now you love to see it, floor and breach play out of Suave. Used to be the chamber here, I feel, for the side of Honey Badgers, of course, before they got Autumn in, and you know, they swapped up their picks completely. We saw a fluent chamber out of Suave, and I have to say, Breach kind of suits him a little bit better. The playstyle's more help your team than help yourself. But of course, Rain, last round before the swap, Honey Badgers are looking for an aggressive B main tank, and Rain, they're paying a bit of respect to that one. They're playing it a little bit further back. Oh, nice little util set out of uh, Honey Badgers there. And even punishing when Rain try to go for the follow-up picks, the breach shot off the back of that uh, Sage Res. Punda's going to rip his ult. These are the messy rounds that we love about Valorant. Just both teams ripping all their util. It's the last round of the half. No point holding onto those ults. But Autumn's flank here might just be the nail in the coffin. 
Uh, suave. Trapped to the corner. Autumn. He is going to be able to find it in the flank. Meets the end of it. Excess and Punda both for my shoot left once again at the last mark of this round. Suave to hit the shot. Spray him down. 5 7. Honey Badgers with a pause have found their mark and they've found themselves a more even half than we would have let on rain. It was 7 to 3 at one stage, but they've let it slip. Now swap to the defense and it's Honey Badgers now to the attack. Where it starts to get a little bit more dicey here, Pilski. They're running that kind of double initiator with the Sky Breach. This is going to be an explosive few attack rounds, I feel, for Honey Badgers to start. Yeah, you got to keep your eye on Rain, though. Um, they're running that Astra, so they ha can definitely do some of these util combos that you love to see. Always love the Raise Astra, the Sage as well, the Slow Orbs, like... And Minimize is really nerd about that stuff. He loves his little util setups off the back of an Astra Star or something like that, where you just get free kills off of nades. You saw it in that Bonkers 4 that went overseas. Sage wall over in towards B main early on here. Gets a little bit of info. Honey Badgers are well and truly on top of just dealing with that Sage wall segment and trailblazing in, just trying to find some further info. They've pretty much dealt with that wall now, but don't have to necessarily commit to B if they don't want to. Yeah, they don't have to commit to B. They might be looking to walk it out, minimize. Top four. Gonna be turned off. He's run out of gas for the moment. And gives Honey Badger space to work with and gives Autumn footing to work with. Finding minimize and taking him out. Denies the wall, denies the orb, denies the hold here. Release that extra bit longer. Honey Badger's looking to take that A site. That wall's gone. There's just one star in play in Milky. Well, we won't speak about it. Exus. Pop flashes himself, takes out Cloxy. Four to four now, but it's up to my shoe to hold down this A site. He's got a nice grab well to sort of stagger that site push in on. He's got some rotations in from some of the boys. That's all they need, apparently. Really nicely timed grab well out of my shoe. He multi frags in with the frenzy from Elbow and Exus. A multi-frag from him on the Frenzy as well. Nice underarm to catch Cloxy rotating in through mid. Was a bit of a tell that was probably going to be a play towards the A side of the map. And that's good side anchoring. That's what we love to see from the Astra. A lot of people using that Astra over towards B, but pretty viable on A as well. Remember watching like when Sentinels was super, super dominant on this map for a little bit. Watching Zombs like anchor that site. Mm. And then they'd swap him over to B and then roll with the Duelist in towards ramp side. We'll see if they swap up where those players are playing. Maybe wall A with the Sage and then swap the Astra to B. And flexibility being shown on the defense side here, potentially for Rain. As early wall for El Snow. It's going to be busted down, knifed out. Honey Badgers, they're going to take it completely. Going to make all the sound cues for Rain. Mortem trying to scope in on the head. Hunter, great swing from X. Let's get the wall bang in with the Spectre's bullets. A little bit better. Minimize. Use this Toxic Orb to actually aggress and catch a few players off guard. The Flash is great. Exus has been playing a beautiful KO. And it just continues. Okay. Honey Badgers, though, get a few picks back. Elso blinded up and a few classic shots miss. Elso able to live. Pilski, yeah. it's one of those Fiesta style rounds. But Rain, they put it on their mark. Second round in the second half. They took way too much damage there against the classics. Like, they went for a mid dive. It was going well for them. They had no reason to dive mid, like, further. It's like minimize, try to disrespect anti eco, and just they, they basically throw their economy in the bin. Now they're bonus on these specters with the frenzies. We'll see if they can take some, some rifles away from Honey Badgers in this round and make up for it. Looking like Honey Badgers just want to go for a set play towards B and Crane are doing this kind of bonus setup where they're waiting for the other team to take mid control and just trying to play off the back of the KO flash. But uh, they're not even going to get the opportunity to do so, unfortunately. It's got to be the Heaven Flood here with the Spectres, which is not usually a good feel. Well, Clocks are kicking in the high gear, but my shoe already ready to answer Jelly D. Trying to take it range, but these Spectres and these close range guns are doing a little bit better in these close quarters. A top of the star, Punda able to blast back himself across the side and get to safety. Perfect. Oh, movement. minimize. And perfect play. Minimize in the great position right now towards this flank. Back of A main. 
trip. Trademark has been triggered and Minima is actually able to find Autumn. Suave now needs to turn and burn. Punda taken out by the turn and burn from Suave, but he's still cautious. Minimize is just sitting in this close position and Suave's got no idea. He has to corner clear every position and this is the rest of Rain walking up now trying to take wow. one big ones and a great swing. El Snow finds it. Honey Badger, there's not a rifle around. It's guns picked up. Rain, they lost too many guns in that last one, but... Pilski that picked them up, they've stolen them away. Honey Badger's back to an eco. It's 10 rounds to rain. That round is absolute robbery. Like, I felt like Honey Badger's had the timing. If they just pulled the trigger going out B main when Cloxy ripped his wall, then, like, they would have had the timing. They would have scaled up onto the site before you could get those Spectres and the Frenzies flooding into those close angles where Rain kind of picked them apart. But they missed their timing and they didn't cancel. They still went into B. And unfortunately, it's a little bit... Uh, kind of played out, you know, Coming like up. a little bit obvious that you're going to commit into the site after you rip half of your util, half of the util for the exec, and then don't commit in. Doesn't really get you any work done. Honey Badgers again trying to rip some util, try to make a little bit of a play out B main. This time less so to take the site and more oh, so to try to create space for Autumn and Milky to get some space on a ramp, maybe even try to punish a aggressive peak. But Rain. Not going too, not getting too carried away, except for Exus, who, I mean, again, it feels like Rain are trying to disrespect anti-eco, and I'm worried that they're going to put themselves in a position where they lose too many guns, but look, so far, so good. Able to go one for two. Easy. Oh, Jelly D. Great shot to my shoe. That's gun picked up in Honey Badges. Potential control of the B-site, but no one minimizes anything to say about it. Seekers... Will chase down his teammates as he's popped here as 12. HP Milky. Sheriff Lurk up through middle. This could be good if Rain aren't expecting it, but they will turn it. El Snow finds it, and Suave now left to try and walk out B main. That star is in play. Suave able to perfectly cross here. And can look to get that spike plant, just secure the money, but Rain, star's gone. In 13 seconds, Suave. We'll pick up that fancy. Left. Maybe doesn't have to go for the plane. Could just save on site. Maybe we'll tap the spike. Honey badges aren't going to save it. Suave actually to fake it out. Try to steal a gun away. Make it expensive. Rain. Well, they lost three players. But they found themselves on 11th round. They're on the path to victory here on split. And honey badges. A valiant attempt once again. But it's just Rain reading them like a book. I'm keen to see where this uh, pit's going to get invested from Minimize this mm. round. I was going to say mid, but he's ripped his wall mid, so it looks like he's going to be A main, and they're going to lean a little bit more heavy towards the other side of the map. Which is going to be a good start, because you can see Autumn sizing up this A side of the map for a pick, but if the pit gets ripped straight away in combination with the KO knife, then he's really not going to get any value trying to work that side of the map. Let's see how Honeypad just navigates this round, though. 1 minute 30, they spot that pit on A. I'm keen to see what their uh, approach right is going to be because you've obviously got this Viper's Wall across mid and across B main and both stars in position to try to deal with any of Honey Badger's attempts to try to prog up mid or retake B main. You've got full B main control as well here for Rain with a two-man crossfire. So this is going to be a very tricky round to navigate for Honey Badgers. They're getting disrupted in multiple parts of the map. And at this stage, you kind of want to try and... I guess you're kind of forced to try and go up mid here, either through Heaven or through Vent. I feel like Vent could be a good play if they're able to flush out Exus, but looks to be B Heaven the way they will tread. El Snow up on Rafter, looking at spotting for a player. Spotting one there, Cloxy takes... gets taken out by El Snow, pops the heal and backs off to the safety of his teammates. You can see that Honey Badgers have been put in such a rough spot yeah. off of just single bits of util, off left. of single bits of players. It's just such a weird round yeah. to have to go up against, and now you've got this crossfire between backside of B and, and B main. Honey Badgers could still make this work, though. That's a beautiful shot out from Suave. Now they know these last two players over towards B main here. They're going to plant default. Retake going to be quite slow from those A side of the map players, but with uh, Jelly D going down, you've now got a mum numbers advantage here for Rain. Cosmic goes down across CT, and oh. Suave actually going to go for a push in there. That's unfortunate timing there, but Autumn able to find Exus. 
But Minimize trades it back. Milky, great forward position, but this is kind of a one and done angle. Paint shells are thrown by Punda, but he knows that Mai is going to let Punda in. Mai is going to expect he's going to check the corner. Milky, unfortunately, that was his time to shine. Rolly Thunder through from Swile, but it doesn't mean anything when he's the only player left alive. Nobody to help him. Rain have 12 already. A stunning start to split here. A bit of a throwaway potentially in the vetoes, but it's not likely. Rain perfectly planned this, and they are looking at closing map one very convincingly. Yeah, I love that. Uh, pretty. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's minimized. Like those kind of calls are the things where I feel like if other teams in OS use alts like that and, and made their opponent's life so difficult on attack like those are the kind of rounds you get locked down like vipers pit on a they had full b main control it felt like honey badges they didn't really know how to navigate themselves to a win there they were just made hyper uncomfortable super early on you have to be super decisive and really commit to something to be able to make that work for you so look again ko knife i I honestly would love to go back in this VOD and see how many times Exus has knifed Autumn, like off the bat. It's felt like almost every round on attack and defense, he's just KO knifing him. You're looking to pick up KO in your arsenal, definitely look to Exus. Maybe ask him for some tips, because he just knows how to play it so well, Pilski. He's getting so, so much info, denying so much space from Honey Badgers, trying to use their util. And right at the moment, you can see so much presence towards mid the resurrection and oh bested and Punda rips the showstopper flies through air jelly d assassinated autumn tour de force slower mid expects to find Punda a little bit over ego milky go towards this a ramp position could look to pick off a few players here a rain but it's quickly traded back by my shoot when well they go for an a peak Fox is running it all the way over. They might look to take this A site with 30 seconds. 30 seconds left. Rain, they're thinking it might be me. I love that combo of the res yeah, with the showstopper. Just beautiful play there. Finally, I feel like Autumn's found a round where he could take over. Nice shot in towards middle. Plant goes down on towards that A site with full ramp control and Autumn's posted up here with his tour. This has got Honey Badger's written all over it. Very difficult retake for Rain to be putting together here. But it's all about the timings. Like, if my shoot gets an opportunity to walk in on the flank here, they could complete another one of these last second retakes. This last second retake. Shorty Autumn's blind, though. Green flash from Exus. It's every time we see it, the flash is popped for him wow. perfectly in my shoot. Minimize, they sweep it aside and under the rug go honey badges as rain take a convincing split 13 to 5 perfect Defenders execution win. of the util exus i have to say that game was stunning from him yeah i mean the whole team overall it was a beautiful veto they've gone and pick split making their opponents uh, pretty uncomfortable i love the way they played it their attacking side they got a lot of value out of it got a seven five half they move over to defense and um you know it kind of reminded me of that bonkers play style with the astra and, and the viper just making their opponent's life super super difficult working through the map on on defense and uh really really like the way they they utilize that viper wall the viper roll the astra stars as well and obviously, uh, you can't go past uh, another pop-off there from Panda. Like, a massive, massive game from him yet again. Yeah, explosive stuff, I have to say. And we saw the glimpses of what we alluded to in the pre-game, Pilski. The satchels, the movement. Punda, just an all-star individual in terms of that character, that agent. You can see he's definitely been putting in the hours. Rain have been putting in the hours. That was such a well-executed split. And, of course... Now we go over to the Vetoes to look at our second map. It will be Haven and arguably Rain. Of course, previously Rain, very good at Haven. And I feel like it's going to be hard for Honey Badgers to bounce back. We're going to go to a quick break while we set it all up. Though, so don't go anywhere. Don't touch that browser. We'll be back with more Oceanic Champs before you know it.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the VOT Oceanic Championship. Of course, I'm Two Tap Tony, joined by Pilski. And well, Pilski, we saw an absolute clinic by Rain there on Split. I have to say, just outclassing Honey Badgers in terms of the vetoes and maybe catching Honey Badgers in a false sense of security there, especially showing that Split, of course, we said previously was pretty good for them. Haven't played it in a few months, and maybe that got in their head a little bit. Yeah, I think adding Minimize into a team like Rain that has already done such great stuff in, in the last season when I don't necessarily think they were expected to. They were kind of like a mixed team that had come together. I wasn't really expecting too much from them. They had a couple of players who had had some experience on, on paper in, in different leagues mixed with a couple of newer players. And uh, now, you know, chucking someone with Minimize's experience in there, um, they seem to have, at, at least in that map, hit another level. I love the approach to the veto here. It's worked out well for them. They've started off strong on split. But look, let's not get too carried away. Honey Badger's a core of players who's played multiple seasons of VOT now. They've chucked Autumn into the team. They're going on to their map pick of Haven, a map that uh, Rangers got 13 1 on uh, by Bobo with this roster. However, in previous seasons of VOT, Haven felt like the map that Rain couldn't lose on. Yeah, it felt like, you know, Haven's kind of, they're safe Haven, if one would say. Honey Badgers, you know, going to have to pull out all the stops here. And I feel like for a team like Rain going on to Haven, especially now with Minimize in this roster, they're going to be feeling very, very confident. And I'm interested to see what they bring to the table in terms of uh, the agent picks here, because we've seen a lot of different things here on Haven so far in the VOT. Hmm. Yeah, well, so that's kind of what I'm wondering for Honey Badgers in particular, uh, as well as I'll be keeping an eye on Reigns uh, picks because on Haven, obviously their last game of Haven, they got absolutely slammed. And I saw Minimize like playing a Cypher. He hasn't played like a Senti role in a while. And I saw him on a Chamber as well. Like I said, uh, it's felt like for the longest time, even last season, Reigns roles have been an absolute mess. They kind of have just been mixing around different players onto different agents. Sometimes it works beautifully. Sometimes it looks like uh, it's a little bit disorganized, a little bit messy. So we'll see if they roll in with the same roles and the same agent comp that they did against Bobo when they got pretty much slammed on this map. Um, as for Honey Badgers, I also have a question because I'm looking at every single game of Haven that they've ever played and they've always played a Killjoy, um, which I'm assuming is Fulvus. And yep. when you change up that play style of the Killjoy where you have that consistency, you have setups that you can play off, you have those lockdown rounds that you really rely on and go back to, you're really going to have to change up your play style, you're really going to have to you know, mix in some different stuff into your lineup. And that's exactly what you're seeing here. They've gone away from their old comp where they were playing uh, Jet, Breach, Killjoy, Omen, Sky. They've changed up the controller. They've changed up the Sentinel role. And they also changed the Jet in for a Neon. So the only things that are the same is the double flash comp running the Breach and the Sky. And as for Rain, I mean, my question of them getting 113th, will they change up their roles? No, they won't. They'll keep the exact same roles and they'll run it back again. If it ain't broke, don't fix. You can see Honey Badgers. If it ain't broke, don't fix. They're going the same composition here that they ran on Split. And it's interesting to see for a team like Rain, I was hoping for maybe the Punda Yoru, but of course, uh, kind of only a one map wonder. We see it on Ascent, and unfortunately, we won't be seeing Ascent this evening as we go on either, oh, go on over into Haven. Of course, Valorant OCE, Elise Short in a champion with the Samsung Odyssey gaming monitors by a 49 inch Odyssey G9 a monitor from Samsung New Zealand and receive a bonus 27 inch Odyssey G3 a monitor or a bonus one terabyte 980 Pro NVMe M.2 SSD. Visit samsung.com forward slash NZ slash LP LPL for more odyssey gaming one of the deals offer valid until august 16th t's and c's apply but pilski haven here it's going to be an interesting one we don't get to see any crazy swap ups here from honey badgers they're going with what they know yep same thing can be said for rain it worked terribly for them previously but let's see if they've been able to learn a couple of things i'm pretty sure they can't do worse than a 113 but uh, look, Minimize has both impressed and horrified me before, so anything's possible at this point. He's all alone on this A site, gonna try to chuck a cam in towards Suez and get some info, but he's gonna be under a lot of pressure here early on. They're gonna be under a lot of pressure, you can see. 
kicking into high gear clock, see what the friends see in the camera. Here for Suba. Minimize just playing a safe position in this corner. And of course, has heard all the footsteps. He's got the info that Honey Badgers are out deeper. This A long position it has called for the rotate for X Sus. And well, X Sus could just look to pop a flash under armor and then swing it out with his frenzy. Slow down, Honey Badgers. All grouping up around this A long position. Of course, just leaving Autumn on Sewer with the headhunter X Sus. It's going to be walking away, and this could be Honey Badger's moment of pounce if they sense the timing right. Yeah, just going to rely on this set plate. Flash to backside. Trip does beautifully to stop that entry as Minimize hides inside his cage, buying time for that KO flash to come out. Impossible. There it gets ripped by Exus, who goes deep through that CT smoke, but seems like Honey Badger's well and truly all over that for the time being. At least the spike has been delayed, which is going to make this a little bit awkward for Honey Badger's if they try to rush things too much, but... Seems like they've got it under control for now. Little bit of a precarious position without any smokes. Thunder straight out of heaven, but pretty much throwing himself into a firing squad. And despite a nice start from my shoe that scans the whole team, no one really connecting too many shots. And Honey Badger's going to get themselves a very clean pistol. Yeah, great play from Punda to send it out heaven. Rain, unfortunately, not picking up the pistol. It goes to Honey Badger's this time. And I have to say, great One entries second, from Cloxy. He held so well with that frenzy to find Honey Badgers that first round. And for a team like Rain, kind of have to think, what do they bring to the table going into the rifle? Of course, we're thinking in the future, because Rain, they're gonna be on the eco this one, not really too much money there for a potential force that we've seen. Not many of these Oceanic teams like to force the second round after losing Pistol. I feel like forcing on defense is a bit scuffed. Especially if you're not running Brimmy. Like, I love the Brimmy forces on attack. If you get a Stim Beacon and send the boys in with a bunch of Spectres, like, those are the kind of rounds I can get behind. But, uh, or maybe like Marshall forces on Breeze and stuff like that. You saw a lot of that from Peace last year. Mm. And, you know, if you got the players that are great with the Marshals or the Sheriffs, sometimes it can work out. But, I don't know. I'm not vibing the force on Defense Haven when you don't really have the comp for it. Honey Badgers. For the most part, have this anti-eco under control. Things getting a little bit dicey remaining. here and there, but only two players dropping. One of them being the Chamber, who you don't mind losing too much. You can obviously just rip the Headhunter and you don't have to really invest too much in the round anyway. You can now see Honey Badger's second. Rain now to their purchase. And, well, they maybe need to shake things up, maybe get aggressive giving yeah. too much space to honey badgers already just from these two rounds alone and you can sense that they're playing a little bit cautious and as you said pilski going back to this composition it's not look great for them in terms of their last result with it and maybe this time is a different time hawk out in a high gear clock seat he's not gonna send it in to be dashing past the trip bio but casual to back you can't just slide through to the site, Cloxy not knowing the counterplay to that one, and Rain able to quick up, pick up a quick two. Suave able to trade it back, and Autumn's looking to walk the C site because there's nobody holding it for the moment. Yeah, I mean it's kind of underrated, but Honey Badgers actually have a terrible comp for breaking trips, and you're just not used to playing against Cipher very much anymore. Autumn, unfortunate case of timing. He was trying to make the play. You know, obviously they are on the bonus and you're a man down. You want to try to risk it for the biscuit, try to find yourself in the perfect position where you can dismantle the round. But it uh, doesn't end up working out for him. Last two players on Honey Badgers here are going to try to walk onto the B side. That was spotted out by my shoe, though. At least traded out by Jelly D. So, look, a couple of guns taken away from Honey Badgers, but not too much to write home about. Three up for Rain. And these trips getting great value for money up against this Neon peak. Um, like I said, like, look at the agent comp that Honey Badgers has. Who breaks trips on this comp? No, no raise, no mm. Sova. Actually ends up being kind of annoying. Yes, yeah, it's, it's hard to walk, especially, you know, Cloxy, we've seen that he's a capable raise player. Been playing the Neon quite a bit, this debut series here in terms of officials for the Cloxy on the Neon, but yeah, hard comp to run against a Cypher. El Snow getting aggressive, taking the peak, smoking it off, and Rain gifted a free one to start off into this rifle. 
see Jelly there trying to trailblaze into the trip. But uh, no trip on top yeah. this time, so doesn't get value out of it, unfortunately. That's kind of one of the only ways they can really get rid of those trips. They might have to in invest Trailblazer and, and uh, go Neon in behind that. Either that or they just re need much better spacing than what you've been seeing from them. It feels like Clox is kind of sending it in myself some of the time. Man advantage here for Rain. Jump spot from my shoe in combination with the trip for safety here is the fault line and the consume comes out. Actually, it's a nebula, so they're really trying to be able to pop out of this top seat smoke, perhaps. But really, it's just info denial from Honey Badgers here. Applying pressure towards that C site. They've used both of their flashes, but it doesn't really feel like Rain are too threatened by this. They've got a lot of players over towards this A side of the map, and that Lurk has not found any impact at all from Autumn X. This just flaps him out of the server, and now it's a three on five, and they've just kind of tried to panic Seekers and get into the side if they can. That's never what you want to see, as they just walk into the meat grinder. Another from X, uh, and the paint shells from Punda for good measure. Suave. A quick little trade back to El Snow. is just going to hold the door and take the 1v1s as they come to him, but minimize with the wall bang on the recon. Perfect hold there from Rain, not allowing anybody from Honey Badgers to do any sort of work. Two to two tied scored line Honey Badgers, forced half or eco here. Yeah, just a half bite. Rain's economy hasn't quite taken off just yet, but if they have a clean round here, they're going to be very, very thankful for it. Couple of ults in there for them, but they have the kind of comp where their ults don't really have a whole lot of impact, especially the, the Omen ult and the Cypher ult definitely can be kind of hit or miss, you know, in terms of just winning a round. Honey Badgers definitely, in terms of their comp, have a much stronger lineup in terms of just ripping those ults and winning rounds off of it and having big impact. But Rain, a couple of these players, like the Hunter's Fury, the, the KO ult, the Showstopper, getting quite close, so if they're able to multi-frag on these anti-bonus rounds, anti-ecos, they can have those big, big ults available for the gun rounds. Some shots being peppered through the wall, minimize the trip. And ca camera set up a little bit differently this time, the cage too. That flash will blind up the camera, so unfortunately minimize. Can't get too much info, and he's got no idea that Clocks is slow walk to this site. Mm. Great Astro Stars too here, minimize, just trying to find some sort of an angle, Elstone. Spike down A. That's just swab on the cross, and that's spiked down. That's info. Milky looking for this lurk. It could be good. Nobody's checking behind for the moment, but actually, play turns attention. My shoot. Recon out. Info gathered. Milky down, and not a chance. Nani Badgers are looking One for the spike plane because Rain are coming Long. in full force. Flawless. Pilsky, that's what you wanted for the rifle round, and Rain, they deliver it. Oh, they've 100% stabilized their economy there. Honey Badgers on the half buy, they wanted the perfect post plant scenario for ammo. They wanted to use Milky as that win condition, so they wanted to plant ammo so that he could have a better flank in through CT. But Suave gets shot straight through the smoke trying to cross the ammo, and that round just falls apart. Like, if they do get that plant ammo, and they have some, they have a pretty decent comp for stopping those retakes. Like Breach and Neon on this map is no joke retaking A. You really can't flood out CT if they use the util correctly. And that's where those late flanks can basically win you the round. Finally, they're starting to play around these trips a little bit more. Immediately kill that trip top B. Trailblazer into Garage gets a little bit more space here for Honey Badgers, but there are so many players here for Rain. Yeah, there is two outside of that garage window. There's two on the C site. Clarkson senses that there's a little bit more presence towards that side of the map. Looks to walk it up with Jelly D over towards B. Of course, you can see that Rain are ready to hold it. Of course, not going to be playing for the retake. They're just going to be playing for some shots as Honey Badgers try to enter this side. Slide forward here for Clarkson, getting all the way to the back. Toss the relay bolt. Tries to stun up some Rain players with that high outro. Not only does it tag up Cloxy in this back site, but it gives info for the rest of Rain to look to put the pressure on Exus. Entries in for two with Punda. Not far behind. Swab needs to play a game of aim labs, and well, unfortunately, wow. there's too many dots in front of his very eyes. Yeah, uh, uh, the way that Rain plays these defense rounds is just so beautiful. Like, those Viper ults and, and the way they were playing around the Viper ults uh, and the, the Viper wall and the, the retake stars and uh, the Astra stars last map on defense split was beautiful. But this this uh, map 
a lot of the time you see it be a bit more of a straightforward tactic of like posting up an op with a chair or a chamber on a deep info line and then playing like 3-1-1 and just having that player post up on the deep line and you're able to kind of play around that. Minowise is like rolling his camera into A lobby and just post on his camera and they stack towards Garage and B. And uh, that's just being able to allow the, the boys on rain on defense on so many of their maps to just heavily stack towards parts of the map and have so many numbers in in uh, like straight away ready for the retake, ready to fight as soon as the other team can test that part of the map because they've just got so much info on the extremities. You can see a lot of communication right now. Honey Badger's breaking it down between themselves. You saw Milky, Suave, and Jelly D all chiming in. Honey Badger's timeout gone. Rain, strong start, I have to say. It looked a little bit rough. Of course, the pistol, then the second expected conversions from Honey Badger's, but then it's four straight from Rain. We, of course, have a uh, another pause here. Technical pause from the side of the Honey Badger's. While we await it, of course, I'm awaiting to see how this game will sway, whether Rain keep up this strong hold that they're going for here. And I have to say, again, Exus has been so pivotal in this KO. He's flashing for himself. No, doesn't even need to flash for his teammates. He flashes himself out, gets a quick pick, and then the rest of Rain are there to back him up at a moment's notice. Got another half by for Honey Badgers. And we got to take a bit of a tech pause, having some issues of some kind that we're going to take a little bit longer to resolve. We can just talk about this game a little bit more. I think Brain obviously doing a lot better for themselves than they did against Bobo the other day. So uh, they're probably feeling quite good about how this defensive side is going for themselves. They built themselves a nice little CT side economy. They could start to really build up more and more cash over time. And if they can have a strong defensive half, you know, once you move on to attack on Haven, you're feeling pretty good because if you're confident on this map, and you move over with a, a round lead or at least like a close kind of half on defense, you should know how to work your attack side and 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 uh, be able to grind the game back from there, especially if you're starting off with a with a good start to the half. So we'll see how they go. Honey Patches have started to build themselves up some pretty nice alts. The tour is something to keep an eye on. But again, like when is Autumn going to be able to get some value out of that? without getting KO knifed, without getting flashed off lines, without getting put in annoying positions. I think uh, the the Breach Old and the Cosmic obviously going to help out, but I'm not sure how much you really want to invest into a round like this. Maybe you do want to invest a tour. You've seen many half buys with a tour thrown in there have uh, impact and, and be able to win rounds. So wouldn't mind seeing that invested. As for the other alts, I mean, look, maybe if you get a man advantage or something like that, but definitely want to be holding those over to the gun rounds because you got to win so many gun rounds back to back here for honey badgers to start to crack back into this half with how responsible rain's been with their money yeah, rain just keep a tight hold and run a tight ship we saw it on split once they got the economic lead they didn't let go of it they just continued to keep the ball rolling the there was they went for some interesting plays i have to say that viper's pit still in the back of my mind we'll have to of course, Pick minimizes brain about that one, especially in a VOD review. I'm sure he's got a lot to say and explain about that one. But of course, for the moment, Honey Badger's still in a technical pause, trying to sort some issues out. And it's it's a rough one, I have to say. Honey Badger's, of course, this is our lower bracket. The winner of this moves on to face order. The loser of this goes home in that fifth to sixth spot. And, you know, if you're a team like Honey Badger's who unfortunately had the fifth to sixth seeding going into this. And, well, they're lucky to be here, as you said, Pilski, at the start of this. You know, points weren't the greatest Honey Badgers in a few of these stages. They had moments of brilliance, but other than that, they're just lucky that a few of these teams disbanded, the points came together, and they were able to get themselves into the Oceanic Championship. For the side of Rain, well-deserved position to be in. Of course, third, fourth, the regionals uh, for stage two, and just have looked better and better as the days have gone on yeah for sure i think uh, it's kind of a team that's like better than the sum of its parts i would say like uh we have a lot of players who over multiple stages of vot you've said like okay this guy is very talented or this guy has very good aim or we've seen some very very big games from this particular player when i look at the players on rain i'd say like 
this player is decent. I've seen him have good games. This guy can play his role very well, like my shoe on the initiators. And, uh, you know, uh, you've seen El Snow have some good games here or there. There's no one who's outside of maybe Punda who's been like top stat on underperforming teams. When I say underperforming, I mean going back yeah. before last stage where, you know, they got a nice like little top four. But even teams like Legacy where they were kind of like, you know, top six teams or something like that weren't really expected to get like a top two placement or anything like that. Maybe they'd scrape a top four. He was always consistently putting in numbers despite having to flex around a lot of different roles. So I think Rain, it's been great to see the team t- come together. And I think Minimize is a player that, you know, I don't know what he's doing in his career, to be honest. Like mm. he's playing in like four different regions over the last little bit or something like that. But in terms of a pickup for an Oceanic team, there's very few players that you can pick up that are going to be more valuable to you than someone like Minimize. He's already got overseas experience. He's literally grinded like multiple stages of VOT on, on a lot of different teams. And he's someone that I've been able to work t- um, with at least a little bit. And um, I've been able to see firsthand, like he's very, very good IGL. Definitely understands the game at a, a lot better of a level than, than I do. And I think that most people in this region do. He's got a very, very un- unique perspective on things. And I think that's a massive, massive advantage to any team he's on. Yeah, Minimize always drawing as well, I have to say, from... Uh, he draws inspiration from the other regions. Heavy study sure. to the APAC region, of course. Looks to NA, to EU even. And what works for them and thinks, how can I implement this to my teams in the VOT? And as I said, Minimize, a, a statue to play at any team. Lucky to have this man in rain. Lucky pickup, I have to say. You know, it was an interesting one. Uh, when we saw the, the departure of Panic, a very experienced FPS player and uh, a kind of storied leader in some of his previous rosters, Panic, uh, a very sharp individual as well, but Minimize just adding that depth of play that maybe Rain needed just to push themselves that little bit further. I think Panic, yeah, I mean, I mean Panic is someone that I've, I've watched his career in multiple FPS titles as well, but um, I would say... I would say, like, he's not someone who's, like, going to have the same level of depth of knowledge as someone like Minimize on a game level, maybe on an experience level. Like, he's got a lot of lands under his belt and and playing multiple seasons of professional in uh, multiple different FPS games. So he's going to bring a a little bit more of, like, a a veteran experience or something like that. And honestly, he wouldn't be a terrible player to keep, to be honest, on Rain. Like, if Panic was still on this roster, I'd say, yeah, cool, because I think he's... I still think he's quite a good player and could definitely play in the top six, like, O's champs, VOT level for sure. But, yeah, um, he'd, he'd yeah, well. I mean, Rain's, a, Rain's been a great team to watch. Yeah, Rain has been a great team to watch. We've seen, uh, especially me and Kid Fox yesterday, of course, we spoke about Rain's rise to glory. We've seen through the different iterations, just swapping a play here or there, and just seeming to make it work. Of course, their agent selections have been swapped up to players have been playing different roles. We saw El Snow one day ages back down the line. He was playing the duelist here for this rain roster, but of course, swapping it up, putting Pundo to that role, and we will be going to a quick break. Pilski, while we sort out our tech issues, we'll be back in just a moment.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're live back into map number two of this best of three for the Oceanic Championships. It's Rain versus Honey Badgers here. Of course, we had a, a quick little technical pause. We had to sort some issues out. I believe it was on Autumn's end. We had a bit of an audio thing going on, but we're back into the game. Honey Badgers on an eco and Rain. They've got the Odin out on my shoe. Look at a spray it down. Already find each other here. Love to see it. Well aware of all the lineups and the timings that you can spam someone through that wood pillar and towards Gary. Always cool to see uh, the different kind of ways you can play a sofa on this map. You know, you can play it over towards that A side of the map for some info. You know, when you, once you get the economy for these Odins, that's where you can mix in the Gary. They smoke off the window, you get a dart up towards the top side and spam people through the wall. And be super, super strong. And my shoe, I mean, has been playing sofa for the longest time, so... Definitely aware of how much value he can get out of this kind of play. I have to say, my shoe, top three sober in the region easily. I find just has so much awareness on how to play his age, and you can see just for the moment, particular the warbangs trying to find a honey badger's player in a corner, but of course they're looking to walk. Up towards the A site with 30 seconds. You did see the Tour de Force popped by Autumn, left. but it can't find that oh, impact. Just down, get the hey. flash from Exos, slowing down the timer. Gravity well, Exos forced not to swing. And unfortunately, will get a star. He's able to get out. Dart attempted by Mai. He's still Can cautious of his flank, though. He's so. You have to be careful with that Odin because you don't want to give it away to Honey Merchants. Fragment and the spam. I'm loving watching Exus play from heaven on this KO. He seems to be getting a lot of value, and Autumn can't connect anything with the two up. Maybe fix his audio, but uh, maybe might uh, need another tech pause for the, uh, the two up. Seems to be having some issues connecting those shots. Rain, though, up 5 2 now. Five players alive. They're in pole position here. Not looking like they're running into any issues. On defensive side Haven, but look, that was just a half buy for Honey Badgers. This is a team that's been together for quite a while that at times has looked competitive, has pushed some of the top teams in the region. This is where we need to see, even if they had a lackluster split, that can be a map that maybe they weren't really super ready for in the veto. This is where if they're a team with the, the chemistry that they've had and uh, they're playing at the form that we've seen them in previous stages of fought, this is where they need to grind this... Uh, this game back starts with their map pick. They know they got to start on that attacking side. Both teams is kind of trepidatious over towards a lobby side. Not sure if this is a dead round or not. Might be a dead round, honestly. The way that both of these teams are playing. Yeah, I'm a little bit wondering. We'll probably be seeing yeah, another technical pause as we uh, await, hopefully, Autumn to fix the issues here, but. I have to say rain, of course, a rain round is always a good round to see. Honey Badgers looking to fix everything that they can attack. Nickel pause coming through, as you see. Love a little graphic popping up in front of you to let you know what's going on. Because, of course, Honey Badgers, they also need to work out what's going on right now. It's not a lot going right. Of course, rain have just seemed to find their, find their marks, find their kryptonite, stopping Honey Badgers dead to right and... As you said, Pilski, Honey Badgers, former three here, Suave, Jelly D, and Milky, they've been around this stage. They've been around Oceanic Champs. We saw them last year contend with some of the top teams, and it's been a rough year, I have to say, for Honey Badgers, trying to regather themselves, trying to refind the magic that brought them so deep in Oceanic Champs last year. Mm. Yeah, I feel like mm, what they did very, very well when they were finding success was I felt like the the game plan, the chemistry, it felt like they had a really nice tactical approach. They they played off of each other very well. Um, I'm not sure if I see that same level of cohesion from this team. Don't know what the amount of practice they've been putting in since then has been. You know, sometimes teams have these great runs where the scrims are really good, where they're pracking a lot, where their motivation is really high, and things are clicking. And they can have very, very good runs, but... We've seen it in domestic competition for the longest time. I've I've covered so many domestic FPS competitions over like the last five or six years. These teams come and go. It's an ebb and a flow kind of a thing. 
And um, the teams that really show themselves to be like top teams in the region are the teams that can not just have this one or two periods where things are going well, where they have results, but still string results together over a, a long, long period of time. And if Honey Badgers go out um, in this series, I think that would kind of be them maybe dropping below the level that they and the expectation they set for themselves, perhaps. It's all about remaining consistency here. My shoe consistency. Great Hunter's Fury finding Swab all the way back of spawn they need to pick that spike up as they look to take the sea site milky is going to be the one to entry in of course cosmic divide gives them great spacing to just walk on in from sea long for free you cover garage you cover the spawn peak two and rain they are going to teleport also uses it for the info and peeking on the other side of the wall now are a few of these honey badges players but the player hasn't gone down yet and rain they're already here ready to retake the five members yeah i mean the drone you got the dart as well, KO knife. You've got that raise ult to retake. Maybe a bit of an awkward retake angle through long, but forget about it. Maybe Autumn isn't going to let you go for that retake. He's just oh. tapping heads. Seems like the tech issue is well and truly under control at this point. And now a three on two post plant. It's a default plant, so maybe not the best kind of plant position for that long position, but Autumn's already on the wraparound through Garage. Seems to have everything under control. Under control, the spray. El Snow finds Autumn, but Jelly D able to keep that round on lock. Honey Badgers find themselves a third, finally, after such a struggle it has been to start this game of Haven off for them. Able to breathe some sighs of relief. And that was a huge round from Autumn. You have to say, played with tech issues, but able to shake it off and reset the mental back into this game here. Rain, of course, still plenty of cash to be invested in. You can see the Odin yet again. You see 4k even after the buy rain. They've got so much room to work with. Honey Badgers, though, starting to make some space. They've got a few ultimates online, too. Yeah, we'd love to see the combo of the ults in a round like this. Maybe uh, chuck the Seekers into a uh, Breach ult, something like that. Really changing up the positions now, though. Obviously, got Minimize moving his way over towards that seat site, changing up their setups every single time. Got the cam as well as the trip gear for my shoe to play off of, but he gets a lot of spam damage Standing before ahead. we even make it to that point. Dart right up here. towards the top side of Gary for him at least. He's just going to continue spamming away as Honey Badgers. Right they pressured Garage a little bit, maybe sizing up a B site exit if they can, and that's where Elso in the back of the site will probably have to get some work done. I've got your trail. You can see prime position. Seekers come out. Honey Badgers looking to approach this site. Gravity Wells great, stops the Odin spam from coming through for Marty and the walk is into the site. Off your feet, the rolling thunder is tossed in. Elsno is checked in that back corner. My shoe. Able to find one with the Odin Milky trying to lurk up through garage window, but Rain they're having none of it. Minimize able to find a quick suit. Jelly D drops and honey badges. The hopes dash to B, they go to C. Grey little shock dart stops the peak from coming through and Last now looking to approach down. out the spawn site, put to finding one. Suave able to trade him back in quick succession. Tagged up and reconned up at the moment. Pistol at range for Exus to go up on top of logs to find the shot head. And Rain finds six. Perfect retake there. Honey badges. You felt like they always could have just taken B there. Mm, yeah, perhaps they could have. I think it was going to be quite hard with the flood, though. Like, it's kind of underrated how how difficult it is to defend some of those floods. They don't really have that clean comp for the B plants either. Like, back when the B plants used to be super, super strong, you'd love the, the omen going in, planting, TPing out, maybe the jet dashing out. You don't really ever see the chamber, like, TP out off the plant, so... It's quite hard to stick with this comp in towards that B site plant and post plant. Seems like a bit of a quicker A play this time around from Honey Badgers taking a lot of control. They are on the half by and Rain again. They've had a great time retaking this A site and with the gun advantage, I don't see seem to see whoa, whoa, whoa. that they're going to need to hold it. But that's where, I mean, Exus diving through the smoke Down might be a. a bit of a mistake if they give up an additional rifle. Giving up one, shot dart. To stall the plant for the moment and see the honey badgers not afraid to wait it out minimize up in heaven two plays towards the door milky it's gonna be on the long roadside over here we could catch everybody off guard here for rain but not if they're making their way into the site now odin spam down hell raining down hell is 
side of Rain. Honey Badger's two left. Here, Milky on that flank, we said, could be vital. Jelly D caught towards Sua. And there it is, Jelly D frenzy. Great shots at the Odin Warbang. And Rain, textbook round from them on the read. Take nothing Honey Badgers can do. You see, this composition, Pilski, not the greatest at post plants either. And it's starting to show a little bit. I mean, they're not getting the ammo plant is the issue. Like, they're planting default and then go for those flank plays. Like, that was just a half buy, but earlier they wanted to go for it as well. If they could stick that ammo plant, then flanks through spawn, flanks through B become a lot stronger because you can actually play that post plant in through CT on the on the flank through. But if you can't hold sight think... and you plant default, um, the other team just floods and then your flank kind of sucks because they can just stick the defuse and there's not really a whole lot you can do about it. Here's the gun round though for Honey Badgers with the two up. Change up from Rain. They're going to take some mid control, pushing down Excess and Punda. But again, Honey Badgers seeming very interesting. This A side. Look at all of these trips here for Minimize. This is great. We'll set up the Minimize. has got a little bit of a different one that we're used to seeing from some of these ch ciphers here in the Oceanic region. But you can see the flanks coming in quick. Punda has taken control of a lobby taken out though by Milky. And well, Honey Badgers are forced out of the A site, but they're still finding all these picks and all of a sudden, it's just two players of rain getting over aggressive. Make it everybody here. Else, no falls. They go to the sea site and downrange with that Odin. Not the best spot to be in. These honey badges pick themselves up. Round before the switch. Yeah, I think rain have gotten a bit carried away there. Like they were in a pretty nice position. They had that double flank, but trying to force things too hard not being happy with the position that they're in. Sometimes when you feel like you're, you're winning the game really hard, you can kind of overplay your hand a little bit. And I feel like that round was a little bit of a case of that. Go, go, go. Either way though, Rain playing for their eight now. You've got that Neon ult. I haven't seen Cloxy pop this Neon ult once in two maps. So surely it's got to be now. <laughs> it feels now or never. This is the last round of the half and yeah, we haven't seen that Neon ult be used here by Gloxy yet. He showed that he wanted to play this character as a quick lock-in in the agent selection both times here. And here. you can see, when will it start to be used? Flashed up, Gloxy able to dash away, slide to safety with Milky, but the paranoia comes through. Great flash, Exus flashes himself too, and all of a sudden, Honey Badgers, they're just picking apart these players. Punda tries to get in the mix, but Honey Badger's eight for a quick succession rain. This is a different look than we saw from them in the yep. last few rounds. Very dominant and very cohesion based, but Honey Badger's cohesion towards a site two players to retake. Like I said, I feel like Rain, they're kind of getting carried away these last couple of rounds. They're trying to force fights much more than they were doing when they had success. Trying to change up their play style a lot, and Honey Badger's are showing us that when you feed them picks, they're able to punish, and they've got Switching the comp side. for it as well. Like Breach, Astra, Neon, if you try to force those fights up against those agents, you see the, exactly the kind of issues you're running into. You're trying to fight Sewer into Astra stun, Astra suck, you're getting Neon stunned, you're getting Breach fault lined. Like, you really can't force fights into this comp if they're able to use the utility correctly, and it feels like Honey Badgers, as well as kind of the default that they were running and the A control that they were running, when uh, Rain was trying to contest them, they were able to shut it down. When Rain was playing a little bit more passive, they were playing from heaven. They were playing a bit more retakey. They were winning those rounds pretty consistently. So maybe Rain giving Honey Badgers a little bit more room to work with than they might have anticipated. See how Autumn goes at getting a pick down C long. Okay, we've seen a little bit more from Autumn out of the chamber this game. Didn't get to see all too much of it on split. Now see. But Rain, Pistol, means a different story. Straight up through C, they go. Elsto on this aggressive play. Able to buy Milky for free. Cloxy finding excess on the lurk. And the Minimize is in a great position too if he kept his pistol out. No, it's the knife. Autumn coming in from this flank line. Headhunter shots being spammed. That's not the way you want to take the fights with that gun. Punda, my shoe, able to find two on this flank. But it's still Jelly D caught in the smoke as Elsto and... Uncharacter like mistakes rain. Yeah. All just quickly get converted and a shout out to Crash catching all those kills in quick succession. This man is on it tonight. 
That's Honey Badge just picking up the pistol yet again. Yeah, it feels like Rain, those last two gun rounds and that pistol as well, feels like they're throwing away rounds that are very, very winnable. The Obviously, Minimize, uh, he's a player that I've seen get lost in his own world many, many times. That's a beautiful example of it, just knife out, walking into a wall, thinking about the macro of the round and how he's going to play in that post plan. He's thinking about his camera, how he's going to come up through garage or like B-Link yeah. on a late flank, not even thinking yeah. about anything on his screen. But even some of the other duels that Rainbow taking a little bit too split up in that round. They need to go back to the, the cohesion that you saw on split. Feels like there's a lack of focus right now and they've allowed Honey Badgers back into the game and you can't afford to do that. Like Honey Badgers is a very, very strong team in fought. If they get themselves rolling, they get the confidence. It's going to get a whole lot harder to beat them. Swab, down, mid. Bulldog, it's just an eco. Rain. I don't want to get this one done as soon as possible. See a tight scoreline. Will Honey Badgers? Because Punda down to extremely low points of HP. Looking for a wall bank. Cussed up by the Trailblazer for Milky to find it. Another kill to his board. And confidence starting to flow through this Honey Badgers Ross as you see. Rain now to a buy in. This third round of the second half. More than important here. Rain, as we've seen, they need to get this one flawlessly for the side of Honey Badgers. If they're able to pick this one up, steal some guns away, then we can look to see Honey Badgers' lead start to surmount. Yeah, I'm keen to see how Rain approaches this attacking side. They definitely have a whole lot less stopping power than the other team. You know, you'd look at uh, things like Astra, Neon, you know, Breach. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You go into a lobby, you're going to get disrupted. You are going to have to play a whole lot of a slower style, a more drawn out default where you're taking your time moving through the map. Because if Honey Badgers wants to say, no, you can't take map control here, they're, they're going to be able to do that. Seems like Rain copped a fair bit of that util early on. They used the, uh, the sofa dart, they used the boom bot. They try to limit the info that Honey Badgers has on that deep A long line on sewer line. And they start walking back towards that sea side of the map. And Milky has really got to hold on here for some rotates. Yeah, and well, it's, it's a rough position to be in right now. Up on top of Plateso, when that owl drone will scout out where Milky's playing from Autumn. Paranoid great up, fault line. One. Great, great fault line there. Answered back. And well, Rain is still able to walk, find the first pick on Autumn out in the open. And a knife there on top of Wanda, able to hit the shots here towards Garage because he's just squatting them up for free. Tree back for Clocksy, and that's what Honey Badgers need right now. It's a beautiful pick for Clocksy. The rotation left. now over towards this A site for 30 seconds. Yeah, Rain calling the audible. Reading the amount of players that are on that C site and knowing that on a map like Haven, you can definitely have a faster rotation time than the defending team who has to definitely defend a whole lot of those lanes. They can't just always knife out and especially with the man disadvantage, just rotate into that A site. Man disadvantage, retake, weapon disadvantage here. And the KO knife to boot means that they really can't utilize any utility the way that they wanted to. So very, very difficult prospect here for Honey Badgers. If they could just take one or two guns from this situation, they're going to be happy with that. Concussion comes out the fault line yet again. Clocks, he slides through, but it's Exus to just hold down mouse one cover his teammate perfectly. Two low HP bars, but Rain, they get it done, not flawless, and, well, losing a few guns. Honey Badgers now bringing guns to the table, and, and I said that round was important. It was important for Rain to pick that one up in flawless succession. Of course, didn't. Now it's expensive going into this one, trying to keep their economy stable. And, well, for the side of Honey Badgers, they claim this tied scoreline yet again, and they put Rain onto that kind of eco. Only a few players can really force the buy. Yeah. They did a good job Flash taking ready. two guns. They got rid of the armor as well. That's always money reinvested that you'd love to see on those bonus rounds. Flash over the top of middle. Great camp, spots out Autumn, forces that TP away and with the dart to front side of B here, looks like a bit of a set play, gonna Spike be trying down, to mid. be attempted by Rain, but Swab is all over that. Great crosshair placement, great positioning. He's gonna shut this Oof. round down by himself. He's gonna rip his ult, no plant for Punda. And uh, that round's over before it really One got started. Remaining. Yeah, Punda stuck in the corner. Beautiful after shock, Swab. 
textbook university play on the breach. And I have to say, and as you said, Pilski, taking those fights so perfectly, angles perfectly cleared and perfectly held, and tactical timeout here. Coach Mythica calling to rain. What went wrong? What's going on? Why are we dropping these rounds? We shouldn't be rain. They've been in this situation before. We saw it on Fracture when, of course, a timeout's called. They mean business. And for the side of Honey Badgers, they mean business now going into the second stage of the second map and starting to look like the Honey Badgers we expected to see going into this series. Yeah, it feels like a lack of focus from Rain right now. And uh, I don't know. I don't know how much I like their comp on this map overall, but particularly like attacking side. Like I said, they're going to have to be very like astute at how they approach this attack side default. Going to have to really be put through their motions in terms of just baiting out utility, avoiding those like little traps of the fault line and, and Astra. You've got to play around that util and set yourself up well for some of those site plays. The lurks wouldn't do too badly for them either. Obviously, having that cipher in there can definitely give you some nice ability to just apply guaranteed pressure. Rolling yeah. in, just chucking yourself down a, down a camera, forcing the other team to either shoot it or if they're not there, you know that you can get yourself a little bit of space. There's that set play down C long there for Honey Badgers. Ooh. And a little bit of a, a backstab there with the Cloxy ultimate. We finally get to see it for the first time, it feels, in this series. Cloxy get to expend that ultimate and, well... We're gonna get the flank on to minimize the spike. Will be played for rain. They have control of the site, but they're still getting flanked by Cloxy. Who's quick up through long. Look at those feet move. This man is not stopping. Running a train through rain right now. You can see Exa still alive and still kicking. Gun in hand of Honey Badgers and fingers on the trigger. They find the shots. Cloxy, the great three with the eco, just cleaning it up. Four honey badges in that ninth. I'm just happy he finally used his ult, dude. Like, it's been a long time coming. I feel like I've barely seen him use it all this series, so just mixing it in there. Even if it just gives you, like, you know, even if you just use anti eco, I don't even care, man. Just use the anti eco, don't buy a gun, and then, like, just try to farm up anti eco, and, and then you have a slight incremental economy advantage, if anything, rather than just sitting on it for the whole game. I would be happier with. So, look, Honey Badger's economy in a great spot. They've got themselves the round lead here. But here's Rain. They've got that showstopper. They've got that KO ult. And it's looking like a bit of a set play towards C. And that's the with Autumn. High angle being taken. Now comes out. Autumn flick down, but missed shot. And uh, an opportunity given a Rain. And Nexus is going to find it straight entries to the site looking to play it all the way in at this back corner for yeah. C long minimize a great camera here lower mid and knows that nobody is coming that direction for the moment trailblazers through garages honey badgers look to retake with three players a spawn and you can see that how far back rain are playing this could be doable if they're able to find these first few picks yeah well, snow playing inside his own smoke trying to buy time Cloxy's red minimize like a book there Stopping that late Gary flank from coming on in. Honey Badger's doing a great job of starting to retake this, but the issue really being that the Hunter's Fury and the Showstopper are still very much alive here. And as long as that's the case, this uh, this DP is going to be a big, big issue. Not even needed the Hunter's Fury at the end of the day. The double swing gets it done for Rain, and that's going to be nine apiece. The first of a couple of gun rounds they're really going to need to start to crack back into this half because they've got to break down that economy for Honey Badger's. Couple of things there. I mean, again, Autumn, you don't see him uh, in some of his previous teams, you don't see him miss those opening picks very often. It hasn't really felt like he's been on today. Maybe tech issues contributing to that, very likely. And uh, the other thing is that I've seen it a couple times from Rain. I'm really liking the small details they're focusing on, things like plant positioning. I've seen that both maps where they're making sure they're awesome. maximizing their chances to take the round. You know, they get overzealous, but still the spike in a great spot for the rest of the team if one player were to fall. You can see 9 to 9 is the scoreline. Rain, a convincing first map out of them in this series against the Honey Badgers split. 
was going like the wind. We went straight to Haven and well, this one's a little bit of an even, even footing. Right now, I've back Psyxus has just been absolutely pivotal on this KO no and the info run. and the flashes. Hunter's Fury, Paranoia come out here and the site looks to be entered in. Cloxy, not a chance. Wow. He gets out Garage without being checked. Exactly. L Snow also to hold Milky to that same testament. Up bounce, the logs flashes pop perfectly. Exus, of course, nobody there to meet the flash this time around. Ray yes. in the just another round where it feels like Autumn can't get involved at all. Just shut out of the round. Rain, I mean, I've been super impressed with Exus entering on KO. Like, he's just running up first, he's entering in, and he's just finding the opening kill almost every time. Absolutely. Explosive entries from Exus. That's what you want if you're Rain right now. They were down, but they're definitely not out in this one. Honey Badges, of course, going to be dropping this one. Rain 10. And gets scary, scary close. 12 the magic number, match in series point. Rain would find just two more. 13 to close it and 2 0 honey badges send the packing here in the lower bracket. This is where teams are made of greatness, Pilski. This is where you need to dig deep. The morale may be down. The, these players are definitely not out of this one. It's 10-9 here. They still have a buy. They still have Milky with that Cosmic Divide. They could look to shut it down with some Astro Utility. They could look to go for an aggressive play. Send a Fault Line maybe through that A Suet. Send Cloxy through that Suet position. Get some early picks maybe. Do something creative, Honey Badges. Because Rain, they've found their footing back into this one. Might be one of the last chances here for Honey Badgers if they don't start to convert. They're going to be running out of cash and Autumn opening pick. That's a little bit more like it from this man. What we're used to seeing from him. Playing a little bit more fearless as well. Not just instant TPing up towards A Heaven. He takes that first pick. He cops the drone tag and still sticks around without ripping the TP straight away. Milky in the meanwhile. Close position on this Spectre. See if he can get some value out of that. He instantly dinks El Snow and he's trying to get out of dodge. Let's see if his teammates are going to be able to capitalize on his very, very cooked position here. Maybe oh not needed. He just gets my. away with absolute murder, Tony. There's no way he should be allowed to get that. And there you go. That's exactly what I was talking about. Jelly D out. Gary doubles up for himself. And that's a huge position. Milky getting away with the absolute most, that spike dropped out in the open and middle. Honey Badger's looking to converge on Minimizer's position. I have retrieved Autumn, the spike. Right side of B. Player looking to left. come into the window. That's Clarksy Jelly D holding the back of C. They've got eyes on Minimize and because he's able to walk up. He's able to cross time. He almost favors. Jelly D there, but now he needs to deal with clocks. He minimize reads it perfectly, expects it. Now knows he can stick the plant. Left. Jelly D Spike. needs to come out for a wide swing. Minimize needs to be cautious. Players sneaking up through garage. He's trading his positions. He's walking it up. He's taking different spots. And Honey Badger's looking to give him 1v1s right now. Jelly D still thinks he's default, but Autumn definitely knows he isn't. Back shot to the back of sight and Honey Badgers, they find themselves 10 rain. A valiant effort from Minimize, I had to say. Almost able to pick it up and find rain 11, but a 10 all score line. And Honey Badgers are still here to play. That cash looking to be dwindled out. One final buy here, potentially, for both these teams. You can see that money is rough here for Honey Badgers, though. Yeah, both of them. This is a massive swing round, right? Whoever drops this one going to be a little bit worse for wear in terms of the economy. This is where you really need to see um, these ults being utilized well by Honey Badgers, like the Breach ult. Uh, Swap's been great with his Breach util at just fault lining. Not only the initial, like, just denying map control, denying that smooth default that the other team wants to go for on attack, but even exactly this fault lining when the other team wants to try to exec the site just disrupting them before they can get into those show points. And that's just enough space for Autumn to come straight down middle. Bloxy from Garage as well. This is just beautiful from Honey Badgers. It's absolutely insane. Minimize. Able to find Milky Cage down at C. They still need to stop Cloxy in his tracks. He's just walking it up and taking the fights as they come and taking the kills as they come. Minimize long range down scope. 
Clocks he taken. Spikes in the hands, though, still here for Honey Badgers. And two players at top of it converged. You can see Jelly D as well in Garage looking to walk. I think though is awesome and Minimize trying to take a different approach to that one. Honey Badgers find themselves 11 for Rain. Their economy is in shambles. They might look to force out a buy. They're thinking about it. Else note has forced that vandal the rest of them can't really afford to buy anything though yeah i think this is a half buy round if anything maybe a bit of a cooked full bite honey badgers here starting to build up really? they want to try to secure themselves enough economy for the rest of the game which is why i absolutely love this from Floxy. like i said just buy a sheriff and rip your ult why not? Like, what's the what's the downside? You're gonna be able to min-max your economy, make sure that you're buying the rest of this half. Awkward position for Panda, but he's actually the bait. Jelly D going down puts a lot of pressure on Autumn over Solo on this CT position with the Operator, but he stands the test. Able to find that pick on the player coming in oh. on the retake, and as that spike goes down, a lobby control has been lost. A lobby control loss. Honey Badgers look to walk it up. Rain have the spike down, but they need to get themselves in better positioning right now because there's two players coming along. There's a player now to wrap the window. Perfect flash from Exus, though. That's what Rain need. They need to rely on Exus. He's been so key in so many of these rounds. Also walking it up, taking away the operator from Autumn. That's 11-11 tied scoreline here. Rain, it's late for a few of these plays. Three out of the five from New Zealand and definitely playing late Dude, into the night not just doing it. not just the three out of five new zealand they've actually got the nightmare team i used to have to deal with this in like when i was trying to play counter-strike if you've got someone from wa and someone from nz oh. on the same team imagine trying to schedule scrims dude one guy says it's too late one guy says it's too early and uh yeah look it's not fun at least minimize is a big nerd though so he'll hop on at like 1 p.m for scrims and prac we all know that mm. It's interesting to see how many players, of course, come together from different backgrounds and different parts of Australia <laughs> to bring it out. Elsto picking, picking up the op from that last round and put it straight to work. Entry pick towards him to the back of C site and minimize. He's just lurking front of B. He can peek through the gap in the smoke. He could look to peek and then just get away. Scott free Jelly D. He's cautious of it, though. Rain, they get that entry pick, but they slow it down. They know that they can't afford to overstep anyone. Yeah. Even just cutting sound in these man advantage scenarios forces the CT rotations to naturally just be a bit more spread. They, especially on a map like Haven, like you've got to hold so many lanes on this map. So even just cutting sound for 30 seconds gives them a position where the C site's open. That bird, though, does reveal Minimize's position on the Lurk, though, and he's getting isolated in towards middle. That's a nice little maneuver from Honey Badgers to even up the numbers. That's a great call for Milky. Now it's just going to wait so patiently. Cosmic Divide. This actually forces Rain to walk back into the site after playing a far back angle. Milky on this flank to find my shoe. And this is looking rough now for Rain. They have to retake the site from both different angles. Milky so prevalent on this lurk and it will wow. be a spray down jelly d in perfect precision honey badges with that cosmic divide make it work match 12 point. match point here on haven honey badges could look to take us to a third it's a big big round for milky both the the timing on the the pushes there as well as the astro util was just so so on point to set honey badges up for success on that retake Man disadvantage scenario, not a single player on that C site. And uh, they put that round together convincingly. That did not look close on that uh, 4v5 retake. Autumn now juggling himself a Vandal and an op over towards uh, A long here. So he's going to have multiple guns to try to contest. There's the fault line and the trailblazer trying to deny entry in towards A lobby for rain. You have to take a little bit longer trying to take that part of the map. But all of that util at least gives Autumn a potential chance to get a line, but that's where all the util comes in. Cage, dark cover, followed up by the KO knife. There is not a single opportunity for him to try to get an angle there, but maybe repositioning in towards Ooh. short. No, again, Elsto's been able to find first pick onto Autumn two rounds in a row now. That's massive. 
Yeah, it's it's not every day you see a Vandal outdoor the op Jelly D. Able to trade it back. That's Exus and the spike down. And that's info over to Honey Badgers that they might be looking to hold a different side of the map. Two players still at A1, back at B. They've given up C completely. Rain uh, looking for this bead, saying back. Sight Dart doesn't actually tag up Cloxy. They're not going to expect him towards his gong position. Milky takes out Minimize, and they're not going to expect. Cloxy comes to pounce. Relay Bolt and the high gear. Cloxy finds mine. Ponda, what can you do? It's a quick two back from him. And there's two more players to deal with. Milky on this flank. Ponda's got no idea. The sound cue given over the footstep. Milky takes it 13 to 11. Rain will fall in this second map, and we go all the way to the third. Honey Badgers making Rain work for it. Yeah, I think that lack of focus, I mean, with how close of a map that was, those couple of rounds being let slip by Rain could have made all the difference, but that would be, I feel, an, like an oversimplification. I think Honey Badgers, uh, those last two rounds, four on five and they convert both of them and they make it look clean so you're just seeing that chemistry of the core of their team their ability to work together and play off of each other's util absolutely beautifully to keep them going in this series so look now moving on to a, a ascent let's see if they can try to keep themselves alive in this lower bracket and of course uh, ascent's going to be an interesting one we'll cut to a break though while we set all up for our third and final map of the second series of the night and Go, don't go anywhere. Don't touch that browser. We'll be back very, very shortly.
Welcome back to the Valorant Oceana Tour, Oceanic Championship here. Of course, I'm Tutat Tony, joined by me this evening, Pilski. It's been a long night. It's been a, a fun one, to say the least. We've seen some crazy stuff, and we're going all three maps yet again for our second series. A very close one there on Haven, but Honey Badger's just able to inch out Rain, who looked like they're on the cusp of closing it, but just dropped too many unfortunate picks and went for some crazy plays that just didn't quite work out. The Vito's, of course, in front of you to get a refresher of what happened. Rain, they picked up, split convincingly. Honey Badgers, a little bit less convincingly, did pick up Haven there. Of course, we go to Ascent now, the final map. And it's hard to tell how this game's going to go because, of course, we haven't seen Rain play Ascent in quite a while. We haven't seen Honey Badgers on Ascent in quite a while. And, of course, both these teams rocking different lineups than they did previously. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I think that's a pretty fair assessment. I think the agent pool will probably be different for both of these teams as well. It goes without saying, you know, changing up their rosters, whether it's their Sentinel player or changing IGL and changing all the overall approach. So uh, Ascent is a massive, massive question mark. I think Honey Badger's playing very, very well, um, playing off of each other a lot better than what we saw off of Split is a, a promising sign for, for what uh, we saw on Haven. But at the same time, I feel like Rain kind of let that map pick go by the wayside as well. It was such a close game. And there were so many moments where I felt like Rain, after such a great start in the first half, maybe a lack of focus, kind of let it get away from them. And also, I mean, two back-to-back -back gun rounds. You're going to be kicking yourself if your Omen picks the uh, other team's chamber uh, both of the last two rounds and you can't close the five on fours. And, well, Honey Badge is an interesting thing to note. They want both of the pistol rounds. They're starting to pick up more pistols against Rain and really start to snowball some early leads from there. Of course, we saw Honey Badges just really pick up the pace in that second uh, half. Of course, we saw some aggressive plays. Uh, I have to say, though, interestingly enough, Autumn getting shut down so many rounds by XR. So we want to look at that as a, a key point to note here for our final map whether we see the chamber again from Autumn or maybe he swaps it up. Yeah, uh, I mean, look, I, I don't know what... I think he, he definitely could swap it up because I think, like, we talk about Ascent, you know, going back to that Catgirls lineup, he was actually mixing in the Cypher for them instead of chamber. He was kind of flexing between the two, so it's definitely something that's well within his arsenal. Uh, but you see him into the big chamber, so... Definitely haven't seen the ceiling from Autumn tonight. That goes without saying. He's a player where when he's been on in the past, you know, he's played on literally the top team in the country. And when he's been on in the past, he can he can definitely command the server quite nicely. So there's definitely some more work to be done there. No Neon this time from Cloxy. Looking like it's going to be a raise pick. Uh, Jelly D on the KO. As for Rain, big question mark as to what we're going to be seeing. I'm very, very keen. Looking like it's going to be, I mean, Exus on the KO is a no-brainer. Marshu on either a Sova or a Fade is not surprising. Although, it'd be quite mm. interesting to see him flex into the controller role a little bit more. Seems like Minimize is just a Sentinel player for this team. So, uh, fair enough there. Um, that's, that's kind of an interesting thing in and of itself. Because I feel like Minimize was at his best playing the kind of agents that Exus plays or the kind of style that Exus plays. He loves his flash agents. He's loved the uh, the sky in the past and had a lot of big performances on that. But at the same time, he's a man who could play a lot of different roles. So look, end of the day, um, I'm really keen to see how this Ascent game goes. And exactly like you said, it's a massive, massive question mark. Exactly a massive question mark. We're not a, uh, not a not a thing to doubt, of course, the 49-inch Samsung Odyssey and Neon G9 features 100 uh, curvature, of course, inspired by the human eye, 32 by 9 screen ratio. Samsung's core sync lighting to deliver exceptional immersion here, and Pilski, we're going to see some exceptional immersion here, hopefully, for both these teams. I don't want to see some crazy plays anymore. I want to see some stock standard stuff. No over-peaking. But both teams rocking the fade, interestingly enough, of course, we've seen that agent kind of come into the meta a little bit more, and we've seen a lot of these Sova players really pick it up, and of course, it's had varying levels of su success for a few of these Oceanic teams. Of course, we've seen it overseas in a few of these other kind of ECTs, and it it's, it's shown a lot of promise, I have to say, as an agent. I mean, it's got a great kit. I think uh, it's going to get, I think it's going to get yeah. nerfed at some point. I think, oh, Wasted Bullet, maybe, at the start there. Mm. Not ideal, but look, not going to be the end of the world. 
Oh, he's got armor as well, so that actually is kind of a big deal. He only has three bullets now on the headhunter. Nade off the back of the turret contact. This is the thing that makes Fate so strong. The prowlers, man. Two prowlers. That's kind of crazy. So much map control you can get on the attacking side. But look, after pressuring being main, after marching up mid a little bit, it's actually going to be an A split here for Honey Badgers. Yeah, I like that call. Showing so much pressure to one side of the map, drawing an early road. Sadex us. Forced to not really see all too much with the great smoke set up by Honey Badgers. They can cross themselves into the site. A few low HP bars. Autumn, only three bullets in his head. Hunter, well, we looking to put down some rendezvous and... Well, Honey Badgers, they have the site, but at what cost? The HP bars are low and... Might they be throwing that haunt over the top of the site, trying to get info, but you can see that Honey Badgers know how to play against the speed. They don't have to show themselves to too many angles. Now dropping in to the site, trying wow. to retake it, and Rain are just clean swept, almost flawless. Minimize the only one to get a pick there on the retake. Honey Badgers are commanding control and holding down that post point so well. 100%. Kind of destroyed them in on that retake. And it felt like Honey Badgers, it's felt a little disorganized or like the pieces weren't quite coming together from time to time. That's what I was saying, why I was saying that Haven showed me a lot of promise. It felt like there was a bit more chemistry. They were playing off of each other very well. Um, so, I mean, looking at how they handled that round, they looked very organized. I loved, like you said, the pressure on one side of the map and then moving back into the, the A split. And then that post plant looked like they were very well organized. They were all over that, avoided the fade detail perfectly, like you mentioned, and then uh, just great crossfires. You can see. Nexus. Uh oh. Dodging out that fragment, this is great. He just needs to play patient. Sit and wait. For honey badgers to misstep, but you can see again showing presence to main. Don't even need the paranoia. Exus comes stepping out with the classic. But of course, showing presence to A main, but that's not where honey badgers are going. They're looking to split it once again, but this time maybe towards B. Gonna be up through main, and there is gonna be two plays stacked to the back of that B site here for the side of range. They both got these shotguns as well, which is gonna be so dangerous for honey badgers when they clear back site gonna potentially be losing those players oh no nightmare no connection on those shotgun shots which uh i'm sure for anyone who saw uh the the order game against boom overseas you're probably quite happy to not see uh, a shorty dismantle around like that mm. and then he gun can do anything aries for order take out l snow and honey badges Quick second there, of course, only losing one player yet again. That's really, really good for their economy. Starting to ramp up early on against Rain, who are they able to buy? And well, if they were to lose this, Honey Badgers could swell this into a world of hurt. It's up to Rain to get it done. My shoot, gonna be on the Odin yet again because you can use that Fade Haunt blank. There, a pseudo recon. Gonna be using it for the info. Warbank pressure always ever prevalent with a player like my shoe in the server. Rain shields over the top. Contesting that A main take. If anyone jumps up in that smoke, they would have taken a whole lot of damage going over the top like that. And more contest on A main, but this is where the prowlers get so much work done. Boombot. Rain definitely don't want to let that control go by the wayside, at least trying to force out more util before they do so and the re-aggression from Panda really trying to force the issue the fragment coming out to clear that main side and the re-dive in from Rain they still get the opening pick after all of that util from Honey Badgers utilized they still lose that man advantage it's unfortunate I have to say that's the fade gone here for the side of Honey Badgers and they're gonna have to rotate themselves out of that A main position don't want to take too many more aggressive fights towards that spot, and you can see walking up the short, clearing every single angle possible. Again, Exus has been sitting in this close corner and will be red at this time. Honey Badger's Cloxy takes that Exus. That's gun end position. This is a great re Milky able to read the teleport to the top of heaven for El Snow and Auden on this low with the Aries. Does it better down range? against the Odin, and all of a sudden, Honey Badgers, we thought they were going to A, never mind, Uno reverse, they're going to B. Dude, Honey Badgers in these 4 on 5s have been insane. 
like the, the last two rounds of Haven and now that round just complete composure they're even on the bonus and they are just all over this autumn starting to fire up as well on that lurk over through B main a whole lot of pressure being put on Panda right now and look don't want to be feeding him easy picks this is a player that's been topping the stats of the bot stages multiple seasons in a row for a reason Definitely going to take a few players down with him, make this a bit more of an expensive round for Honey Badgers, but they're going to wipe all their tears away with the money that they're going to be rolling with because they just won themselves their bonus. Yeah, Honey Badgers pick up bonus 3-0 start the first time we get to see it this evening. And it's going to be Honey Badgers in the third map to start this one off. And that's a little secondary observing angle there. Shout out to Temporal doing some great work there on the secondary orbs and crash as well on the main always great to see some different nooks and crannies that you don't get to see all the time on these lovely designed maps here but of course pilski we focus back in rain they're on an eco my shoe did save that odin so we do have potential here for a shutdown at b if honey badgers are going to go that way aggressively Feels like a different honey badges at the moment though this game going pretty nicely for them to be honest they've got themselves a really really strong economy here early on they've won themselves their bonus so they are going to be streaking away with this attacking side here of ascent and it's going to take uh, quite a bit of effort here for rain to try to break back into this game quick pick exos gonna fall back autumn quickly trades out el snow and milky walks the site and jelly t Stopped in his Five tracks, down, dead to down. right. Exos takes them both with the sheriff, and now it's just the auto move. He's wondering where his teammates have gone, all just like that. Leg shot, and Exos has wow. done magic in this round. 3k rain oh, stop yeah. that A take. You see HP bars for both Exos and Punda. But Honey Badges, they're not able to get into that A side. It was rains to hold. That's exactly the kind of round that Rain needed. Like, they just lost against Bonus. Honey Badgers, if they won a clean round there, we're going to just absolutely streak away with the economy. But the half by win, you pick up three guns, that's a massive economy swing. Like, Rain is definitely well and truly back into this game at this point. They win this next gun round, they could even break Honey Badgers' money. You want to play? But Let's won't get play. carried away just yet. Autumn with the two of the force, and I see Exus is on the A side of the map, so. Not going to be shutting man, this man down here early on. My shoe, though, bloody hell. Even if he's not on the sofa, still just spamming through the B main walls. Almost finds Autumn as well. I'm going to do it on any agent. My shoe showing flexible ability. Poxy. Bust down this door and looking to bust on to this B site. They need to go get the spike. It's just outside of main for the moment. G little paint shells, doesn't hit. My shoes looking to play the lane way minimize. Quick little trade kill to Jelly D. Takes out Swab as well. Drops into the safety of the back of side. Minimize. He's playing this perfectly. Clock seat. Doesn't have a teammate to help him. It's just him on a solo mission right now. His teammates trying to make it up through mid market. Tour de force out for Autism. Looking to find a peak. Looking to find anyone. Taken out by El Snow and again. Also, just dipping Autumn in these duels right now has kind of been a small little storyline to look at. Hmm. Rain winning this round. I mean, if they have four guns up at the end of this round, they've just completely turned this game on its head. They've gone from nightmare scenario, losing bonus round, and potentially losing control of their defensive side to potentially closing this uh, down with a couple of guns up and breaking the money of Honey Badgers. Foxy's going to take a couple with him to make it less bad of a situation, but still not great. Rain with two up there will have broken Honey Badgers' money, and now they're going to have a chance at an anti-eco to start to get themselves rolling here. And past that, that's where they can start to get some of these gun rounds where they can mix in the ults. They've got the lockdown. They've got the showstopper. Their comp definitely has a whole lot of these high-impact ults that can make a big, big difference. Not going to make a big difference here. This round truly telling to which way this game will sway to start this off. Honey Badgers, they're risking it. They're risking it like shields, vandals. In my shoot. 
spam on through. Water with the Aries. A little bit more of a cheaper alternative to the SM, the, the MG, the machine gun, the big machine there. gun that my shoe's been rocking so far this entire series. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you just let him have his way with B main if that's what you want. Doesn't feel like anybody who's been contesting him is having too great of a time. Milky just TPs onto A site for free though. He's got a great read on what's happening right now, smoking into tree and. Trying to create enough space for the rest of Honey Badgers to flood on in. Oh, the showstopper doesn't find anything at all. Clocks the anticipating someone would be playing close there, and in comes the lockdown. And a quick lockdown, quick work. Clocks he caught on the other side of the smoke. Swab may be looking to trade it back. You see that Honey Badgers are investing members into this one. They are able to oh find no. the lockdown. No, they aren't. Four players detained everybody from Honey Badgers completely shut out and you can see the punda dash to the site port towards a main there's so many players to short they've now backed it into it but they're held down by my shoe who holds down mouse one the perfect scenario for the lockdown and too little too late honey badges all rain take their third round that was the force tony they're gonna force again oh my god it's got to be so tilting to lose that round. Like, they did such a great job playing deep in tree there, making sure that that lockdown retake wasn't going to be effective, but they did they did everything right but kill the lockdown. That's the only thing they didn't do. Unfortunate. Mate, it sways honey badges. I have to shake it off, though. Aggressive peak down through mid from Punda Foxy. Gonna flashly jump his way up into this site. Planted. Nice though. Cheeky little teleport. Nightfall befalls inside of Honey Badges. They've got themselves a great plant spot, but do they have themselves the post plant positioning? Fade utility giving Rain the opportunity to retake so freely. Clocks, he still hasn't been cleared from underneath this position. They expected maybe only one. Suave able to find some shots for Cloxy to find four as well. Beautiful stuff out of the, the honey badges. They're able to bounce back after Rain just took them to town in that retake. And well, all of a sudden, we've got a game on our hands. Pilski still seeing buys out somehow. These players haven't run out of cash just yet. Yeah, this is going to be the swing round. Both teams started to get a little bit poorer, a little bit worse for wet. Feels like Honey Badgers are... They've got a very, very good read on this A site. Like, they're just being allowed to run straight into A, get that post plant about five seconds into the round. This is really something the Rain has to address, and you see a little bit more of a lean towards A now. Not too much mid control to speak of, and this is where, actually, the calling from Honey Badgers is looking pretty good. They really pound that extremity, go for those fast A takes time and time again, and now they're starting to work their way through middle. So, good adaptation being shown. Perfect little jiggle swing there, I have to say. Almost finding one pick from Exus. Page shells come out from Clock C. And they've got such amazing info. Look at that fade utility giving Honey Badgers all sorts of information to now play the later stage of this round out. They've got a few players lurking up through mid. You can see the rotation coming through spawn here for the side of Rain and or maybe just trying to sell them on this big split potential yeah this is just great great play on attack from honey badgers they're running rain all around the map pressuring different parts of the map that's the last omen smoke though that's the weakness of omen you can't just run around the map and have access to all of the smokes that you wanted straight up treat for the attacking side here being contested heavily by ponda there's the boom bot as well to boot and with 20 seconds honey badgers have got to get this spike down and get comfortable on the side but look at this flood coming in for rain find you and look at that haunt. One that pops high. They're trying to get this spike down. They will be able to secure the play. Jelly D goes for an aggressive swing. But Milky, he's stuck up in the shroud of the mist in the fog of war. Milky gets up the window for four. Honey Badgers find five. A massive reposition there for Milky and Rain. They caught lacking yet again. And Honey Badgers, they punish. Yeah, Milky's actually playing out of his mind right now. Like, 
he's calling a great T side, but also he's kind of reading the rotations of rain so beautifully and kind of playing around their comp really, really nicely. The way he's layering these rounds in, very, very quick AXX straight into that mid control like I was talking about, pressuring Cat to pull the rotation off middle, walking straight up middle with a top mid smoke and then dealing with that alarm bot, making it look like mid to B and then cutting sound at A and going late A like... He is really reading this attacking side really beautifully. Uh, all the way on top of that, I mean, despite the fact that they end up in a three on four, he's able to, not only on a macro perspective, call very well for his team, but even on a micro perspective, just make the perfectly timed push straight up tree and, and multi-frag to win the round for his team. Yeah, Milky. Yeah, a player kind of... Low-key been doing not too bad in terms of statistics recently, but, you know, we haven't you know, seen this kind of crazy play out of him yet. And when I play when I play ranked, um, when I first, like, w when I was trying to grind, like, a little bit, like, I go through phases of, of playing the game a lot and then mm. not playing it at all. I remember seeing Milky in ranked and being like, this guy's name is Milky in all caps. That's definitely someone's alt account. There's no way yeah. someone's calling himself Milky in all caps, and that's his serious handle. But uh, look, I was wrong, and uh, he's he's kind of a beast. He's he's kind of low key a beast here, and of course, <laughs> Honey Badgers they need that beast right now. They need that all star fragger. They need some crazy plays to happen because it was a, it was a rough first map for them. I have to say, split just completely shook them to their core in terms of the vetoes, but. Then the second map, we saw Haven and we saw Honey Badgers kind of start to ease into the series a little bit more. It took them a little bit more than it did the side of, of course, Rain. But then we saw it. Haven, they closed it. Now we hear Ascent. They're looking to make it work as the rounds progress. And it just looks better and better as the execs come through and as the site takes happen. Yeah, for sure. I think... Um... Like, it's going to be a big tilting round to lose that round where you didn't kill the lockdown, you get sprayed down. But the, the best thing, the best remedy to losing those kind of rounds that you had no business losing and, and getting off tilt is just to have massive plays come out from some of the boys or have really, really clean rounds, completely resets the mental and, and gets everyone fired up again. And especially when you're running this late into the night, like, you know, midnight for some of these players or if they're in Z even later. Um you know, those are the kind of rounds that can kind of get everyone energized and, and refocus. So that's a that's a big, big play from Milky. And hopefully, I, I'm assuming that's going to be a bit of a, a problem for the, the Rain Boys economy, which is going to give uh, Honey Badgers a bit of a chance to actually make a clean half of this. Like, they're already up 5-3 attack side of Ascent. They could even go better than that and, and have a really, really good run of things here. So... We'll see. Yeah, it looks like an anti-eco. half by coming out for Raiden. This is a really great opportunity for Honey Badgers to go up 6-3, establish themselves the economy that they need to keep buying through the rest of the half, and, and from there, they could set themselves up for the win here in the lower bracket. Yeah, they could look to send Rain home. Because... Which should, which should be sad, because they played Bobo so close. Like, I actually genuinely believe they mm. probably should have won that series, but... It's a different day now. And it's all about showing up on the day when it matters most. Do a die in the lower bracket final map of this series. Final map of the night and Honey Badgers are playing it for keeps. Rain looking for some aggressive mid control and they've given up a main completely. Honey Badgers footsteps been heard. Sound cue is given over. Fragment tossed to the corner. This is where Honey Badgers can just look to exec so, so fluently because everybody from the side of Rain has made a bit of a misplay. Let's stack it up the short side. Cheeky from Hellstow. Hiding in front of the door. Doesn't get too much work done for it. And look, the sheriffs aren't really connecting with anything at the moment. It's exactly what you wanted to see if you're a Hunting Badgers fan. Have a nice and clean round here. Not dropping any guns so far. All down on Minimize with his Bucky. Look, he's going to take one with him. But that's it. Four guns up for Honey Badgers is, is beautiful. One off the showstopper. They've got that KO ult. That's pretty much like a go take the site starter pack, to be honest. And in comes the timeout here from Rain. They've got a bit of chatting to do. This defense side of Ascent, at least, is not really looking too cohesive. You're getting a bit of a quieter performance out of Punter exactly when he's needed to pop off a little bit. 
So especially seeing the showstopper online, definitely need to see a big punter round sooner rather than later, or this is going to be a bit of a sad first half scoreline. Yeah, and I, I feel maybe they swap the setup up, they go and put Minimize over at that ace site, and they hold it with, you know, a very aggressive haunt and, of course, Warbane combo that we've seen from my shoe already. For the side of Honey Badger, just, just kind of keep going and doing what they're doing. They're reading this map so well and taking so much control off of Rain, who are... I, I say that they're more than happy to give up mid, but they're also giving up too much of mid to the side of Honey Badgers, and you see so many splits come through from that control that Honey Badgers are able to take. Yeah, I think it's it's like a double-edged sword. That's why I'm so impressed with Honey Badgers' uh, attack side at the moment, is the way that they're layering in these rounds. They're abusing mid, and then they're going very heavy to the extremity. And I was about to say, this would be the perfect round for a, a B take. Jelly D is over towards Leave the A the side of the map, yeah, though, so... Keen to see what the approach is going to be here for Honey Badgers. Looks like something a little bit trickier, maybe. KO Knife in a main to start things off. And it seems like Rain playing anti-default right now. They want to try to go for this big, big mid crunch once uh, once Honey Badgers tries to take some mid control. There you can see. Nexus waiting to throw this flash. Just an opportunity. A lifetime oh. here. Nothing's going right for Rain, man. Like, they're trying to play anti-default mid-control, and the call from Honey Badgers is uh, contact B, probably with the KO ult to boot. So this is going to be like a retake scenario, probably. It's going to be a retake scenario. Smoke across. Wanda trying to spray it down, but nobody is going to be hit by those bullets. Honey Badgers get themselves in that B site. You can see Milky going to be playing so deep and small in this three position to hold for because of course if Autumn even to fall there, Milky a quick trade assuredly. And you see Rain, they're all coming from the spawn side so Milky now needs to make a move on to come help Autumn out, hold this crossfire. Oh, Honey right. Badgers, they've got the site on lock, another smoke comes through. Autumn in a prime position to stop anybody from coming over. Wonder very high in air with that showstopper, dunks it down, finds the kill to Cloxy, but Milky and Swar back to the trades here. Punda looking to peek onto main. He knows that this player is close. He knows that Milky's in that angle, but wow. Milky wins the duel out with the info even. Seven rounds go, Honey Badge is a great execute to that B site and just out reading Rain and outpacing them in that mid round. So 100%. Good. Like, it's no... Like, I, I talk about Minimize as being, like, a really, really strong IGL in, in Oceania. Um, pretty sure Milky's the IGL of Honey Badgers. Mm. I mean, whoever's doing the IGLing for Honey Badgers is doing a really, really good job on this attacking side of Ascent. When I'm talking about, like, these teams having depth, like, this is exactly what I mean. They are continually keeping Rain guessing. Every time Rain tries to make an adaptation, trying to stay one step ahead, that time trying to play anti-default with that mid-crunch, that's where they ripped the, the B XD after they were getting absolutely shut down in B earlier on in the half by my shoe with the Odin. After abusing A, after pressuring mid a lot, they rip the KO ult and go for a B set play. This is the depth that I'm talking about. They are very, very hard to read on this attacking side. You have to applaud it. From the side of Honey Badger's Prowler here for Swamp. They're looking to take the ultimate orb. Looking to maybe pop an ultimate in the future round. Fragment there to Winery, but Cloxy is just going to check it too in case that a player is safe from that one. The knife goes. Presence detected. Two players pinged up on that one. Haunt goes high. And Cloxy knows exactly where else Snow is. Flushes him out with the paint shells to find the easy picking. Cloxy takes the kill. The Honey Badgers aren't going to that side of the map. Uh, pretty good positioning here for Rain, though. They've got the lockdown. I'm pretty sure Minimize is doing the old faithful Bucky in the corner of the B site. So this could left. still fall apart. He's hearing all the footsteps coming in. There's still three players over here, but Honey Badgers, if they keep all their ducks in a row, could still just close this one down. Exos yeah, is going to duck down the logs. Minimize. He's going to swarm out. Cloxy jump. Bucky shot. 
Punda still in the site, holding it left. down. They need to get in. 10 seconds left. Punda able to find Milky. Just shot. Half tag up. Autumn for Punda to take it. One second left to shot. The Jelly D looks for a wall bank thrifty, but minimize. Goes for a long range shot. Not going to find a kill at that kind of range with a gun of that caliber. But Honey Badgers, they got their B take thwarted this time. Rain. Perfect positioning there for Minimize. A jump shot into a tag. And Punda playing his left side so well. Stairs held perfectly. Rain. They shut that one down this time. B not on the cards for Honey Badgers. Yeah, that's one of those rounds where on a half by like Honey Badgers is trying to assume that you're gonna rotate properly. They take that pick on the A you side of the map and invest a lot of utility in taking it. And Rain just sits on B. They don't care, like, they know they're gonna lose the round anyway. They're probably setting up for exits. Hold that thought, though. Beautiful KO knife cancels the Ray's ulti. Again, Exus just showing his worth here. You can't even throw that out from Fox. He just completely denied. Depth of field being shown here by Exus. Jelly D trying to rotate as he shuts the door. Rain are able to stop it. Now the lockdown here. We've seen what this is capable of in a retake situation. And again, it's a lockdown from Minimize. Honey Badgers, they either need to get out of the site into safety of Winery, or they take the fight to the lockdown. Two players detained. Milky isn't going to swing. And Rain are going to check every single corner. Clocksy caught in Wine, and not a player lives to tell the tale wow. of a flawless retake. Rain close it at the 5-7 mark. Honey Badgers, they looked in such control to start this game off, but Rain, they show some late round adaptation. They show some late half play, and it pays off. 5-7, to seven, an even scoreline almost. Yeah, I mean, 5-7 doesn't tell you the tale of that half. That was not a close half. Honey Badgers was kind of outplaying Rain. I feel like outcalling them for a lot of that half. Minimizes gimmicks with the Bucky, gets them around uh, on B site. But that last round was probably the, the best round that you saw out of Rain that whole half. Really nice usage of the ults. Great, great KO knife again from Exus. Like, just all night long hitting just OP KO knives, shutting down Autumn, shutting down a Ray's ult. Looking like Rain want to go for a B set play. Minimize on the lurk towards top mid. Just a bit of a 1 4 setup. See how it works out for him. So many players on cap. Four players on cap for Honey Badgers. That's a very interesting call to make. Don't want to give up mid control to the side of Rain. Maybe they're going to take some aggressive positioning themselves. Autumn with his headhunter out. Six boards in the chamber. Didn't even opt to buy armor this time. It's going to be rocking it with what it is. Honey Badgers are resting it through a main, trying to catch a pick off. They do actually find Minimize, but that's just a low player. And these B players need to be cautious, because right now they're looking to go to that direction. Oh, oh, Bunda, classic. Just Satchel straight in off the back of that Haunt, scanning the player on CT. Still trying to force these fights, still demand his advantage for Rain, so he knows, he knows he has to make a play. Exus putting the spike down in the meanwhile. And it's a still a three on four for Rain. They're still going to try to fight close CT. And finally, the smoke going down on that position. And smoke to cover. Frenzy out for Mel Stowe. They try to walk through the smoke. Picked up by Punda. And Exus as well gets involved. Pistol. Very beautiful round being taken there by Rain. I have to say, the exec to B site, not what Honey Badgers were expecting. They found that lurking minimized pick over towards A main. And of course, they met a tail disaster. Six to seven, Rain within one round of closing the gap here and making it an even scoreline yet again. And well, for Honey Badgers, they're not going to buy into this one. They want to keep their money high going into the rifle. Pretty slow start to the game for Panda, but very, very promising signs that he's starting to get himself rolling here. Definitely going to be needed in this game. Suppressing. Rain really slowly working the map with the KO util, with the fade util. Taking their time, making sure they have a clean air to ego here, trying to isolate Milky and Tiles, and they found it with the fragment. And two ticks, takes him out, Exus. Great little lineup. Find Milky early on, and for Honey Badges, of course, 
to Sinico. Want to steal away a gun, a potential bulldog or two. Spectre. Wouldn't be too bad. He oh. the suave. A sharp from him. Minimize. Drops a bulldog outside of B main, but the gun's hard to retrieve. Jelly D sitting in the corner. Clock seats too. Go towards spawn. The knife comes out. Exos. He's gonna find Suave and oh, we found a good shot, but only good for one. It's now Rain looked to take control of the B site. Thirty seconds left. Out Still of a man advantage and a pretty big gun advantage, making sure that they can't one find that gun remaining. off of Minimize. Plant on spammable. It's all down to Autumn. Let's see if he can take one more player with him. Make this bonus round for uh, Rain a little bit more difficult. But Exus again, great flash onto the line. And all the headhunter bullets don't connect with anything, so not even breaking the armor of Rain. Able to survive with uh, four players up and have a nice little bonus here. Also one off that KO ult for Exus, so they're going to have access to that nice and early on in this half. Could even potentially try to go for a bit of a set play here if they can go for that orb control. Obviously Ascent being one of these maps where the, the contest for the orb is an interesting one. There's some maps where it's really favored towards one side who can get that orb. But Ascent, definitely one of these maps where you can definitely try to control those extremities. And that's exactly what we're going to see in this round. Yeah, Autumn looking to stop them from grabbing that ultimate orb. And Clarksy immediately answering to minimize his yeah. teammate both fall. And as you call it, Pilski, going for that ultimate orb control that pays off for Honey Badgers for the moment. But Rain, they will find two back and... Even up the standings here, three players looking to wrap around towards this B site. There's one in that site, the only one here. The other two on the other side of the map, one to mid, one over towards the A side. A spawn, Suave needs just by one kill. Won't, won't. Great little trade out from my shoe. The spike will go down and rain. Spike planted. Now a comfortable position, the post plant. Jelly B is going to have to await Melky's help here. As they look to peek. Both from the laneway, respectable, because of course the smoke off towards the stairs gives great cover for the side of rain. So now look to walk it up. Difficult retake for Honey Badgers. Gonna track a smoke on left side of boat. This is obviously a big backside setup here for rain. Jelly D trying to lock down that right side arch. None of rain overextending too much until Milky dives into that right side arch covered by Jelly D beautifully. That round just flip flopped back and forth. I thought it was going to Honey Badgers for sure. Rain with a sick recovery in the mid round. I thought they were setting themselves up for the bonus win on that three on two. But again, if Honey Badgers have done nothing else tonight, they keep winning these man disadvantage situations. These scenarios where they have no business closing them down the scenarios where they're a man down both of those 4v5s on haven again in a two on three where you think the round's done and dusted they're able to put the pieces back together and look it's good that they got that round but again it's one of these situations where you're going up against a bonus and that was really expensive and you still got to turn your attention towards this first gun round where exus has his kol ready to go KO could be pivotal in shutting down some util and shutting down a plate. You can see Haunt coming out from my shoot. Another command pop. Showstopper over the top. Punda into the site B, but nobody's here for the side of Honey Badgers. Yeah. Over. It's an interesting one, right? They're on a buy, but just not wanting to deal with the KO ult, not wanting to deal with the Showstopper, and actually they bleed both of those ults out of rain. But they have to have a really good plan for the retake here, Tony. Definitely gonna have to come in quick with, with it. Prowler comes through here from Suave as Honey Badgers sending it three towards B main. Milky able to find Minimize, but they have traded it. Exos finds Autumn towards Market. Elsto sitting in prime position. A quick trade peak here from the side of Honey Badgers as that's not the way you wanna be jumping into the side, Cloxy. Loses his mind for that one. One play to lane, one to look to wrap the stairs in just a second. But Milky, he's lost his teammate and he's lost his hope of this round being one. Exus dwindles it down. It's 8 8 rain as they tie it up yet again. Honey Badgers, they look to go for that retake and it was a little bit too 
out of sorts, I have to say. It didn't. I, I think it was too committed. Like, I don't mind the idea of playing retake on B because, you know, you don't want to deal or, or like really hard committing to holding a site because either they go A with their with their showstopper and KO ult or they go B and you, you don't have to deal with those ults. But playing literally like five players on one site, I think is too much. Like, you can still get some value out of someone playing in some of those positions like CT. Even just trying to get some spam kills through the smoke or getting a little bit of value out of some utility. It was an interesting idea. Doesn't end up paying off for them. Push through B main. Trying to be held down by Minimize, but they're able to isolate him with one for one in which they're not going to be too uh, unhappy about, to be honest. That's a Vandal picked up. Ring. Look at the spike plant here. There is a play. It's still in that corner. They were wallbanging order for just a second, but he's taken out Excess the night for bestows upon the site. Swab looks to walk it up. Nobody's expecting it. Just honey matches are walking, taking these fights with these pistols, and they're somehow winning them out. Out in the open. My shoe, though, takes them all. Back a site, back a gen. Rain find nine. Honey badges, though. An expensive blow there and almost a doable retake. For sure. That's really good value they've got out of the sheriffs there, no doubt about it. They've taken a handful of guns with them. A very, very tight game. Like the all of these games in VOT so far just keep delivering despite the expectations that you have at the matchup. Just getting nothing but really, really Time close games here. This gun round you can see Rain's got a bit of cash in the bank account. Honey Badger's does not, so Honey Badger's definitely needs this gun round a little bit more. Two of the force coming out there for Autumn, and that is one of the first times in a while I've seen him first pick Exus without getting KO knifed or flashed, and now he has the opportunity to try to take over this oh, round. This is what we've been needing to see for Autumn from a while, a 3k in a critical gun round like that. Not only is he setting his team up for success, but also he's saving his, team, his team's economy because they haven't lost a single gun this round and they were completely out of cash staring down the barrel of a reset if they dropped this gun round. The perfect round to find if you're the side of Honey Badges here. Rain, tie to tie here. Beautiful stuff from Autumn textbook and what we needed to see out of Impelski. We said that, you know, Autumn's one of these players that can really take over the server if you let him and he's been kept quiet here against the side of Rain, but Autumn, a player of stature, always expected to be seen lighting up the kill feed, and a perfect round like that could mean good things for Honey Badgers going into the future of this half. I'm gonna get that paranoia, trying to set up the you killjoy for the lockdown. You have two players over towards A main though, so look at this wrap coming in for Honey Badgers. They're gonna try to deny that ult actually. The bait ult as well, so Ooh. a lot being committed to Five shutting down, down this lockdown, and that's the spike going down, which means that this A play really not going to have too much impact. Yeah, they're kind of stuck. They're sandwiched in B main, and they can't get out or alive. Autumn finding extra suave, taken and minimize was the one to fall. My shoe and his teammate. Now what do they do? They lost the spike. They lost control of B main. They've lost all hope wow. in this one. Honey Badger's an aggressive position being taken towards B main, but they get the sandwich off. And the bite of the bread, Honey Badger's find 10. And Rain, now they've been found staring down an eco. It's what you love to see from Honey Badger's. Like, you know, there's a lot of different approaches to those rounds where, you know, lockdown's available, but the, the way that they played that, just sandwiching down mid, they're still taking risks even this deep into the night, even this deep into the series. They're yeah, playing they to win. Fine. They're not playing not to lose, which is exactly what you want to be seeing out of uh, the team that's going to take this series. Those two gun rounds yeah. back to back, they've finally broken the money here for Rain, put them back on a half buy. But not only that, they've had some clean, clean rounds, able to start to build up their own cash and build themselves an economy that they can win this game with. to build something out of nothing on the side of rain right now. Great entry pick towards B main. Oh, minimize though. Blue suede shoes. He slides to the left and hits the right. Foxy. Oh no. And Milky gonna fall. He can't doubt the power of these pistols. 
You are powerless. Suave stuck, trapped, funneled into the back of B-Main, and there's going to be a gun retrieved by Pondo. You can see that Honey Badger's members to go for this retake. They do have the Jelly Bee Knife to go for the info. Shut down the info. But knife in return. Jelly D is going to have to walk it up through laneway. He needs to wait for order to come and help him out. It's actually never mind. Jelly D putting excess. One player back sight and one player in B main. This is the perfect crossfire stall here. Punda oh. sending it through the window with the double satchel. Punda, that's perfect. Jelly D was not expecting that one. And now it's Autumn walking up with his operator in hand. It's the no scope headshot, but the paint shell timing. Punda puts that round on his back. Rain, find the thrifty to go 10 to 10 here on our final map. Oh, that was much needed. Like, Honey Badgers, that could have been the round where if they win cleanly, they're going to have an economy. They're going to start to really run away with this game. And even though it's not as big of an economic win because not many players from Rain survive, they have definitely gotten away with murder there. And I have to say, I remember casting a game where Panda tried to ult uh, over a heaven and killed himself with the showstopper on this map. Well and truly redeemed from that round. 100%. Finally gets that vertical showstopper he was looking for for a while and the need to follow up as well. Absolutely a masterclass from him on the raise. This is the big swing round though. Again, 10-10. Both of these teams running out of cash. Autumn trying to probe Cat for a pick. Isn't given any opportunity just yet. Good shoulder spotting from Minimize. And their paranoia in combination with Punder on the blast pack gives the man advantage to rain. What a beautiful read. Mensch. Paint shells. Toss up and Punda. He's looking to toss up some haymakers here. Showstopper pulled by Cloxy. Looking to walk into the site. Sinks it back and Punda doesn't actually take him out. It's Jelly D to drop in and 50 seconds. Rain aren't going towards safe site. The retake was there and the Honey Badgers had the positions straight to B. They go minimize. He is going to shut that door and he is just going to play an aggressive angle just towards spawn. While the rest of his teammates come on in. And will the question be answered? Honey Badgers, do they look to go for this retake? It's been such a great game of Valorant to watch because both of the IGLs for these teams make it some really, really sick reads this game. And that was just another one of them. Like, they know that Auden's been going towards cat time and time again. You can really change up your positioning on chamber any which way you want on this map part. A little bit too many times towards catwalk and that's where you can get some of these cute little set plays paranoia with the double blast pack that was just absolutely beautiful from rain and having the the foresight and the presence of mind especially this deep in a series you can get a bit tunnel visiony but calling the cancel on that a site push making sure they're not running that 4v2 straight into the two-man setup on a making sure that they can still call the audible and go back towards the other side of the map See, Jelly D now funneled into winery, but of course has a teammate to help him out and steal away the guns, make it expensive. Will Honey Badges Jelly D finding a third onto my shoe. No command well and truly here for Honey Badges, but 11 rounds rain and they've got one in the lead, two from fighting match and series point three from closing it out. Hmm. It's another ha Hail Mary four spies in it around the operator. Gone down to a guardian, a spectre, and a and a, a sheriff, which is not the, the weapon you want if you've got a null command. You want something with fire rate. You want a rifle or a spectre, something like that. But this is potentially for the game here. If Rain win this round, they're gonna break the money of honey badges and potentially have an easier anti-half buy here. Looks like Rain gonna keep things simple here, Tony. Fade Util into that A site, probably just fade ult straight onto the site and kick off this A site exit. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Punda flies through air and executes perfectly onto that opening pick. And now it's Honey Badgers, it's Milky Gorn down and out. He can still call for his teammates. And they're going to need some sort of guiding light into this retake. It's a, a start from Autumn. 
Excess falls and Jelly D takes my Bapunda back in return and Minimize lurking up for the short side. It's Cloxy now to stop Rain from match and series point. It doesn't happen. Punda takes four, one off match the showstopper. Point. Rain match point here on Ascent and Punda has been putting up numbers this entire series. We saw it the first map, we're seeing it in the final. Punda, an absolute all-star raise and one to watch for if you're always looking to learn those kind of heavy movement style of characters. Hell yeah. Like that, like he not only entries, but he just yeah. multi-frags and holds down the side after that. Opens up the round and closes it down. What more can you do? It's basically just putting the team on his back. He was like four and five at one point. Now he's gone like 20 and five in since like the start of that defensive half where it wasn't going well for Rain. Heavy util invested to get him his showstopper. And I think if you're getting anyone, they're all probably want it to be Punter at this point. Minimize holding control of that B side of the map in the meanwhile, but you can see Autumn on a pretty decent info line in B main. Like I said, it's great to be able to mix up that positioning on the chamber. So to get him into a position like this can even contest the turret, but actually triggering the turret for second means that Rain now have the presence of mind to be able to actually hard clear B main rather than potentially running into that line. Hard clear it with the Prowler. Autumn attempting to hit the shot. And straight away, Exus. The Nightfall beholds what Honey Badgers do in these next few. will decide the course of action of this entire game. Showstopper in, Pundas out. But he's down and out. Suave perfect taps the Guardian. Shuts it down. And the Sentinel. Suave holds down sight. Keeps Honey Badgers' hopes in dreams into this final map of this series. And Rain that forces a few light shields. That forces them to force into this very, very limited money. Yeah. Honey Badgers could look to take us to this overtime. 100%. That was such a massive round out of Suave. Like the, the Fatal in combination with the Guardian just destroying all of those players that were super weakened. This is where Minimize won off the... Uh, off the... Ulti wants to try to grab that orb and chuck the lockdown down if he can. Very, very quickly into this A site yet again is Rain. So I'm keen to see how they utilize this lockdown. Are they going to rip it in A main here or are they going to try to get this post plant and get more value out of it? You can see Minimize holding it. He doesn't want to drop the ult just yet. You should run. Oh, suppressed and there it is, the lockdown. He decides uh -oh. to expend it, but oh. Autumn almost on the right time and position. The lockdown. Milky's coming from the flank this time around. He has to wait and will destroy the lockdown. A few players coming into the site from heaven. It's four. Make it three for Honey Badge and still five alive for Rain in this post split situation. Clocks, he can't do a damn thing about it. Milky able to find one and trade it back. Jelly T, the last one remaining member, the last Badger, looking for his honey and Rain, are looking to steal it away. 13 to 11, Rain close it in a close affair. What a game, what a series, Pilski. It went all three maps, it went deep into the final one, but Rain, they're able to close it out in the nick of time. It's 2.30 for the New Zealand players, and they're going to be thankful they closed it out. 100%, yeah. Uh, they're going to be quite tired after that series, for sure. But look, that's just how VOT's been going this season, right? It's called the championship for a reason, the host championship. I feel like almost every series, every map goes 24 minimum, or OT, and that's another one of them. An absolute barn burner, really could have gone either way. Had some great reads from both of those teams. Um, I really feel like both of the IGLs for both teams had some fantastic reads. I really like the attacking side there for Honey Badgers. They had some great rounds and some great reads on defense as well, but Rain just a tiny little bit more, had a couple too many of these big, big rounds and Punter coming alive was a massive success factor for Rain, no doubt about it. Like I said, he was like four and five at one point, wasn't really having any impact. That's when it really felt like in that first half, Hardy Badgers was doing very well for themselves. But as soon as Punter started to multi-frag again, you were just getting round after round for Rain. And he was having so many of those big impact entries on that, that blast pack play.
Just seeing them all in the highlight feed here, just entry after entry. It's, it's stunning to see. It's absolutely perfect from Punda putting a superhero performance on to close this one out for Rain. And I have to say, you feel for Honey Badgers. They put on such a commanding performance there. You saw the triple there from Suave in that round to get Honey Badgers to 11. It could have been overtime. It could have been just one more round that separated these teams. But of course, it was Rain coming out on top in the end. Two to one in the series overall. And Pilsky, I believe we've got a lovely guest joining us from Rain here. We've got Minimize. How are you after such a long game? Yeah, look, that, that series was really fun to play. And, uh, you know, after losing the last series, super close. So glad to win this one. Super close as well. For sure. Yeah, so um, what's it been like playing Sentinel a little bit more? It seems to be like uh, the role that you've adopted in this team. Does that like change how your calling style is because i know that you love playing those like initiator roles before and like calling around that a little bit um how are you finding it um i think it's a bit of a trade-off um obviously i can't be in the pack as much and like call like oh let's quickly take this or quickly take this like in the moment kind of stuff but um it lets me like kind of switch off a bit from the game especially when i'm in that lurk and I can call the comeback and stuff like that if I, if I find something. And I have a lot more information than most players since, you know, I have what they're calling and then I have, like, everything that I'm hearing. So it's a bit of a trade-off, but it's, it's good. It's good. It's a new experience. Can I, have, can I have one more question, Tony? Yeah, go uh, for am it. I allowed? Uh, I already uh, know what you're going to ask. <laughs> what, what, was the, what was the veto um, process for you guys? Like, um, I, I thought that the split pick was, was pretty cool, but a lot of um, teams in O's... I feel like um, love their comfort picks, love the picks where they played like a whole lot of a certain map. Um, what was the thought process behind the veto for you? So, um, kind of the maps that we were really good on the old rain, I haven't really touched a lot. And then hmm. I've kind of been focusing on new maps. So instead of coming in and changing everything up and having to start from scratch since we don't have too much time, I'm coming up like, oh, you guys are good at this map. And then I'll just focus on, you know, the new maps that we weren't really good at, weren't really cracking. So that way, you know, we just fall back and rely on the old old stuff to get us through the other maps. And then on the new kind of maps we haven't cracked, it's like all my kind of systems and stuff. Cool. Out with the old and in with the new. I have to say, uh, a very a very interesting Vipers pit on that first map. I, I, I want to break down uh, what, what kind of was the call there. Of course, unfortunately, didn't win you guys the round, but... A very interesting old, nevertheless. Minimize, how do, you, how do you go about a round like that when you've got such a crazy Vipers pit set up? Um, normally when you do something like that, especially if they haven't seen it, they'll rotate a lot of numbers and they'll kind of just look at it. So normally when I, if I do that old, then I'll just like kind of hit B because there's like free looking A and then like maybe I can get a timing. But um, I did call for them to come back because they sky or something and then obviously we didn't really ex execute really well, I think. You know, we didn't have smoke heaven, we didn't flash out, kind of butchered it, but yeah, it was all right in the end. <laughs> oh, well, it happens. Of course, Minimize, thank you for joining us. Any uh, any final shout-outs before we leave you to uh, probably go to bed because it is very, very late. <laughs> uh, oh, shout-out to Rain, my new org. It's really fun playing for these guys, and it's a great community, so love it. All right, cheers, Minimize. Thank you for joining us. What a, uh, what a game it was, of course. Pilski, it was... Uh, it was a barn burn, I have to say, and a very interesting one. Out with the old and in with the new. Minimize showing this rain roster the guiding light to victory here. And moving on through the lower bracket, they will be taking on order of all teams. Yeah, that's going to be a fun one for sure. As we uh, take a look at this bracket, there you go. Fun crew Bobo in the upper bracket. That's going to be a, a nice game to watch. And then order rain. Um, some of the boys from that bonkers roster, which are kind of distributed still throughout the bracket. Uh, it doesn't matter who was from that roster, they're still making that deep run. You got a couple of the boys on Bobo, you got one on Order, you got one on Rain. They're all kind of kicking, staying alive where they can, but we're going to get rid of some of them at least uh, in these next couple of games. Um, I'm keen to see if Fun Crew can continue that success. You know, they had a very, very close game against Order, and I think Bobo will probably be like a little bit disappointed that they had such a close game against Rain in that opener. They'd probably be putting a fair bit of prac in. Don't think it should be required for Dragon to go plus 35 in a series for Bobo to win. So um, hopefully they can have a better day at the office in that upper bracket game, because I think if you told Bobo that they just have to play Fun Crew for a spot in the grand final, they'd take that every day of the week. Yeah, absolutely. It's up 
one crew to shake up the standings yet again. They did it once, they could do, look to do it again, but Pilski, it has been a pleasure with you on the cast, my man, this evening. It has been a long night of Valor action, of course. We've got plenty more coming up in the days to come, as you saw that bracket looking stacked. And Pilski, any final words before we send the viewers off this evening? Not really. Uh, I think we had some some good games, and uh, look, I'm really looking forward to casting minimum 24 rounds, three maps, two series uh, of Valorant tomorrow. So that's going to be fun. And we look forward to it. We look forward to seeing you back tomorrow, Pilski. A pleasure as always, and a pleasure to you all in chat for joining us this evening. A pleasure to our admin teams, our observers, everybody making it run so smoothly behind the scenes. But guys, we're going to wrap it up there. We'll see you next time for more Valorant Oceana Tour, the Oceanic Championship. It is. Can we peace out? All good? All right. All right. Peace, peace. Good night, boys. Good night, good night.